Hey guys, and today I'm, I'm about to play some Sonic Mania. Hello everyone and welcome to day 19 of the Letitia Stauch trial. <laughs> you got your triple buckles on? <laughs> you gotta buckle up. It's gonna be very interesting, I think. Let me quickly share this. Um, here we go. Let's monitor the court so we don't miss a thing. Okay. So, I'm just gonna keep it there so we can keep an eye on it because sometimes they start sooner. It should happen in six minutes, but sometimes, as I told you, they start just a little earlier. You see, they're already they're already doing something. There you go. We might see videos today of Maria, you guys. There's Leticia. <laughs> Leticia. Please like and share so other people know that right, we're live. Call 20 CR 1358. People versus Leticia Stock record should reflect the jury is not present in the courtroom. Um, counsel approach, please. Oh, counsel's already approaching. Don't worry, I'm going to zoom in for us. Well, not that we could see anything right now. That's <laughs> what we got so far. This is the view. I'm matching with it. I'm dressed for court, you guys. <laughs> got my necklace on. Um, I did look on Amazon, by the way. If you just type in blue crystal heart necklace, you can get one just like mine. Okay? Everyone's asking, where do you get it? Where do you get it? Wherever. <laughs> it's not that hard to find. So I hope you'll get one. Yes. That's not sponsored or anything. I just, everyone asked me about this necklace. I just got it in honor of Ganon. It's a blue heart pendant. So we're sharing blue hearts in the chat and little hedgehogs as well. All the emojis are made for you to in solidarity for um, Ganon to stand with his family and friends and the community. Welcome. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. All right, before we bring the jury in, there was one thing that we should have done yesterday that we didn't, uh, and I told Mr. Tolini we could um, do it at a different time, um, and now is that time. Um, I, uh, Mr. Tolini, did you have motions that you wanted to make I, I do, Your Honor. I would make a provision to settle on all charges, specifically for the first degree murder premeditation. There is a lack of evidence showing premeditation on what? behalf of the defendant. At the lack of, we saw okay. the timeline. Prosecution. Your Honor, um, there's been more than enough evidence presented on uh, premeditation as it relates to count one, uh, specifically and most glaringly in the form of those. Uh, searches that were discovered on the defendant's phone uh evidencing uh, a desire to leave the state of colorado to uh, seek uh, employment and housing out of state for uh, a one bedroom one bathroom apartment in orlando florida and then obviously all of the efforts that were put forth by the defendant to then cover up the crime showing uh, consciousness of guilt and so we would ask the court to deny the uh, motion for judgment of acquittal all right. Um, the standard that the court must apply at this point uh, or at this stage in the proceedings is the court must take the evidence in light most favorable to the prosecution and determine whether or not there is sufficient evidence upon which a jury could conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty of the charges uh, that have been brought against her. Um, with respect to um, defense counsel's argument regarding premeditation, um, there are 
uh, messages or, or indications uh, that uh, the defendant uh, was uh, conducting searches regarding um, a life elsewhere, essentially. Uh, jobs, uh, places to live, uh, perhaps even connections with uh, singles uh, in another area. Um, there's also indications that uh, the defendant may have been unhappy in her marriage, uh, that there was a discussion about that, but nothing was uh, necessarily reached. There was a statement by the defendant at some point in time in which she said, I should have just left last week. Um, <coughs> all of this occurred before um, the uh, death of Gannon. Um, it's not surprising, or this would not be the first case in which uh, someone was in an unhappy marriage and some crime was committed as a result of that. Um, I think there is sufficient evidence upon which a jury uh, could conclude, if it were to believe that evidence credible and give weight to that evidence, uh, a jury could conclude uh, beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant was guilty. Again, the court has to take the evidence uh, at this stage of the proceeding in the light most favorable to the prosecution and must not make any credibility determinations uh, at this point either. As such, uh, the court believes that uh, it is a jury issue uh, for jurors to determine whether or not uh, the prosecution has in fact established beyond a reasonable doubt all of the uh, charges which it has brought. Um, is there anything else that we need to address, prosecution? No, that, not anything that we can think of, this. Defense? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cook is retrieving Dr. Lewis. Okay, so she's not in the building yet? That's my understanding. Okay. Um, do we know where she is? Or how far away? Here in transit. Okay, so probably about, like yesterday, about five, ten minutes or so, something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, court will be in recess then until uh, we have Dr. Lewis. All right. Oh, my word. She was actually late again. Oh, man. Okay, okay. Hold on. Let's just fix this quickly. Too quick. Oh, damn. Okay, wait. I made myself too big. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so... Kathleen R in the chat said that's standard. I'm just like, wait, what? They just like drop all those charges of premeditation. Um, did you guys miss the timeline presentation? <laughs> timeline by Kevin Clark and then map time and then Google searches. I just feel like, man, just go back to those Google searches. Okay. So, wow. And did you guys see yesterday? I re-uploaded, by the way, if you missed it today, I've re-uploaded yesterday's afternoon session because the live stream replay is messing with us. So yeah, there's just a, yeah, sometimes there's processing problems with YouTube. That's now nothing on my side. Okay, we can't blame the mic. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Ozara Kadian. So I re-uploaded the uh, condensed version, cutting out all the long breaks and pauses and things. And so if you check that out, you can re-watch what Dr. Dorothy Lewis said, but the judge was like, don't be late tomorrow. <laughs> like you were meant to be at nine, you weren't. Then you were meant to be at one and then you were late be at nine tomorrow <laughs> she's like okay that's fine and yeah she's not there right now she's not there right now so that sucks but uh yeah they'll be back any minute now yeah she's late again i'm trying to remain calm because i'm a very punctual person and i don't like it when people are late i don't like it especially like you know five minutes is fine but like if this is going to be like 5 10 15 20 minutes i'll be like what uh stars line yep yep okay thank you so much for that and lily thank you so much for becoming a member um if you guys are members we are going to have a members stream after court today um when our snark tank is nice and full <laughs> we could snark it up and just vent a little bit so welcome to all the new members i do just want to say of course, members, uh, the, the slow mode doesn't apply to members. And while this is a good problem to have, we have a lot of members now in this community, which means slow mode is not quite so effective. So if there's like, there's almost 4,000 people here now, yesterday there was like 8,000. And so if we're all typing all the time, you know, then unfortunately it's like a blur, it's a blur. Okay, so don't get mad at me if I miss something because it's a blur for me too. But if everyone could just be mindful of that and only type, you know, when you have something to add, to say, you know, just a little less frequently, it could help if we as a group do that. But anyway, there's no, there's no strict rules. I'm just saying it might help us all. Brittany says, why can't this doctor make it to court on time? I think 
if I had to take a guess, maybe she's not building in the, the buffer time. I'm always telling Mr. Grizzly, he goes from like A to B and then he thinks it's going to be perfect timing, but there's like, but you've got to buffer in some time. Like she's in a wheelchair, I think. So that, you know, access to the building and getting out the car or whatever. I don't know. I feel like it's buffer time that was lacking in the planning. <laughs> uh, Melanie Spurgeon, thank you so, so much for your super sticker. I'm excited and anxious for today. We're going to see some video exhibits uh, from, I believe it's from November last year where Dr. Dorothy Lewis met with Letitia. And I'm wondering if we're going to see Maria. You know, I'm I'm just going to loosely say <laughs> Letitia pretending to be Maria, <laughs> busting out some Russian. <laughs> Even though she's Maria Sanchez, who trained in Mexico as a sniper. Yes, this is Letitia's story. Is she going to bust out some Russian or what? I thought she's fluent in Spanish. Does she speak Spanish and Russian or what? <laughs> Margaret says, I'm in the airline industry and on time is late for work. I know, right? I was an airline pilot for nine years and before that a competitive swimmer. So to me, every second counts. I just I just like to be on time, okay? With a buffer of maybe a minute or two. <laughs> Ten minutes is unacceptable. <laughs> yes, uh, welcome, welcome to all the new members. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I'm looking forward to seeing you all later. Um, and if you are on Patreon, of course, which is a much better source of support, it just is what it is because they take 10% from YouTubers, right? Don't worry. The members only replay. I'm going to be posting it on Patreon as well. So no one misses anything. Angie says, I don't like to be late. It ruins my day. Makes that uh, temper come out, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm speaking for myself. I don't like it either. Uh, thank you, Angie. Yes. What is yada, yada, yada in Russian? Stroganov. <laughs> I just want to see what words she'll come up with. <laughs> Okay, we're monitoring. Don't worry. We're monitoring the court. We'll see what's happening here. I'll put it here so in case you think, what, are we missing it? Are we missing it? Uh, nope, nope, no FOMO to be had. Stuck on string says, my grandmother had an expression on the wall forever ingrained in my brain. Better to be two hours too soon than two minutes late. <laughs> two minutes too late. Thanks for streaming. I like that a lot. I feel like I'm going to have that on the wall too. <laughs> Better two hours too soon. <laughs> two minutes too late. Um, okay, so Christina Bateman, thank you. So I think Dr. Lewis has Parkinson. Does she? Is that a speculation? Objection. Speculation. Is it? I don't know. I haven't seen that in my research. Uh, send me links if you do have it, but please make your subject line clear, you guys. If you send emails, don't just send me links, okay? That just goes straight to spam. I already have thousands of unread emails. <laughs> uh, Rosa, thank you for becoming a member. L. Jane Clifton Roselle, thank you for that. Oh, my word. Spoiling me. And thank you for everyone who donated to the Mike Fund. I will be using my new mic probably from tomorrow. I made a YouTube short of it as I unboxed it this morning. So it did arrive. I told you guys, Morgen and Hayes, it's arriving the next day. Yes. Also, I do want to mention um, there is a petition that you can sign for Gannon's Law. So it's in the description box. Let me just double check here. Stand by, everybody. If you go to the description box, it's there. Uh, people were asking for it earlier. I also share it quite a lot on Twitter. Uh, Grizzly Cat often shares it on Twitter as well. Then I retweet that. So thank you so much, Grizzly Cat. Uh, Laurie says, I missed a lot yesterday. Did like Tisha say if she will testify? Not yet, because they're waiting for Dr. Dorothy Lewis to finish testifying, which I don't know when that will be. I don't know. <laughs> so once Dr. Lewis is done, which should be today, um, then they're going to check again if Letitia is going to testify. Not Squirrel says, Dr. Al, I haven't read the Colorado law for telling time, <laughs> right? <laughs> Doesn't apply in the state. <laughs> She's on time somewhere, right? Poco Poco or Poco Poco. <laughs> Welcome to membership. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was looking for, I just don't want to miss anything here. Stand by. I want to quickly just look for this link so that I could show it on the screen if I can quickly. Yeah. Gannon's law petition. There we go. If you just Google as well, Gannon's law petition, you'll find it as well. Anytime you want. Welcome. Faith in justice. Goldie Lock says, check your email. G. I said you something interesting about Dr. L. It's in the subject line. Also love your channel. Okay. Normally when I'm live streaming, I'm like focused here with three screens. So I'm probably not going to check it right now, but I will check it later when I have a moment. Thank you so much, Goldie Locks. Okay. Here is the, oh, I, I, no, no, there. Here's the petition. Okay. It's in the description box. If you do want to sign it, I can't believe there's not 50,000 yet. Please go sign it. Name, last name, email address, sign the petition, and remember to click the link in your, uh, it goes to your email. You've got to click the link so that your vote counts. Maria Full of Mace, uh, welcome. 
I think that's an upgrade, right? I can't see it on StreamYard. Thank you so much. MCTD Mama says, I was told to be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. And being late is unacceptable. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Welcome, Ghost of Thrones. Melanie Spurden says, my husband and I have watched every minute with you. Thank you. Great job. It is his birthday today. And we'll be spending it with you all for Gan and happy birthday, John Mason. Oh, my word. Happy birthday, John Mason. And thank you, Melanie. And thank you for spending... <laughs> is your hubby loving it or what thank you <laughs> for bringing him here to spend his birthday with us thank you so much and for Gannon yes Sunshine says I feel Dr. Lewis has lost all objectivity when it comes to DID yeah that's what I'm thinking Christina says solely word of mouth unconfirmed Parkinson's okay 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 thank you so much yes and Fury helped with the unboxing you guys okay see I'm missing something the chat's already flying we almost got 5,000 people here oh my word welcome everyone welcome please like like it's not a popularity contest, okay? It's not like, like me. <laughs> if you like it, it will send us out into the YouTube algorithm. Then other people can come and join our chat. This is a great community. So I would like more people to see this community and chat with you guys. Um, Ireland Tess says, Google says, oh, I wonder if you say that like la, 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 or what? Yada, yada, yada in Russian. Lia, lia, lia. <laughs> That's how I would say that. Hi. Okay, so here it is. And they say... I'm still monitoring the court. On the 27th of January, 2020, the El Paso County Sheriff's Department was called around 6.55 p.m. and was informed of a runaway child, 11-year-old Gannon Stauch. Due to the reporting party, Gannon's stepmother alluding to a runaway situation, the police response time was longer than it would have been in a typical missing child case when they arrived, based on info provided by the present caregiver. They listed Gannon as a runaway, losing critical and valuable time that could have been spent getting leads on the case. It is said that after the, the first 72 hours, the chances of finding a child are dramatically reduced. Within the first 72 hours, the community was not informed of a missing and possibly endangered child. After three days, they finally upgraded Gannon to a missing and endangered person. Pause and friends says, how late does it, does it become contempt? Not sure. Not sure. Thank you for your sticker. Um, so they say, I created this petition with the intent to change how juveniles under a certain age are classified when, when missing, regardless of whether they're reported as a runaway. In the state of Colorado and in most states, it isn't safe to leave an 11-year-old unsupervised for more than three hours. At the three-hour mark, at least, Gannon should have been considered missing and in danger. Uh, this petition is not to chastise or condemn local law enforcement. I believe they've been working very hard to bring closure to this case and with the information they were provided initially. I believe they did what they thought was best. However, I also believe that those first few hours were critical and that in the future, a child under 13 years old should be automatically listed as missing or endangered after a certain period of time, not more than three hours missing without contact, regardless of whether they're suspected of or reported of running away. Tony, Elia, thank you for your $30 super sticker. Spending my vacation week with G, the best mods on YouTube and my fellow Grizzlies. So glad I found you all. Can't wait to see what happens today. Thank you, G. Thank you, Tony. And yes, we have the best mods. Thank you, mods, for everything you do. Um, thank you also for all, everyone that supports my channel. Thank you, patrons, uh, members. Thanks, everyone, for PayPal's. I replied to them today. Coffees, really appreciate it. You guys are so sweet. Um, Mandy, welcome to membership. Christina says, there was a meme in here yesterday that had a cousin on the jury willing to come on afterwards. She was going to email... Oh, a chatter, like a chatter? She did email me about it. Thank you so much. Yes, she did. She did, and I replied. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for becoming members. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly do this. I'll put it in the chat, but it is in the description box if you just want to go sign that. Name, last name, email address, and then please click sign so that you can sign it, okay? So I'm just going to leave that over there so we can see that. Okay, still monitoring. How late are we now? Yep, 11 minutes. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Vienna uh, Wells, thank you. You say, we had a similar case in Spain. Gabriel Cruz, a sweet eight-year-old who was strangled by his ex-stepmother. I remember that, actually. Wait. Gabriel Cruz. If you're new to the case, you guys, to the Gannon Stau case, this is a case of an 11-year-old boy who was murdered by his stepmother, Letitia Stau, and she's on trial, pleading not guilty by reason of insanity. That's why we could say rather than innocent or proven guilty, the usual, we don't just say like that, maybe allegedly, but now it's like, okay, we all know she did it, but was she insane at the time or not? Based on everything we saw, I'm on the side of the fence of not, not insane at the time, very calculated, those Google searches, man, 
Oh, that was so that was so the giveaway. Okay, Gabriel Cruz. Yes, I remember this one. Operacion Nemo refers to yeah, okay, okay. Miss Ladybug says put Gannon only at eleven years eight. on the uh, spot. People versus Letitia yes. Stalk record should reflect the jury's not I present agree. in the courtroom. Okay, um, they're back. We do have uh, our witness on the stand, Dr. Lewis. I would just remind you, uh, ma'am, that you're still under oath. Ooh, okay. Um, is there anything else that we need to take up at this point? Prosecution? No, Your Honor. Defense? No, okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. So much to cover. Maybe is what I'll say. Thank you, J9 Wheels. Okay, okay. I'll tell so, you what's going on with our one juror? Yeah. Just keep an eye on it. Um, what are we hearing? Let's see what she. Thank you, Gold Dust Woman. I'll put the camera on. Um, I'll zoom in as soon as you know they're all settled in. Thank you, Gold Dust Woman. <clears throat> if I miss any stickers or anything today, don't worry, I read them all afterwards in my own time, and I appreciate every single one. So thank you so much in advance. Okay, let's get this ready. We got a hot mic. Yeah, hot mic, hot mic. <laughs> what are we hearing? We do like the hot mic situations. Robin says, I think Dr. L's lateness is the defense's problem. They should be managing her and making sure she's on time. Hold defense in contempt. Well, Will Cook has been late many times, so I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm not trying to blame him. I'm just wondering if he's like the transport or what. <laughs> All yes. right, for the jury, please. <laughs> I like hot mix and I cannot lie. <laughs> yes. At least he's keep an eye on who? I don't know. Who are we keeping an eye on? Buckle up, everyone. Triple buckles today. Be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, has anything occurred since we were last together that causes any of you to believe you could not continue to serve as a fair and impartial juror in this case? If so, please raise your hand. No response. All right, when we took our break yesterday, we were in the midst of the cross-examination of Dr. Lewis. That's where we will resume. Mr. Young? Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Lewis, how are you? Good morning. You okay? In case I... I've had uh, food poisoning since last night, but oh. we'll carry on as best we can. I'm sorry to hear that. If you need to take a break or anything, just... If I do, I'll let you know. Okay. okay. Right. Look at the camera angle. I, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about disassociative identity disorder. You can't see uh, her. During direct examination yesterday, you mentioned that there was some controversy with regards to that diagnosis. Could you expand on that? What is the controversy surrounding that diagnosis? Well, the, uh, the essential controversy is whether uh, people believe it exists or not. I could give you an example of that. When I inquired of the chair of our department many years ago, did he believe that this existed? He said, I don't know. I have never seen it. Uh, and this is the kind of uh, this camera angle resistance there is to it, it's becoming more recognized and it's in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual now, so that uh, it's gaining acceptance, understanding. Also, I think with the ability to uh, photograph things and to show things, it's becoming a more well-recognized uh, disorder. Dissociation has been long recognized. It was uh, really described very well by Freud. Got it. Um, in your book, you mentioned that oftentimes people can act out multi-personality disorder or disassociative identity disorder. And there's been several movies that kind of portray that. Do you recall talking about that? No, but uh, I'm aware that there are movies such as I think Sybil and others like that where uh, 
where this has been done, and more recently in some in movies. And the movie Sybil was based on a true life story, right? That's correct. But I think Cornelia, a very, very well respected uh, psychiatrist, wrote about it. And it has been also made into a movie. And the actual person that Sybil is named for actually turned out that that person was faking multi personality disorder. Do you remember that? I, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not familiar enough with the case. Uh, so that I, I can't comment intelligently about it. Okay. Have you worked with any actors and helping them in their roles in movies? No, I don't. Wait one moment. In, the, in their roles in, in dissociation? Yes. Uh, Hate Fear, Robert De Niro. Uh, with, I have assisted Robert De Niro in... Uh, I don't think it had to do with uh, with DID. I think it had to do with uh, a, a different movie that he was making that uh, where I agreed to assist them. But it, I don't believe it had to do with DID. Had to do with him being a psychopath. It had to do with uh, with his being a very dangerous guy. Okay. Uh, and that's the movie Cape Fear, where he's a murderer and he has an urge to kill and things like that. I, I don't know all the details of the movie, but right. is that a fair it, summary of it? I don't know. The, the, there was a better one earlier than his that is a far better Cape Fear. The original. I did assist him in it and he did, uh, I did give him access to some uh, tapes that, that we had of, of people with different kinds of disorders. Did they include disassociated identity disorder? Among them, there were some that did, some that didn't, yeah. So how do you tell if someone's acting and they're, uh, they're, they want you to believe well, that they have multi-personalities? Uh, well, I can tell you what I do. The, uh, yeah, tell us, please. Okay, uh, what, what I like to do is uh, be able to, to show that there were unmistakable signs of these kinds of switches, changes, uh, different uh, states, different abilities to function long before I was ever asked to be uh, involved in, in any case. And uh, so that, that is one of the best, one of the best ways I think that's the best way. It's that, to, to my mind, if I'm teaching, I will say to students, this is as close as you get to an MRI in, in this field where you have something that was done. And again, I repeat, you can't retrospectively malinger. You can't write your name in a funny way or pretend to be somebody when you're 18, because when you're 35, you're planning to kill someone and you think you, you need a good excuse. That is, makes no sense. So that it's important for me and for the people with whom I work to be able to, well, identify in any number of ways, whether these signs, symptoms, behaviors uh, antedated any difficulty with the law or any, any current issue. Sure. Things like family members coming in and saying, God, she didn't remember my name for long periods of time, or she blacked out and couldn't remember where she was at. What are you referring to now? Who? For signs of disassociative identity disorder, retroactive. No. Uh, that Wouldn't it, mean anything to you? Well, that, that alone, no, that's very little bit. However, uh, if you, let's say, if, let's say you're looking through somebody's work, and you're looking through their um, their high school, uh, you know, notebooks, or you're looking through early uh, early pictures, early signatures, things of that nature, uh, and that these things way antedated any problematic behaviors later on. That you know, any legal issues. That is the kind of thing where. Uh, well, we found, for example, uh, in um, in the workbooks of children at school, uh, where we've we've gone through them and we have found a different name that was used 
and that was used at different times. Just and so if I could, yeah. just Dr. Lewis, you're saying that the writing would be more important than an individual saying, um, I blacked out for long periods of times. I have no recollection of what happened and there's no explanation. Of oh, I'm sorry. Cell Can phones it, off, please. I think it may be. I that your cell phone, Dr. Lewis? I think it might be. I mean, I can okay. All right. Loads up. It's very nice. <laughs> Yeah, can you turn it silent? I'm trying to find it. Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, where's the where's the evidence, Taylor? I agree. Well, okay. This should do it. Okay. Let's um oh, she... I'm gonna give it to Eric. Why don't you give it to Eric? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Let me know when you're ready, Dr. Lewis. Um and I'm sorry, I don't recall your your last. I'll question. always ask it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, is it more important to you to look at someone's prior handwritings than evidence of someone saying they had blackout periods and couldn't remember where they were at? And they couldn't remember their loved ones' names and things like that. Uh, the your second examples just don't ring true because it just is not something that I that people tend to tell me. Uh, it's and you can't measure this versus that. Often there have to be several things and combinations of uh, signs, symptoms, behaviors. Uh, what what is particularly useful is whether acquaintances or uh, family members or p uh, people who have known the person over time have said, uh, gee, when this person was such and such uh, an age, he or she insisted on being called this and acted differently and did different things. So that it's one, it's a date, a piece of data and uh but that in and of itself there is no single uh there is no single thing that you look for but at least in the cases where we have felt that we were dealing with the real thing uh there have been multiple pieces of evidence that at earlier times for, for example i noticed in some of my notes about uh leticia that someone had said when she was younger, and I forgot this yesterday, when she was younger, she asked to be called Maria. And I had forgotten that yesterday. Can you point me out where you found that information? I would have to, I'd have to look through all of this, but I can later if you like, I'll find it for you. It's just a note that I took because I thought it was interesting. But uh, what was it in an interview or where did you get that note? I I as I say, rather than take up the time of the court and look through all of this, I will find it for you. But I I just noticed it in the past, maybe several hours or so, and I can find it for you because- Well, here's the deal. I only have a X yes. amount of time to talk to you. Right, yes. And so I can't uh, really let this linger around because it's yes. pretty significant. I think so, yes. Uh, uh, oh, here. Um, She's taking notes. Is it a grizzly notebook or what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can tell you though that I uh, came upon it uh, in the past maybe 12 hours or so. Well, do you know uh, if it's something that the defendant told you? Uh, no, it was not. That's what was interesting that uh, I had completely forgotten this, but I saw that someone who had been interviewed said when she was a child, at times she asked to be called Maria. That in and of itself is not uh, a proof of anything, but 
it's a confirmation if you have a lot of other things that that go along with it. Um, well, it's certainly not in any police reports, correct? Uh, as far as no, it's not police reports. It would be in a report that the defense yeah. gave you. Um, Oh, here, uh, again, I I will be taking notes as I'm going through stuff and whatever. And uh, here I have Letitia yes, notes. Dr. Lewis, Lewis, Dr. Uh, Lewis. Yes. Uh, the way we have to do this is you need to read that to yourself and see if that refreshes your memory. And then once you've done that, I can ask you some questions, okay? Because I don't have that that you have in front of you. No. Um, told you guys triple buckles it's going to be an awkward day <laughs> uh again these are simply what i took and labeled letitia notes from relatives can't tell you exactly who but uh here it says l letitia called self maria sanchez as a young child and I have a little uh, explanation when saying retrospective malingering, because that, uh, you know, we don't do that. At, at 12, you don't call yourself Maria because later on you're expecting to do something where you're going to have to make some sort of excuse. Um, so this is, uh, this is what one of her relatives had told us that, uh, that she called herself Maria Sanchez as a young child. This came as a surprise to me. I had not recalled it, but I was skimming it and there it was. And, and Dr. Lewis, you've testified hundreds of times and you know that you're going to turn over your notes and everything you rely on as an expert in the prosecution, you know that. Is that a question? Yes, it is. No, when Your I- obligations as an expert to turn over all the information that you use in formulating your opinions, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, when I am sitting taking notes over different things, I do not necessarily even keep everything. I jot down something that I think may be important later, and I notice that I jotted this down. And it's so important that you found out about it last night. You came in and decided to tell the jury about it today. Is that correct? I, I came upon it last night, I believe before this morning, yes. And it's so important you made an effort to put it in your report that you knew that the prosecution was going to get. Is that correct? No, it is not. I sat when I was going over notes, trying to pull together things ages ago uh, and jotted that down because I thought, gee, that's odd. Uh, she had just mentioned Maria to me uh, very recently, and somebody had said this. When I wrote down L called self Maria as a young child, if I thought I was going to have to prove this particular statement to someone, I would have written down who said it or whatever. I was pulling together my thoughts at the time and going through and seeing what kinds of things seem to matter. And it is a note taken while I was going through hundreds of pages of notes. And to my surprise, this appeared. And I had no memory of having seen it before until I looked at it uh, skimming through it and uh, and found it in the past, I would say, 12 hours or so. It was until you realized you had nothing to corroborate your diagnosis that she was Maria Sanchez and you needed to come up with something. Is that right? No. It was Why written. Why wasn't that in your report, doctor? It was that significant. That's the only corroboration you have. Why is it not in your report? It is not the only corroboration that we have, sir. This is a... Uh, this is an observation as you go through hundreds of pages of notes and you see something there that you hadn't expected. And so I'll jot it down and think, see, that's kind of interesting. But there are many other pieces of evidence that there were other times that uh, 
that she apparently used other names and that she signed differently. But for example, there are notes where there are different names, but if you really study them, it turns out they were her names. They were before she was married, they were when she was married to one person, then to another. And I will write them down because what at first may look as if, gee, why, why is there this name? Uh, you know, it, it, did she use that? And then uh, you're an idiot if you say, oh yeah, she was uh, in an altered state. Well, no, she was in an unmarried state or she was married to a different person. So that when I'm going through things, I'll jot something down. I happened to jot this down because I thought, how come that early? I didn't become aware of, I don't think I became aware of the Maria character until I had interviewed her. Yeah, that's when everyone became aware of it. Well, the here I- The yeah. that family members, including her daughter, Harley Hunt, her husband, Al Stout, had never seen any signs or any evidence that she had different personalities. I, I can't comment on that because people's uh, ability to recognize things, the ways in, in things, question, the ways things are asked make a difference. So I can't in general say, yes, this matters. No, it does not. This is interesting. Well, let somebody me, knows let me, let me, before you go off on another tangent, let me finish my question, okay? You consider that, that there was no evidence by family members that she had no patients that she had disassociated. Uh, that specifically, yes. I, I, I did not think about that specifically because uh, different uh, personas are either recognized differently because of the sensitivity of the observer uh, or they don't uh, occur in that setting and uh, they occur in another setting. Uh, as and it doesn't help your diagnosis but disassociative identity disorder, correct? Is that why you don't consider it? No, it it is. It's interesting that they did not notice this. Uh, it may even be one of them who who said this. Who said, "No, I never noticed anything different." And yet, uh, one of these people said uh, that I, I think we got what your note herself. says, Doctor. Okay. Well, that that could well be one of the people who said, "I never noticed she was different." But oh, she sometimes she called herself Maria, so that you're just you're open to whatever comes your way. You try to jot down what seems important, and then you try to pull it together later. But there is no one thing that will uh, say, "Oh yes, this person suffers from VID or does not." There's, you know, there's a whole constellation of. Uh, of different things that you look at, that you consider, and uh, no one thing that matters particularly. Okay. Let's talk about something that matters to you that you put in your report, okay? You had Ms. Stout drew, uh, I forget the name of the test, where they draw the clock and they have to put the hands of the clock. What's the name of that test? I don't know, I call it clock. <laughs> we'll call it the clock test, is that, oh, is that right with you? Yeah. So you had her perform the clock test and she did horrible on it. Well, she uh, she did something that I've seen before on uh, with like older patients who have been actually demented. And uh, I actually consulted Dr. Marikangas about it and others uh, because it looks as though there is some kind of a defect in the ability to see certain areas. And so that the everything was crowded into one area. And I have seen this in patients with, uh, with dementia and dementia can be caused by many different injuries. Uh, so that I, I was surprised. Uh, the other thing that is surprising is that uh, I didn't know quite what to make of it. I knew I'd it was something unusual. And I had asked her again, would you do this again? And, uh, and she did a, a much better job of it. And then I remembered I jotted down L because uh, when she had done something with her right hand 
And then I hadn't asked her to change hands at that point, but I wondered why are these different? And uh, one with the left hand had been done one way and with the right hand another way. Uh, so that she, uh, she functioned differently and also she functioned differently at different times, which, was, which puzzled me. This is partly why I very much wanted to consult a neurologist because uh, I, I don't feel that I am uh, familiar enough, skilled enough, trained enough to, uh, to say this is the section of, uh, of the optic area that, that I think is functioning differently at this time. Did, but, uh, did the thought ever cross your mind that she could be faking it? just wanting to have you have the opinions you have pretty, pretty easy right to mess up the hands on the clock no one she didn't mess up the hands on the clock she created one section of it i didn't know until relatively recently that this was typical of certain people with brain dysfunction in certain areas no it did not occur to me that that was faking something because Afterwards, when I said, would you repeat this? Would you do it again? That she did a better job on it. And uh, this is still a puzzle to me. And if I had a, the proper consultation, I would have discussed it with neurologists and tried to figure out because the optic pathway is a very complicated pathway in the brain. It turns upside down. It moves back and forth. And a neurologist is far better equipped to say this is where things seem to be going wrong. Uh, did no, you know that she had performed that test before? I, I did not know whether she had or had not. Have you reviewed the state hospital uh, reports, both the competency evaluation and the insanity evaluations, correct? I'm not sure at which point, but I am not aware. I'm not aware of having seen that. That was, that was kind of my last minute thought, is there anything I can do uh, that might show me any neurologic uh, dysfunction of any sort? And so I said, oh, by the, would you please draw a clock for me? I didn't tell her which hand, I tend to just put something down and they pick it up. And I was staggered at uh, what I saw because it's a specific, uh, dysfunction is it's it isn't like trying to mess something up it was in part of it and then when I asked her to do it again uh, she did it better and, and doctor I I understand that you want the jury to hear what you have to say but if you can just focus on my question and just answer it okay did you review any prior tests that Ms. Stout took with regards to this clock test that you've been talking about? I, I don't recall seeing another clock test at that time prior to what I had done, no. Okay, if I can just have a second. For the clock test that Dr. Torres did. I think Leticia's clock drawing would be like the ring, like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is hectic, you guys. Triple buckles on. Yeah, okay. We need to go and get a coffee. Retrieve an exhibit. It's people 736. You may. Bring out the clocks. <laughs> they... Hold on, that. Single speed, if I remember right. <laughs> If they put it on screen, I'll show you. Some shit. Some shit. About that, Dr. Lewis. 
I've got a couple of exhibits in this case. I, I also have other clocks here that I had asked her to do. Here are some. And I think these were done the same day. So it, it is a puzzle to me, and I don't pretend to, uh, you know, I don't pretend to be an expert on interpreting this, but. Uh, well, let me show you yeah, this yeah. exhibit, um, yeah. 736, mm -hmm. okay? You see there in the top right hand corner? Yes. Picture of the clock? Yeah. They're not showing us. Are you yeah. familiar with that? I'm not, I, I, I don't recognize this as having seen this actual page before, okay. uh, but it is a clock and uh, see what she said, draw a clock, 10 past, what is it, 10 past 11? No, it's, uh, it's. She did pretty good on that one, didn't she? Well, yeah, it's not 10 past 11 really, but it's, uh, I have others where she did better with me, and it puzzled me that uh, right, uh, you know, at the time I said, "Would well, do it again and do it again," and uh, and it did improve. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, you know, to, I am puzzled by this phenomenon, and I can't explain it to you except it is unusual that that particular way of drawing it has been found in individuals with severe brain damage, actually. Uh, well, in, it, when and we're talking about yeah. insanity, doctor. We're talking about the time of the crime, correct? We're talking about uh, brain function at the time of the crime and- uh, So a test happened. that was taken closer to the time of the crime would be more accurate as to what the brain function was happening at the time of the crime. Is that correct? Not necessarily. So brain functions change over time? Yes. Like change after you plead not guilty by reason of insanity? And before and during. Uh, I mean, it changed there. I was with her. And when she produced this, that was kind of my last fling at seeing, is there any sign of organicity? And then Afterwards, when I asked her to repeat it for me right then and there, uh, she did a better job. And then I kind of looked and I marked that she had been using her left hand and then her right hand or vice versa. And uh, sure, it, it varied right then and there. And I can't pretend to tell you exactly why. I think that with the assistance of a neurologist, we could at least have an idea of what what was blocked off during part of this and uh okay let me, i'm going to stop you again yeah. doctor because we're getting away from what the question was okay uh, on direct examination you indicated that a bookcase fell on her and she had to go to the hospital and she had a head injury as a result of that do you remember saying that yesterday I remember reading it yes and saying it yes. and that happened close in time to the crime before the crime I don't remember if it was close in time. It was a while back when she was teaching. I, I don't, Colorado, correct? I, that I, I don't remember where or the date, but you would have to tell me. Misrepresenting the evidence, she was questioned about her case until in 2011 so, as supported by the so medical record. It's up to the jury to make a determination regarding whether or not any question or representation by an attorney misrepresents the evidence. Objections overruled. Let me ask you this. You know that she was examined two days after the crime for head injuries, correct? Uh, I'm not, I can't, I'm not aware of how she was examined or by whom then right after the crime. I would have to look at it to, if I saw it to refresh my memory. Would it be significant to you if you saw that? I would have to see what it said. I. It depends on what it said and how it said it and what they had done. So uh, it could be. It could be. Well, she was examined by a sane nurse, and the sane nurse was feeling her head and examining her head for injuries. Would that be significant to you and your determination that she may have a head injury? If it if it were there, it could be significant. However, uh, you don't necessarily feel on the outside what happened. If you shake something uh, head, there are little hemorrhages that occur in the brain. You would not feel that. 
when you, if you examine, now sure, if something hits, hits you on the head, you like to feel, because there will be a bump, but uh, you can get a far more severe head injury by just doing that. And you, you can actually kill a, an infant, not deliberately, but by shaking the infant. And the, the uh, brain goes back and forth in the, in the cranium. And, uh, and you will get little hemorrhages. And depending on where they are, you will get certain kinds of disorders in the uh, in functioning. And I can't tell you exactly what they are. That's much more in the field of a neurologist. But hey, doctor, let me stop you again. Is it significant to you that a nurse examined the defendant two days after the crime and found no injuries to her head? Is it significant in what way? Meaning that there were no injuries? No. And that's because you could speculate and say she could have had a brain tumor, she could have had hemorrhages because someone was shaking her. Is that what your opinion is? She she had other uh, injuries previously, so that uh, it's good if the nurse actually did this. I'm not aware. I, I'm not aware of anybody's having felt her head. Maybe they did. I don't know, but. Uh, it's, uh, you know, that does not tell you enough. It's, it tells you if there's a bump, you do know that, that something hit the, uh, hit the skull. The I want to talk about psychosis for a while, okay? Um, in an insanity case, it's real common that psychosis is involved if that person is truly same, correct? Often, yeah. Doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists look for evidence of psychosis at the time of the crime in making those decisions, correct? They look at it over a spectrum, but they do certainly look at it then, and, and they look at a lot of other things besides psychosis. But yes, one of the things that people look at uh, is uh, are the sign symptoms behaviors of psychosis. Psychosis is not one little uh, phenomenon. There are many different kinds of psychoses and signs of it so that uh, it, uh, you're, you're talking about such a broad uh, topic. I'm that talking about them all. Any, any signs of psychosis is important when you're doing a sanity evaluation, correct? Certainly. And a classic example of someone who is truly legally insane would be uh, a father who kills their daughter because they're hearing voices that their daughter is the devil. Feel like they have no choice but to kill their own daughter. And so they kill their daughter. Does that sound like something that might fit legal insanity? Uh, it's... It's your concept of one possible type of insanity. Well, what's your concept? Does that seem there are possible? many different concepts? Well, let's just stick to this yeah. hypothetical. Yeah. Does it yes or no? Does it fit your concept of what you feel insanity? As I've said, insanity is many, many different things. And it depends and insanity. It's okay to agree with me, Doctor. <laughs> well, no, all that I'm saying to you is you've given one layperson's notion of what insanity is. And, uh, you know, you could have given another story and I would have agreed with it or whatever. Sure, it's a possibility. Okay, uh, I'll take the possibility. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, in that circumstances, they wouldn't know the capacity to appreciate the wrongfulness of their act because they had a psychosis that something was telling them that their daughter was the devil. Follow me? Uh, if you believe that, yes. How do you believe that? In a hypothetical story, I, I believe that you are giving an example of something. No, I don't believe that that happened, but I certainly believe it's one of your, uh, one of your concepts of what uh, what a psychotic episode can be like. And no. I'll buy that that could be one. Sure. Okay. I'll take that. I'll give it. <laughs> the other, to add that hypothetical, 
because the individual didn't appreciate the wrongfulness of his actions, he wouldn't do anything to hide the body. He would stand there and say, I did what had to be done. Right? According to your notion of it, uh, not necessarily, but uh, I will buy that this is what you believe it to be. Say, no, I'm not going to hide it because it was good. Right afterwards, a uh, person say, oh, my God, what's what's happened here? I don't know what this is. I don't know what happened. There are so many permutations sure. and combinations. I would have to say no. That's a it's a it's a story. So you would find that person legally sane? Is that what you're saying? No, that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying it takes a whole lot more to uh, assess uh, sanity and its definition. But no, that that's a story that you made up. Actually, I didn't make it up, unfortunately. Um, let me ask you another question about sanity and what you assess. Do you look at a defendant's actions, how the crime was committed, what they did before, during the commission of the crime, and what they did after the crime, and render an opinion as to insanity? Uh, I, I do that not simply in terms of rendering an opinion of insanity, uh, but it's a very important part of rendering an opinion of uh, neurologic impairment. For example, it is, uh, it's extremely common to ask, particularly if you think that there has been some brain dysfunction, how about before? Before any of this happened, what were you feeling? What were you thinking? How Describe that. Um, how about during? Do you remember everything that happened then? Were you told that you did something you don't remember? Uh, and how about afterwards? How did you feel? Uh, did you have a headache? Did you throw up? Did you, uh, you know, uh, did you feel unwell? Uh, so that before, during, and after is a very, very important sequence. And you would ask it, not just in terms of, uh, quote, sanity, but in terms of uh, neurologic impairment and how that affects brain function. Well, you consider anyone who commits murder to have neurological development issues, don't you? I'm sorry, say that again? You consider anyone who commits murder to have neurological issues. I don't recall ever saying that. Uh, did I give you that impression? Better on the HBO documentary. We're saying it there. What did I? What would you quote this? I'm I'm not aware of. Well, let me let me rephrase. Do you think anyone who commits murder has a brain injury? No. Do you think when you're evaluating someone for insanity, and you're asking them these questions that you just talked about, what they thought before, during, and after the crime? That would be important to go back and look at the evidence to see if it's consistent with what they're saying. Any data that you can get that uh, that elaborates on what happened is valuable. I can't say how or what, but of course, anything. Uh, you know, even something where weeks before something could have happened. So that, uh, sure, anything that uh, that you can learn about the act before, during, after, and at any time before, during, after is important. The night before this crime, this murder, on January 26, 2020, uh, the defendant had a video recording of her and Gannon talking about the fire. Do you recall seeing that? No. I think that would be important to look at, what she's saying the night before the murder? I would I would have to see it, sir. I can't. I, I need to look at it, and then I'll say, yes, I think it is important or whatever. But yeah, I, I don't recall it. Not a problem. Um, do we, oh, we don't have no. We can't play it. <laughs> Did you not remember looking at that as part of your evaluation? Matador. I, I'm sorry. I do not recall exactly that. Also, some oh. of my some of what I saw was unclear and the sign was not good so that I can't be certain of that. Well, let me describe it to you and see what your thoughts are, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So 
she's first of all video recording the conversation she's having with her stepson who's 11 years old saying things like it's okay we can sell the couch not a problem we can sell the couch and fix it and Danny says I'm just worried about my burns and he's crying then she says it's okay tomorrow and then she shuts the video off Remember seeing anything like that? I, I'm sorry, I don't recall it, but again, uh, much of what I saw was not clear, the sound was not good, and I am not aware of having seen that exactly. Uh, I am aware of having read that uh, that Gannon, uh, that she said he had little bubbles on his arm. That uh, so that that's the part of what of that I'm assuming it's the same issue. That's that is the part that stayed with me well what about the part of her having the ability to stop the video mm -hmm. after dan says i had first i'm not sure what that would mean what uh what would what would you have me agree to what but... do you think that would be evidence that she didn't want anyone to know that gannon had burst uh i can't say i'm not aware of that because she did say that he had little bubbles on his arm if she didn't want anyone to know that i don't know why she would have said that okay 4 36 in the morning on the morning of january 27 2020 she sends a text to her employer saying i can't come in my stepfather was just killed in an auto accident um do you remember that we talked about it yeah. a little bit mm -hmm. pretty significant to you and your opinions yes We'll get there in a second. Do you remember the rest of the text journey? The rest of the text? If you remind me, I can tell you if I remember it. What I don't know what you're referring to. I'll paraphrase how's yeah. that? So the boss returned with, you know, later in the morning because she's not up at 4 30. She says, just let us know what we can do for you. Let me know when you can come in. Words to that effect. Yeah. And then the defendant texts back and says, I can't believe you can be so inconsiderate. I had a family member just die. Uh, object in the stating text. I'm paraphrasing. The rule. Remember seeing anything like that? I I remember reading about what to me seemed lackey, if you want, you can call it psychotic, but uh, that made no sense. This man was dead, I think, for eight years, and to call in and say she clearly was not thinking clearly or much longer. Uh, cogently or accurately and she gave it was one of these ridiculous kinds of excuses that a person of her intellect would not be expected to uh, to volunteer there's a, a you know you'd almost say a stupidity about it but she's she's in stupid uh there's uh well, there's something yeah, let me, let me wrong stop you, doctor. with how she's um, describing this could it be if this didn't want to go to work that day? Could that just be out of the realm of possibility? Unlikely, but possible. I mean, and she had other things to do that day? She didn't want to go to work? I think it's unlikely. And you also know that her stepfather actually died in 2004, correct? I know he died for uh, eight years, I believe, prior to this. Well... Let's do I'll, the math. I'll go by your math. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, she was also able to call in to Gannon School and say Gannon's not going to be coming into school that day either. You seen that? Absolutely. Nothing psychotic about that. At the time that I read that, became aware of it. I was puzzled because I thought, gee, then he must have been dead then. Why is she calling in? And uh, it really did not make a lot of sense to me to be calling in one person who died eight years ago was having a funeral that day. And, uh, and Gannon couldn't go to school, but I learned subsequently that he is reportedly uh, dead a lot later than that so that uh it's a puzzle why she called in to say he couldn't come in it had nothing to do with maybe planning 
and what she's yeah, going to be doing. I don't today. know. It could have had to do with planning. Okay. And then you know that she also sent a text to her husband, Al Stout, saying, hey, well, let school know that Gaynor's not coming in today. He's sick. He had some stomach issues the day before. For that one? No. The stepfather. You said that was psychotic or evidence of psychosis. I I don't know what that what you're referring to, sir. Could the you? Fact that she calls in the school and saying my stepfather just died. I I think it's a uh, peculiar. It's bizarre. I I'm not sure what that was all about. What she was thinking, why she did that. It doesn't make sense. It's a bit of a leap to call it psychosis, right? Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense. Does it make sense that she may circle back to that at a time where she wants people to feel that she's mentally ill, blame it on her stepfather because it's on record that she's already talked about her stepfather dying? Does that make sense at all to you? It doesn't make sense to me, to no. And then the morning of the 27th at approximately 8 14 a.m., and then again at 8 16 a.m., she takes pictures of Gannon in bed and sends them to her husband, Al Stout. Do you remember seeing that? I don't recall seeing. No. Not unusual behavior. I beg your pardon. Is that unusual behavior? Taking a picture of a child sleeping in his bed? I, it's behavior. I don't know what kind of behavior. Do you think she might have been taking pictures to show that Gannon was still alive that morning? She might have been. And then uh, you talk about it with her in the interview, and you know from reading the police reports that they, her and Gannon leave the house about 1020 in the morning. They go to Petco. Remember that part? Uh, yeah, in part. Yeah. And they take Al Stout's red Nissan truck. Remember that? I don't recall it was a red Nissan truck, but I, I recall it was a truck that, uh, actually, I thought it was her truck. Could have been his. And you can actually see Gannon walking to the back left passenger side, rear, rear left door of the truck and get in. Remember seeing that video? I, I don't recall seeing it, but... Uh, I, you know, I may have read other people saw it. I, uh, I just don't have a clear memory of that particular film. Now, in the video, you can see the clothing that Gannon's wearing. You see uh, uh, sweats with a white stripe going down. You remember seeing that? As I told you, I, I don't remember seeing that particular thing. But again, the equipment I had was not clear and... Uh, there was no one there with me to say this is what we're seeing now. So that, uh, but I, I don't question this that there was that that there's uh, it's peculiar that uh, here he is walking around and if I understand correctly, she had already called the school and said that he could not come in. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He's yeah. homesick. She's home because she's telling people that her stepfather died, and they decide to go shopping. Playing hooky. <laughs> oh, uh, was that uh, buying cat toys? Was it? I forget something like that. Needless to say, Gannon's wearing the same clothes that he was found in under a bridge on March seventeenth, twenty twenty. They leave that morning. I I believe you. Now, at the time that she drives that truck around and goes to Petco. Does she have the capacity to know right from wrong? I don't know. I, that, that's a leap where, you know, if you can't talk to the person and you don't see more. I, I don't know. You talked to her. Did you ask her that? I don't recall asking specifically, did you know right from wrong at the, 
at this point. I I don't know, and I don't know the answer to that. Would it be a stretch to say she did know right from wrong? The fact that she was able to go to Petco, run errands, and come back later that afternoon with no tickets, no accidents. That she knew right from wrong then? Sure. I don't know. I would think having called into school and having said uh, that this child can't come in and then taking him on a on, on a field trip to Petco, uh, that she really did not have a good idea of what she was doing or why she was doing it. Oh. And I, I'm not sure that the idea of right from wrong is applicable to this just particular episode. It, well, it's wacky, but it's- uh, She's legally insane at the time she's driving the Petco again. I don't know. I think you would have to, you know, I, I would have to know a whole lot more. If you don't know a lot more, can you come in here and say that she was legally insane based on her driving the Petco again? I cannot, I can't say because I don't know enough about it. They get back about 2.20 p.m. and there's video of them coming back. Do you remember seeing that? Again, I, I remember knowing about it, what I saw and what I remember reading. I can't distinguish the two, but I do recall that, uh, I believe it was at two, that there was a return. And we see a leg drop on the right rear passenger door, right about the time that the driver's door opened. Do you remember seeing that? No. Well, she tells you that they both come home together, right? When she's talking to you. I'll buy that. Sure. Do you not remember that? Again, I don't remember word for word when she told me these things. And also, since I read other people's accounts of them, uh, I can't tell you exactly where a piece of information came from. Anything about the video about them coming back at 2.20 p.m. that would lead you to believe that she didn't have the capacity to know right from wrong? I, it's a tough one to say right from wrong versus that she didn't know what on earth she was doing. And, and I'm just asking did. if she had the capacity if she was able to know right from wrong. I, I don't know that. You know from the video that they sit in the truck for approximately 30 seconds as the truck is there before the doors open? No. Is it unconceivable that they might have been talking to each other? No, or not. Or arguing with each other? Or not. The autopsy report. You've read that, right? Right. The autopsy report tells you a lot about how the killing took place, does it not? I think so. And the autopsy report tells you that there was at least 18 cut wounds and stab wounds. Right. And a lot of those were defensive wounds on Gannon? Some, yeah. Some on his hands. He was fighting back, right? <clears throat> as far as we know, yes. Is there indication that whoever did that had the capacity to form the intent to kill? I, I don't know. I would think so. I would think so. Just based on the stand wounds alone, right? Well, it certainly had that quality of, you know, as I thought about it, whether there was an automatic quality to it, which is partly why I wanted certain neurologic tests done, uh, because there was a repetition, as I recall. And, but there was, uh, there were signs on his hands of cut, of cut marks. So they're fighting back, right? Looks that way to me. And the location of the stab wounds, three in the chest, one in the head, several in the back and arms that we already kind of talked mm -hmm. about. Does that indicate to you that whoever did this had the capacity to form the intent to kill? That, that's a stretch for me because uh, when individuals keep doing this kind of act over and over and over again, 
uh, it, it can be an attempt to kill, but uh, it can also be a repetitious kind of automatic act. And uh, not having been there, and uh, I, I don't know what, what the state of mind was, whether there was a kind of an automatic going about this, or whether there was a real, gee, I haven't killed him now, I'd like to kill him. Well, that, me, I don't know. Let so, me have you take off your psychiatrist hat for just a second and just use good old common sense. Based on the stab wounds alone, whoever commit this crime had the capacity to form the intent to kill. I, I cannot answer that for this, the reason that I've just told you, that I don't know whether the person was automatically doing something which with certain types of complex partial seizures uh, occur where a person just keeps, they may do something not at all violent. They may button and unbutton their coat. They may turn a light on and off and just keep doing it. And they may just keep doing that. Or they may say, not dead yet, I want to kill them. So that I don't know for sure what was going on in the uh, head of of the person doing this. Okay, I well, let, let's say there are two possibilities. There are at least two possibilities. Let's move on from the stab wound. Yeah. The fact that there was blunt force trauma, i.e. some sort of object was used, caused four head injuries, one of which crushing Gannon's skull, causing skull fractures. Right. The fact that another instrument was retrieved and used, <clears throat> lead to the opinion that whoever did this had the capacity to form judgment and reflection and also had the capacity to form the intent to kill. I, I think you could interpret it that way, or you could say the person felt threatened, felt endangered. By the way, I did not understand where that came from or how, with all of those stab wounds, where this item came from. Perhaps I missed something in the report. Uh, but, well, um, well, let me stop you right there, because in your uh, report, you said you thought it may have been a baseball. Am I right in your report? I, I'm sorry, I don't recall that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it could have been uh, a fear that the person himself or herself was being threatened and that uh, the wish was to uh, get rid of this threatening, murderous object. I don't know what was going through her head. What about the blunt force injuries to her uh, Gannon's head, the four themselves? I don't, uh, I'm sorry. I don't have a good understanding of the object or of that particular aspect of the injury. So I- Why does the object I, matter? I don't know. I the would is, have to know. The point is they decided to move from a knife and go to another object, continue on with the killing, correct? I, I'm not correct. I, I'm, I don't know what came first or what came second. And I'm not sure how, how when you're stabbing someone, you get around to hit them on the back of the head. Uh, it's uh, it puzzled me, and uh, and I I still don't know what what was going on at the time or in the person's head. For all you know, the person could have felt threatened and felt that something was uh, of danger to her. I don't know what was going through her head at the time. Well, there's an 11 year old boy who has 18 stab wounds lying in his bed, right. and then she takes an object and crushes his skull. Does that indicate that he's fighting back at that point? I'm sorry, I don't know enough about the- Did you look at the crime scene pictures? I looked at the, I looked particularly at the autopsy, I remember, I'm not, uh, I'm not as clear of, of, of the crime scene pictures, except for the spatters of blood and, and this sort of thing. But uh, I don't know what was going through her mind when this was happening. Was she defending herself? Was she attempting to kill him? The puzzle is all other data say that she loved him. 
and that he apparently he loved her and loved him quite a bit, didn't she? The next thing she does is she gets another object, gun. The fact that she gets a gun does that tell you she has the capacity to use it and reflection, it's the capacity to form the intent to kill? I don't know, sir. I when I spoke with her, she her memory was. I could see a gun in my hand, and I I do not know what was going through her head or why there was a gun or why she shot uh, why she shot this. Uh, it would be a leap for me to to speculate on this. Uh, I it is not clear that that she simply wanted to kill this. This is a child she loved. As if we believe what other people said. She loved Gannon so that uh, it's. And so I just want to make sure I'm understanding that she wished to kill him. I don't know that it was even he that she wished to kill. Clearly, she did kill him, but we don't know whether uh, at the time she saw Gannon and she was trying to kill Gannon. We don't know. So her actions mean nothing to you with regards to. I think to that's a leap. Her actions mean nothing to me. No. Uh, well, everything's a leap to you. I, I, I just want to know what that means to you. The fact that she used three separate instruments to kill Gannon. Did she have the ability to make decisions when she did that? And I'm uh, what I'm saying is I can't be certain what was going on in her head because I I pondered it and I thought, what on earth? How how did she get this whatever the blunt instrument was? Uh, when did it happen? And then when I think more than one person said that she loved this child, so that uh, it certainly made me wonder whether she was misperceiving something there. And uh, well, then let's let's go forward then, because what does she do after she does all that? She drags his body to the storage room and stuffs it in a large green suitcase. She had the capacity to know right from wrong when she did that. Uh, it would certainly seem she knew that this was something that uh, should not have happened. And does that corroborate the actual killing that she had the capacity to form an intent to kill, the capacity to use judgment and reflection, the fact that she immediately stuffs his body in a suitcase afterwards? I, again, I don't know for sure. But, what about uh, cleaning up the crime scene? After he stuff, she stuffs his body in a suitcase, she goes back to the room and cleans all the blood off the wall. Not all of it. That have the, does she have the capacity to know right from wrong when she's cleaning Ann's bedroom? She certainly uh, believes that other people will believe that she had done something horrendous or something terrible had happened. Uh, that's, I guess, as far as I can go right, right now. Now, she then goes back to the storage room and throws a bunch of boxes on a green suitcase in the storage room. Have you seen pictures of that? I, again, I've seen a lot so that uh, I don't recall those particular pictures. And then the police come about 10.09 that evening, January 27th, and they search the entire house. And her demeanor is calm, cool, and collected. And went to some friend's house, didn't come home. Makes those statements with her demeanor like that. Is that evidence that she had the capacity to know right from wrong? I don't think that <clears throat> I don't think that's evidence that she knew right from wrong. Uh, we don't even know whether she knew what she had done. We uh, I I again. I, I don't think that that's evidence she knew right from wrong. What it, about, is it evidence of psychosis? It certainly it sounds psychotic, out of touch with reality. When someone's in a psychotic state, it's pretty obvious, right? No. Like looking around. Wrong. No, no, sorry. That's television, no. Okay. So someone in a psychotic state can act normal and have a normal conversation with a police officer when their stepson is in the storage room underneath a bunch mm -hmm. of boxes in a suitcase? 
particularly if the person does not know that she has done that or that this is what what the status is that you know we don't we don't know what but there's something really odd about being in that a very calm sort of state here she is reportedly murdered a child she loved this makes no sense this this is psychotic uh what, and did this, she kill that boy did she think she'd killed him uh, was it that boy? Did she remember what had happened? Uh, well, let's talk about the next day then, if she remembered. Because the next day at 6.20 in the morning, she drives her Tiguan out of the garage and is gone for 10 minutes and it comes back. Remember that? I, I don't remember that specific. She, she doesn't know it. Tiguan. And then later that morning at 8.30, she goes to pick up Al her husband at the airport. Remember that? Yes. For Young, could you find a reasonable breaking point in the next five minutes or so? Sure, I can, Young. When she leaves at 6.22 a.m., I think she might be looking to see if anybody is watching. That's a speculation. I don't know. Because when she leaves at 8.30, do you know who's in the car with her? I'm assuming that uh, that the body is in the car. Is that what you're referring to? Absolutely. The body that you just said that she may have forgot about. She didn't remember killing him, put him in the suitcase, hide him in the storage room. That body. Yes, she gets I, the body out of the storage room, takes it upstairs, puts it in the back of the T1, drives to the airport. Sound familiar? Is that a question? Uh, yeah. At the time she does that, does she have the capacity to know right from wrong? I don't know because it is approximately then when she thinks that at least what she says to some people is she thinks that she can bring this body back to life. And she says that she brings him or tries to get him a hamburger. That ought to do it. And uh, and then she, I believe, she even tries to get him ice cream. This this is psychotic thinking. This is oh, that's what she's saying. What actually happened is she drove directly to the airport, parked the Tiguan, left Gannon's body in the back of the Tiguan, rented another car, and now her went home. That's what happened. Yeah. What she's saying is psychotic because she wants you to think it's psychotic. Correct. I can't say that's correct. I can say you believe that's correct. Okay. You know, this is a good time to stop. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our morning recess. If I can have everyone back in the jury room at say uh, 1040, we should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Uh, and we will see you back at uh, 1040. I'll rise for the jury, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is Letitia doing? Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Court will be in recess until 1040. All rise. Okay, courts in recess till 1040. Wow. <laughs> These breaks are becoming interesting because I'm a little speechless. I'm like, wait, what? But let's go with it. Okay, so 10.40. So we've got 15, 14 minutes now, actually. Um, which means I'm also going to have to get up and get coffee, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to need coffee <laughs> to continue. But let's just go over a few things. Um, making some scribbles. I was just like, maybe I should send in my notes. <laughs> Might be helpful. I'm just really shocked that Dr. Lewis, I don't know if she's got like a memory problem or if she just didn't do her homework at all. If it's a case of not, okay, mic check. <laughs> if it's a case of not doing a homework, I'm very disappointed, very, okay? That makes me angry because 
for Gannon, I know she's uh, a witness for the defense, but mm, it just rubbed me the wrong way, man. Do your homework. She doesn't know anything about the case. We can hear it, guys. We've been here day in, day out, bullet points, recaps, notes, everything. She doesn't know a thing, okay, <laughs> about this case. Unless it's just out of her memory, and I don't understand that. Uh, Drea says, narcs can't love. He triggered narc rage probably by disrespecting her when he wouldn't ma yeah, make her his mommy. I'm thinking triggered some kind of jealousy as well because... She was already so jealous of Landon. And if he was missing his mom, because he'd only been there from like, um, she talked about Christmas, right? He was there for a while, but she talked about Christmas, doing everything for the kids. That's what she's supposed to do, Letitia. But anyway, I just think it was probably an escalating problem in her mind of just like, this guy doesn't appreciate me. You know, like I'm trying my best here and I'm a glorified nanny. All these things she Googled. I mean, why can't Dr. Lewis just look at the Google searches? Just that alone will help so much. Anita says, oh, my word, Gizla, thank you so much for streaming this trial. And yes, get yourself some coffee. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm going to need it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, and I've already had two coffees today, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need one for this to continue. Yes. RNN Mama 2, thank you so much. That is so sweet. Really, really appreciate it. I'm very, like, shocked that everything, the, for the this Dr. Lewis, everything is a leap. Every, there's no solid answer to any question. It's all like up in the air, as if she's in her own magical world, which is just a little bit concerning. It does feel like a little bit technology has left her behind or something, because like, did you see the Google searches? Did you see the surveillance footage? Did you see the recording or hear the recording Letitia made? No, none of that. She can't remember it. That, that sucks. Uh, Beckford says, I can't tell if she was not given any evidence and ill-prepared or if she's not. That's another option, though. But the thing is that when you have that title and you're being paid like that per hour and everything, you you have some responsibility, right? I can't imagine. If I got called onto that stand, I'm going to do even more homework if that's possible. You know what I mean? So to just listen to what Letitia is saying and what the lawyers are saying, mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. Thank you for your sticker. Uh, Digital Dorothy says, just join to work and lurk. <laughs> work and lurk. Rewatch AM or nah. Depends how much energy you have in that tank. <laughs> You got energy? Then yes. Watch it on 1.5 speed. I would say yes. Um, it's fairly interesting. But um, I just wrote down some of the things she says. Like, as far as I know, I don't believe so. So, yeah. And then I started writing out here. Give us a B. Give us an I. Give us an A. Give us an S. Give us an E. Give us a D. What? Biased. Very biased. Very, very. I really do worry about her sympathy for killers. That seems to be quite a theme throughout her career. Like, do, do you, like if you really got to the core of her belief system, like, oh, do you feel sorry for killers? Are they all just poor, hurt little children, and they're just all insane or psychotic at the time, and there's just no responsibility whatsoever for what they do? Because that's how it comes across. That's not. That's not justice. That's not the the empathy is misdirected. Like, hello, Gannon. Oh my word. Okay, so. Uh, She's a smitty. She's a smitty. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for becoming a member. Yes, and um, I saw NC said there, Dr. Lewis um, keeps... Oh, the, see, the comments are just flying. Hold on, let's try get it. Dr. Lewis keeps lying about Letitia Levin Gannon. Letitia Googled, I don't like my stepson. What do I do? She was looking for real military singles. She wanted a new life. She was looking for a life without those kids. I'm like it's some sometimes it crosses my mind like to him. Lena was lucky because the way Letitia was going, she she could have attacked them both. I mean, it's scary, you know. Okay, uh, Jazzy Whippet says I think the forgetfulness is contrived. I wonder. Yes, Tracy says not to mention the responsibility of being on time. <laughs> Baby steps. Is that asking too much? <laughs> I think we're asking too much. Yeah, never mind being on time. Oh, my word. Be on time. Have your cell phone off. Do your homework. This is like basic stuff. If you're going to be there as a, as a witness, I mean, I feel more responsibility as a freaking YouTuber sitting in the Netherlands talking about this case. I feel great responsibility when I talk about cases. So like, hello, Dr. Lewis, could you maybe have read the files? You said you were, you said your bag is a hundred pound bag. <laughs> 
that you're dragging around full of files and things. And then all you can whip out is your chicken scratch of like this one time, Letitia said that she used to call herself Maria. Okay, we all know she didn't like the name she was given. She said that before. It doesn't mean she's got DID. And she's like, this one time, I have it in my notes here. Who did you hear it from? Who? I don't know. That was awkward. That was really awkward. Oh, my word. Yeah. <laughs> Ben's like, my dog ate my homework. <laughs> uh, let's see what else she, uh, she says. I believe so. I don't know. As far as we know, that's a stretch for me. This reasoning she has for murder. And I don't, it's a personal pet peeve. I've got many pet peeves, as you guys know. Okay. This association is one of them. Big one, big one. Don't even send me videos. What people saying that? Don't, don't say it. <laughs> Dissociation. <laughs> When she said, okay, so my pet peeve is when people do the stabbing motion with their arm. I hate it. I hate it. Okay. So I just feel it's like really graphic and disrespectful. No need to do that. Right. But when she's doing it, okay. And she's saying it's, it could have just been a repetitious automatic act. Listen, <laughs> a repetitious automatic act to get rid of the threat, the murderous threat. I mean, hello, we're talking about an 11 year old boy here. And I know that if she's thinking someone's psychotic, I get it. I get what she's trying to say, but you know what I'm going to say to that? That's a leap for me. That is a bit of a leap for me. <laughs> and who gives an actual puck <laughs> if it's a repetitious automatic act? And that's one moment. We are not talking about one moment. We're talking about Google searches on January 25th, 26th. We're talking about a candle incident, his foot being hurt, a six mile hike, and then him pooping his pants because she's probably giving him stuff. She's giving him Myrelax. It was hydrocodone in his system. I don't know what the hell happened with that candle incident, but it's still very, very worrying. Um, it's many, many events, many. It's not psychosis for a weekend. It's many terrible sadistic events in my opinion okay oh, my word never mind please please can someone introduce dr lewis to uncle google the books and the notes i mean i like old school notes as you know i write like this okay i like old school notes instead of like having some kind of tablet here and you know i like old school notes but lady <laughs> marry those worlds uncle google will be your friend you need to look at what Tisha googled before during and after and we're talking weeks later two months facial reconstructive surgery how to get rid of fingerprints how long does dna last how what does a body look like after a month of being deceased wow do they search under bridges in ditches she searched that and this is just that's me oversimplifying that big ass timeline we saw vienna says when is overkill usually what when is overkill usually the murdered knows the victim overkill means a lot of anger hate and rage that has been accumulated and magnified for a time she probably went too far just like abusers too i agree yeah i agree that's also interesting who told doctor that the blunt object was a bat we all speculated it could have been a, a, a like a baseball bat the teacher apparently met al stuff by the way if you didn't know this random trivia at like in the softball league and she was enticing him there luring him away from his wife you know Okay, and um, anyway, so she said she got a softball scholarship and all that kind of thing. We don't know if that's true either. But because she lied to her brother about what's in the bag, she said it's just softball stuff. That was so hurtful to hear. Okay, that was scary as well. But is that going to help you with that? What is that? Why does it look so heavy? Anyway, we speculated, oh, man, what if it was like, like a baseball bat? But now the doctor mentioned it. So that's interesting. I think it's Latisha or what? Kathy Rupright says, I wish I would have started marking down how many times she said, I don't remember, I don't know, I don't recall. You know, we'd get so tired if we do that. She shouldn't even be testifying. Thank you, G and Mods, for your great coverage. Thank you so much. And yes, thank you all for being here. You make this bearable for me too, okay? It's so nice to be here together. <laughs> I don't think I could survive this without all of you. This is terrible. Uh, Rain Quattro 7 says, doesn't care about G, just a science experiment. And it all just feels like, dare I say it, a little bit juvenile, like her thinking, like this magical thing called DID, and it's just like up in the air. The way she smiles and gets so excited about it, I'm like, okay, whoa, 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 just take a step back from your cool idea. <laughs> like it's, 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 a, it's a 
like a light bulb went off and she's like, yes, but she just went with it her whole life. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you've got the ID, you've got the ID, you and you and you. And if you don't, then you're psychotic and there's definitely an excuse for what you did. There's no excuse. And you can't just say, I'm just explaining. I'm just explaining what, you know, that the person's psychotic or insane at the time of which Letitia, I beg to differ. But yet when pushed for answer, she says, well, I can't say what was in her mind at the time. <laughs> what are you doing on the stand? <laughs> No one can say what was in Letitia's mind at the time. But the question is, was she insane at the time or not? You know, uh, Lilac Peach says, doctor doesn't want to admit her being fooled. That could also be part of it, yes, by Letitia and her attorneys, because the attorneys withdrew their request for an EEG and an MRI in November 2022. That is important to Dr. Lewis, and she didn't know. So I think yesterday when she said, what do you make of that? He lied to me. We were all thinking, could it be that the, or he lied, could it be that the prosecutor said that Maria spoke Russian, that Dr. Lewis said she spoke Russian? It could be that, but it could also be that the defense attorney withdrew the request um, to get that EEG and MRI and everything. Wow. Okay, so Sharon Posey says, I wonder if the missing Nintendo Switch is what she used to cause the head injury. She could have disposed of it and the knife on one of her eyes. The switch was found in the house um, on the TV cabinet or under it or something. So that was found eventually, um, allegedly. That's what people are saying, right? Because I think someone interviewed Landon. So that's where the information comes from. So apparently the switch was found, but um, maybe, could be, could be. Um, science says, please show the Google search. I have a whole video. I can't just show because there's so many. <laughs> she did how many, you guys? It was, <laughs> they were like, she did like 4,500 searches between this date and this. I'm like, what? Like, there were so many. There were so many. I've got a whole separate video for you on those Google searches. So just check it out on the playlist. Um, there's actually two. There's one video, which was from the probable cause affidavit, those Google searches. But then we heard new testimony from the timeline the day before yesterday with even worse Google searches. So I would recommend checking that out because I can't just summarize it because it's so insane. No, and not insane in the way that we're talking about this case. Okay, I just mean it's so <laughs> planned. <laughs> it's so calculated what she's searching there. Like, ooh, facial reconstructive surgery. How, how do I get rid of my fingerprints? Okay, how do I disappear? What do I do? Like you are trying to hide, you're trying to run and all of that. Deborah, welcome to membership. Yeah, and the food poisoning you guys are saying. Okay, so now they're coming back in one minute. When they do, I'll put it all on there for us, and then I'm going to run and get coffee. Yeah. I'm just seeing what you guys are still saying. Let's see what else I wrote here. Yeah, she wrote in her report it could have been a baseball bat. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Can anyone say book deal? Yeah, it's sad because I'm feeling like, oh, man. Like, why are you testifying in this case? In the beginning, people were saying maybe she's just trying to stay relevant. And I'm like, let's take it easy on the lady. But now I'm like, oh, man, maybe she's just trying to stay relevant. <laughs> because like, do your homework. W watch a video. <laughs> right? Uh, welcome, Moira. Welcome to all the new members. We're going to have a members only stream later after court. It will be one o'clock in the morning for me, but we're doing it. Our snark tank is only just filling up. <laughs> Anonymous said earlier, snark tank full. Mine, mine's not quite. I think there's still room for more snark in there. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I also think this. Uh, Philomena says, I believe there was bottled up hatred and anger for her ex. Uh, well, I think it's actually for Elle's ex, for Landon, for Gannon's mom. Yep. And it was taken out on Gannon. But you never know. It could be a bit of this as well. You never know. The real John Doe says, Letitia's months of evasion, deception, obfuscation, manipulation of the investigation demonstrate high levels of organization and intention. The doctor appears oblivious to this. Like, oblivious. That's a good word. Absolutely oblivious to it. It's just like, just really too too much. It's not even giving killers the benefit of the doubt. That should be her slogan. <laughs> her slogan should be, I give killers the benefit of the doubt. They have absolutely no responsibility for the acts that they commit <laughs> because either they have DID or they're insane or psychotic, of which there could be many options. And you're like, oh my word, this is so hectic. The Wookiee done it. <laughs> Welcome to membership. Yes. Cyan Doodles, you too. Welcome. Okay, so they're coming back any minute now. I am monitoring. 
Shell Bell says the fact that Dr. Lewis feels someone has to be psychotic to do what Letitia did says a lot. I know it's right. It's a lot of up in the air, fantasy world, magical thinking, in my opinion, and then also feelings based. There's very little fat going on. Like she must never start a YouTube channel because she'll be canceled like this. <laughs> you cannot say all those types of like, whoo, just like, no. You know what I mean? Like as in just speculate that wildly in a case. It's 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 quite wild. Letitia. Oh, Letitia had so many premeditated actions and acts and after the murder. My word. I mean, hello. Also, simple. Let's make it common sense, right? Flight is a sign of guilt. Okay, she literally took off immediately. She went from like Colorado to Florida within days. She was like, I'm out. Let me just abandon my husband and I uh, know she took the dogs, not the dogs. Let me just abandon my husband and Lena. Okay, stepped away. I'm out. Harley, get in the car. Dogs, we're going. What? And she didn't allow Harley to open the back of that van, which had the suitcase in with Gannon's body in. They were in the same clothes the whole way. Oh, I get a fright when they come back every time. I'm like, oh, <laughs> they're coming back. Here you go. <laughs> okay. Okay, before we uh, start back into the case, there's two things that um, I need to address. Yes, uh, yes, yes. That have come to my attention. Ooh, okay. Uh, one is um, I've issued uh, general orders regarding um, usage of uh, cell phones, uh, mm. video cameras, all of that stuff. What we have provided uh, for the uh, general public is that um, they can uh, capture what is being broadcast uh, as a webinar. Uh, they can rebroadcast uh, that, and that's fine. Everyone here needs to understand everyone in this courtroom is prohibited at any point in time from audio or video recording any part of this proceeding in the courtroom. Don't have your phones out. There's not a reason for it. There are press that are here uh, that uh, may be part of pool press. They may be part of uh, some other uh, commercial entity uh, for press, and that's fine. But even they are not recording any part of this proceeding. If that happens, it could be, number one, your phone gets confiscated. It could be, number two, you face direct contempt uh, proceedings with me. Don't do it. Second issue is, um, I know that we have uh, some uh, people from out of town. I know that we have some people uh, from out of state. Um, and I know that uh, perhaps they're not familiar with uh, the laws in the state of Colorado or the uh, etiquette and procedures for this courtroom and this building. This entire building, the El Paso County Combined Courts, in its entirety is a non-smoking facility. Also understand, we have cameras everywhere in the building. So when you leave this courtroom and you go down a hallway, uh, and then you go into a stairwell uh, and you're smoking, we know who it is. Especially if you've been warned about it before and you go down to a uh, another stairwell and smoke i want to be very clear there is no smoking of either tobacco or marijuana products anywhere in the courthouse at any point in time anybody who uh is here that um, i learn continues to do that uh, I may bar from the courthouse uh, pending the outcome of this trial. So, two things. No phones, no smoking. Let me ask. Anybody in the gallery have any questions about that? Raise your hand. No response. All right. 
I'll take that as everybody that's in the courtroom understands my message clearly, um, and I don't have to take any further action regarding it. Is there anything else that we need to take up outside the presence of the jury? Oh, Prosecution? Yeah. No. Defense? No, sir. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury back in. Naughty, naughty, all of them naughty. <laughs> Oh, Leticia thinks that's hilarious, so does Will. Stefan, I'll allow it. <laughs> I, I will allow <laughs> Oh, man. What? Me too, Bev. I'm gonna go get one now. Just waiting for the jury. Someone's in detention. I'll rise for the jury, please. May all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stalk. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. When we took our break, we were in the midst of cross examination. That's where we will resume. <laughs> Thanks, Judge. Uh, Dr. Lewis, we left off with uh, the Tiguan being at the airport. You can call that this morning. Now, the fact that she moves the body from the storage room to the Tiguan and then to the airport. Is that an indication that she has the capacity to know right from wrong? I don't feel qualified to say, to conclude that she, she certainly had the capacity to move it from one place to another for one reason or another. Uh, and certainly it would seem to be for keeping, keeping it a secret of some sort. Uh, whether or not she thought this was right or wrong, I, I just can't speculate. Well, she knew that Al was coming home because she was picking him up. Correct? As far as I know, yes. And she knew that she had to move the body before Al got home, correct? Perhaps. The, the body was hidden, so it could have been hidden somewhere else, yeah. I mean, she knew she had to rent another vehicle because Gannon's body was in her Tiguan, correct? We, I know she rented another one and it was in the Tiguan, yes. She thought this out, right? Yes. Rational thinking? That, that's a leap. Thinking, yes. Okay. Is she psychotic when she's making these decisions to rent a car and leave the body in the Tiguan at the airport? Again, speculation, I, uh, I don't know. We're now into January 28th, 2020. Um, Al and her go home in the rental car, the Kia. Do you remember reading about that? Yes. And then about 4 p.m. that day, she leaves in the rental car and goes back to the airport. Do you remember seeing that? <clears throat> Reading about it, perhaps, yes. Yeah. Is it inconceivable that she's going back to check on the Tiguan to make sure no one's disturbed it? Any, any speculation is possible. Is that rational thinking under the circumstances? Don't know. If the body's in your car, do you want to make sure no one's messed with it? Bodies in your car, you might want to avoid going anywhere near that car so that you're not involved with it. So that I think it, it would be speculating to say this is why or that's why. I don't, you know, we don't okay. know why. That's fair. Um, but we do know that she goes back to the airport once again on the 28th at 7 p.m. Correct? You remember that? I believe you. I... 
I'm sorry, I don't remember the numbers or the, the time Skype, but uh, certainly seems likely. She leaves the white rental car, the Kia, in short-term parking, keeps the keys to that car, and leaves the airport in the Tiguan. Is that rational thought processes under the circumstances? I have no idea why it, he's doing that. I can't say it's rational, irrational. It, she did it. It, it would be speculation without finding out more. Well, is it evidence that she had the capacity to know right from wrong collecting Gannon's body that way? No. She takes the Tiguan and leaves, puts her phone on airplane mode, and drives for several hours. And we're mapping her on her Life360 app. Do you remember seeing that? No, I recall hearing, becoming aware of it in one way or another, seeing or uh, reading about it. Go ahead. And as she's doing this, she's texting her daughter, Harley, don't open the door. Don't talk to the police. That kind of thing. That evidence that she has the capacity to know right from wrong. Again, it it suggests that she has the capacity to know that uh, that she could be in great trouble if uh, if this were not hidden. You know, it, no, right from wrong is such an abstract. Uh, it's it's hard to comment on that. Certainly, if she would have stayed with Gannon's body in his bedroom. That might be some good evidence that she didn't have the capacity to know right from wrong. Didn't think it was wrong to kill him, right? Again, uh, that's that's one interpretation. <clears throat> and of course, that didn't happen here, correct? That she stayed with him, right? She did not stay with. Him. Because what she does is she eventually drives her Tiguan up to Palmer Lake, which is a small town north of Colorado Springs. If you're not familiar with it. She finds an isolated spot. Drop the suitcase off on the side of the road. That evidence that she had the capacity to know right from wrong and trying to hide the body again. Again, she... Uh, she had the capacity to know that she needed to hide the body. I don't know. I can't uh, move on to yes, she knew right from wrong. That's that again. It's an abstraction, and uh, I do, I can't comment on knowing right from wrong simply from that. Is that evidence that she's suffering some kind of psychosis? The fact that she goes to an isolated spot. To hide the body. Maybe. Don't know. Is it also evidence that she may not be suffering from psychosis? The fact that she knows to go to an isolated spot and hide the body. Maybe. During this whole time, she's texting with Harley and still controlling what Harley's actions are. Do you remember seeing that? You would have to remind me. She's multitasking. She's kind of controlling what's happening at her house, as well as getting rid of the body. Uh, I'm sorry, I've, I have not just proposed that, but uh, if, if you clarify what she was saying to Harley, perhaps I can say something. But don't talk to the cops. Don't talk to the police, that kind of stuff. Don't let them in the house. You consider that to be a form of manipulation? Certainly, uh, a form of trying to control what uh, what happens. Around midnight, between the twenty eighth and the 29th of January, twenty twenty, uh, she meets Harley close to Harley's place of employment. Remember reading about that? Not specifically, but. Uh, and she leaves her Tiguan there. Harley then takes her back home in her car. The fact that she's thinking about leaving the Tiguan somewhere other than her own home, is that evidence that she has the capacity to know right from wrong? 
again, it shows the capacity to know what will be regarded as incriminating or uh, not in her best interest. I, again, right from wrong is abstract and I, I hesitate to comment on that specific. Well, I'll ask you this then, did she know the fact that if there is blood in that Tegan one, it might be incriminating? I would think so, yes. The next morning, her daughter Harley gives her a ride back to the airport where she takes the keys that she still has for the rental car, the Kia, that she left in a short-term parking the day before. And she tosses the keys to an Avis representative out on the sidewalk at the airport. That evidence that she has the capacity to hide the fact that she is no longer in that rental car and was in the Tiguan the night. I don't know. Her daughter Harley then gives her a ride back to where her Tiguan is, where it was at all night by her place of employment. Uh, massage envy, you didn't know. Okay. And she then is talking to detectives at the El Paso County Sheriff's Office and saying, I'm on my way. I want to come down and interview you. <clears throat> Remember that evidence. Uh, again, specifically remember that, but I'll certainly believe you. And she drives the Tiguan to the sh uh, sheriff's office, which is right across the street from the courthouse. And on her way, she stops and washes the Tiguan. Ever reading about that? Not specifically, but again, uh, you know, certainly I could have it. I just don't re remember specific. At that point, does she have the capacity to destroy incriminating evidence by washing the teeth on? Yes. When she gets to the sheriff's office, she's interviewed. And this is what the, the story that you alluded to yesterday about Eduardo and the rape happening. You remember that story? I don't remember. Jerry probably remembers it too. We're not going to get into the whole interview. But I do want to talk about a couple things that she says in that interview, okay? Uh, in that interview, she alludes to the fact that Eduardo took a suitcase. Remember that portion of the interview? You'd have to continue on. I... Weird, isn't it? You're, you're describing being raped, your stepson's kidnapped, and by the way, the kidnapper took a suitcase. It's wacky. It's, it is crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. Do you think it might be an indication that she knew that Gannon's body was in a suitcase out in Palmer Lake at that time? And if someone was to find the body, she had an explanation as to how the body got. Could be. Pretty rational thinking, isn't it, under the circumstances? I don't think much of what she was thinking was rational, sir. So that, uh, again, that's a, a... What about smart? Was that smart to tell the officers that? Again, uh, that's a judgment call. Uh, the whole thing is so con convoluted and wacky that uh, to call it smart doesn't quite hit the mark. The other crazy thing that she says is after he raped me and kidnapped Gannon, he just leaves the gun at the house and then leaves. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It, it, that is crazy. In yeah. That. But is it really crazy? Because she knows the gun is still in the house and that's the gun that she used. And she has to have an explanation on why that gun was used. I don't know if it was really crazy. It sounds crazy to me. Or really smart, right? Not to me, but. Setting up the story. Again, you're you're thinking more logically, I think, than uh, than we can give her credit for through much of this. Uh, but I, you know, I find crazy what you find uh, logical. It's crazy when people kill their kill kids. Is it's that... crazy when you say Eduardo comes and rapes her and takes off uh, 
Gannon, it's the whole concept is crazy. It, uh, you know, if a little bit of it is uh, seems logical that a gun was here or there, the whole the whole story of Eduardo is crazy. Yeah, that's why she changed it later on and came up with Quincy Brown and some other stories, right? I don't know why. I uh, because she realized it was crazy and then changed it. Yeah, less crazy. People who are pathological liars, they when they lie, they tend to have small crumbles of the truth in it, and they have no problem changing that lie to something else. Isn't that true? This is what your understanding is of a pathological liar. I I can't. <laughs> You know, I can't ascribe to that or not. This is what you believe. Of well, what do you believe? You've interviewed uh, hundreds of people on death row. Have you ever come across any of those individuals who may have not been honest with you? Oh, yes. From time to time. That may have been, uh, have antisocial personality disorder? Who may have. Were they manipulators? They're pathological liars. They have no sympathy. I, this is a, a bit of a fantasy, and uh, I don't know what's a fantasy about. I'm just asking you: Have you ever come across anything like that? Exactly that like that, I would say no. Never come across anyone with antisocial personality disorder. Uh, certainly, I've I've come across many people who have been so diagnosed. And those are some of the criteria: of antisocial personality disorder. Are, are they not? There are some of them. Jump forward to January 31st, 2020, okay? Her family now has come to Colorado. Um, her aunt uh, has rented a Nissan Altima from Denver and drove it down to Colorado Springs. Remember reading about that? No. <laughs> Not too, nothing crazy about that, right? Don't know the Altima. But... That Ultima, at some point on January 31st, a tracking device is placed on it, a GPS tracking device. You remember reading about that? Yes, I think so, yes. And then her family, including her daughter, her brother, uh, indicate that Ms. Stout disappears for two hours that afternoon, January 31st, 2020, in the Nissan Ultima. Remember where she mm -hmm. was? You'd have to remind me, no. She goes right back to that same spot in Palmer Lake where the body is. Is that evidence that she has a capacity to know right from wrong when she goes back to collect Gannon's body? In my opinion, that's evidence of stupidity. If you want to, if you want to cover up something that you've done, you don't drive back to the body. You just don't do that. But she did. Yeah, it's not too smart and not too well thought out, but she did. Is it not conceivable that I didn't hide the body good enough? <laughs> you go get it. I'm driving to Florida. Be better off in the Gulf of Mexico than where it was at. Is that inconceivable? You've just conceived it so that clearly you, you've thought about it. I don't think it's the smartest thing to do or the best way to hide your implication in a in a death to drive back to where the body has been placed. I'm not smart. Probably a panicky thing to do, right? Criminals aren't the smartest not people. Necessarily anymore. panicky, not smart. And we know what happens after that, right? She rents a van and her and Harley take Gannon's body in the back of that van and drive to Pensacola, Florida. You Surely you know about that. If this is when she drives with her. With her right. Uh, That's something you remember from reading in the police reports? From perhaps numerous source, you know, sources. Along the way, Ms. Stalk is able to rent hotel rooms. She's able to deceive the people at the hotel. So she works for the Ford Motor Company. We only need one room, one person, no pets. What else? Remember reading about that? Not specifically. The whole trip to Florida, do you see any evidence of psychosis or any evidence that she didn't have the capacity to know right from wrong during that trip? I have to say, I, I see 
neither the capacity nor a lack of capacity there. It's, uh, it's to my mind, it's incredibly peculiar behavior to, to drive that distance at, with a body and the body of a child that you allegedly loved uh, in the back of your car. There is a... Uh, I'm glad you used the word allegedly there because you're familiar with a uh, search that she did on her phone that was later deleted by her that says, I don't like my stepson. Remember that search? Uh, I don't recall. Uh, I'm aware of mm. the statement. I don't mm. like my stepson. Kind of uh -huh. contradicts what you've I been saying. Though. Once. Uh, I think I only became aware of that once, but it could have happened again. I don't know. So she takes Gannon's body and dumps it over a bridge in Pensacola. That evidence that she has the capacity to know right from wrong, and she once again is hiding Gannon's body. Again, I don't know if that shows she knows right from wrong. And then his body was discovered on March 17, 2020, by a Macon Ponder. Do you remember reading about that? I remember reading that it was found. A bridge inspector who inspects that bridge every two years just happened to be there on March 17, 2020, and he finds the suitcase. Okay. No. If that suitcase is never found, do you think we'd be here today on an insanity case? I, I can't answer that. I, I don't know. I want to talk about the interview that you had with her, the forensic interview that took place over a period of three days in November. Okay. I'm going to play some clips of those interviews with you. Um, but before I do that, Going into this interview, do you have any concerns that Ms. Stout may not be truthful with you during the interview? Of course. Skepticism, right, that we talked about yesterday? Of course. And so with that, Your Honor, um, and some of these clips are shorter than others. Uh, I know you may be more comfortable sitting there, but if, if you want to get in your wheelchair and go somewhere else, we can do that. Wherever I could see it more clearly, because I d I have not seen it as clearly or heard it as clearly as, as I would like. If, if there's a better spot, that would there's be a good. TV right behind you, and then the, the, the other TV's here, so you can work out whatever you want to do about this. Let me, Let me figure it out. You, you tell me, and then we'll no. we'll start when you're ready. Maria, Maria, oh, Maria's coming out, guys. We're gonna see the. I don't know if we're gonna see Maria, but here we go with video. Oh, we're gonna go. Uh, I wonder, can we move this back a little? And can we see? Can I hear this clearly? You're going to be able to. Hear, you're going to be able to hear it clearly. We could also what? get you in which one put you. I, um, what are we looking at? Right here. So that would be easier. Uh, well, let's. Why don't we try it? If it's if it isn't clear, we can pause and go. And yeah, let's. Yeah. Well, here's the deal, Doctor. I'm going to ask you some questions after the clips. Okay. Uh, and so. This one's, I think, only about five minutes long. <laughs> Close up of Tallini. Sitting there and see how it works out. And then we can go to plan B if we have to. Well, yeah, we certainly could. What I would like to do is uh, grab a pad or something so that uh, if something strikes me that I see, I can jot it down and recall it. No uh, problem. And I, I can do we have a pad or something, yeah. While you're old, um, when you come back, it's okay. Oh, here we go. Buckle up, everyone. When you come back, if you turn, if you hit both of the green buttons so the perimeter lights are out, it may help her see a little bit better. Okay. Those perimeter lights. <laughs> that, yeah, and the other one. Yep. There you go. That was so for the record, we're going to start with People's Exhibit 729, which is an interview that took place on November 15th, 2022 in the morning time. And before we hit play, doctor, uh, we have a freeze frame here of the video. Um, obviously, is of that, the what? It's, it's just the video's pause so we yeah. can see the image. Uh, do you see Miss Stout there in the center of the video? Yes. Um, who are the other two people behind her? I see Caitlin and uh, I see the foot. I assume it is of Josh. Is that, I'm not sure. Is it? Mr. Tony? Yes. 
Now, you're, are you seated where Ms. Stout is looking right now? I think that you can see, I'm not positive, I think those are probably my papers. And so I would have been seated across from her, looking at her and where they could have been in my peripheral vision. So we're gonna start the video at 11 minutes and five seconds, and we're gonna stop it at 15 minutes and 41 seconds. Can I try to fix this seat so that I can see what's going on? It doesn't move. You'd have to adjust your. Yeah, I'm just trying to turn it. Your oh, okay. Way. It will turn all the way around. There you go. Okay. We're going to hit play then. Uh, what, what should call you call your I'm not necessarily calling names, but like, I'll make like, a mistake when you talk to me. Like, what do you call? So, like, I'm calling the same. No, I mean, for example, when the mystery meeting, but I don't know. Josh, you call me. Yeah. Do all of you call me? Yeah. 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 I need to sit back further and just, uh, it's too hard to see her from here. Can we move my, perhaps I can just move the wheelchair over there and look sure. up here. I can help okay. you. Yeah, you paused it. Oh my word. Minutes. She's such a diva, this lady. Excuse me, I just need my front row seat That's here. Right. See, see what we can do here. Yeah. She's doing a homework right now. <laughs> there's if, if there's just, audio, you guys. That around Ooh. there, maybe. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Yeah. Okay. She's talking about going to what? I think she said all the islands of what? <sighs> I'm trying to take notes. Let's listen again. We're being interrupted here right. now. Right, let, let me see if... Uh, if I can see and hear, I, this looks a whole lot better. That looks better? Yeah, let's see. Let's okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think, however, I think this is better. Okay, that's fine. You'll just need to, if you're going to be asked any questions or give any answers from there, you'll just need to speak up so everybody can hear you because the microphone's not there and there are jurors behind you. And it may be easier, like when there's a question, then I'll just okay. turn her that way. We can do that. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, here we go. Hey, we'll go ahead and resume the video at uh, 1311. What is the date of this? Just so I have. Sure, it's November 15th, 2022 in the morning. Here we go. She's a princess. She wants to divide. She's a princess. She wants to divide. Is she? She is not a part of you. She is. And so Jess, that she's a part of her, she's risky. Like, she doesn't want to ask for like, Sharon, what do you call it? Like, risky. Yeah. 
going to see if he's going to get me in trouble. Yes. Yeah. And Goliath, are you alive? Yeah. I'm not a partner. You're not a partner. So, I was just getting the picture. So, like, what happened is something really happened. Like, really stressed out. I um, was, I can be at like work and be okay. And something stressed about what happened. And then I was end up right somewhere. Ooh. End up in the do you know how you felt? It's like my body comes through the emotions. Like, obviously, I don't like it. I mean, fast forward by taking it from yeah. them. I don't really remember doing all of it. You don't remember it all. I know it sounds crazy, but, no, it is. but like, okay, so like, if you see my credit cards by me, and you're like, oh, okay. Obviously, she did it because obviously it's under her. My name was easier, and my body's got to know that's who's yeah. ready for any type of things. You pay for it from getting it. At the same time, like, I will not have done it until I'm on the plane. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm going to this place or I'm going to that place. You find yourself somewhere. Not being on the plane. I did it a lot. You can send me tests. Just drinking wine, like, oh, well, why didn't your Romans wine bottle? Mm-hmm. Some of these like that, all the way up until being in another country. I met a lot of where my daughters have been texting me, and they're like, Mom, it says you're in the middle of the ocean. I'm like, oh, I am. Because, and they're like, one time I was actually, um, I was sitting so there, and I was like, fine. I'm like, I was planning to live in Jamaica, but I was also at work with a party, and I'm like, you know, and I. Okay, we stopped it at 1544. Um, okay, <laughs> I was going to say I'm more than happy to help out. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I did not get all the words there, so. I'll if, if the question I ask you if you want to have us replay something we can do that okay. Or perhaps if someone could reread it and. Uh, I'll do my best to paraphrase. How's that? Okay. Um, in the beginning, you asked the question about how she refers to her attorney Josh. You remember asking that? Uh, the question you ask is, do all of you call him Josh? Do you remember asking that question? Why did you ask it that way? Something interesting that where uh, where she had talked about other and that was I did not make that up myself that it came from other entities of some sort. I I don't recall the earlier part, but I knowing myself, I know I, I wouldn't introduce it. It would have been something and. I guess, yeah, can the jury hear okay, Your Honor? I just want to make sure. Looks like it. Okay, great. We're getting thumbs up. It's all good. She talked about um, Maria having a jail call and speaking Russian. Remember that? There was something there about the Russian, yes. Did you ever see a jail call where the defendant was speaking Russian? I don't recall a jail call, so I don't. That would be something important to you, would it not? If she's saying that, and then lo and behold, there is a jail call where she's speaking Russian, that could corroborate what she's saying, right? Well, it could. I I have to see it kind of in a bigger picture because I mean the different things. Uh, it had for, in retrospect, but it has special meaning because much later, I believe, in my interview, uh, she starts to speak. In what sounds like a Russian accent. And Dr. Lewis, we're going to play that. Well, we're, we're going to. This is the first time I'm aware that she, I did not recall that she had mentioned the Russian. <laughs> it's, a, it's some kind of entity that sounds like. And we'll talk about that more when we get that portion of the video. We're going to, we're going to play that portion where. She's speaking in an accent. 
Yes, okay. yes, play it, play it. And one other issue here was and that puzzled me, but I didn't pause where it was when she said part of her, I thought it might have been Maria, spoke Spanish. And so I kind of caught my ear from my I speak Spanish. I too did anybody speak Spanish. I don't know whether any speak it or whether this is and there's nothing in the record whatsoever, including the records that were given to you by the fence, that mm. indicates the defendant has ever spoken to anyone in Spanish. Mm. As far as I could determine, I, I sure wanted to, to know. Yeah, sure. It's possible. Yep. She tells you that she's been to Dubai as Jasmine, and Jasmine's a princess. Remember that? Well, there's a lot of stuff there. I... If she had, in fact, been to Dubai, that'd be something pretty easy to corroborate, right? I suppose. I don't think I took it that way. You mean you don't think that she went to Dubai? Are you, are you saying Dubai, really? Yeah. Uh, I could be at that point. Okay, so she's making that up? Well, if, if she's making it up, or that is a fantasy. Like when we have dreams, and it's and they're very real, and we think we've been there, uh, that they at that time were not, that she had been to Dubai. She has a whole history of going to all sorts of things. But she has gone to some of which. Well, the history would be documented because there'd be plane tickets, there'd be family members knowing that she was gone for a period of time, uh, things like that that you can corroborate, right? If I had, if at the moment, I thought that was an easier thing to corroborate. Yeah, I think that it would. Testament. What about Alaska? Remember her talking to you about Alaska later in the interview? How oh, yeah, I had trouble with Alaska because her I, you know what went there and I think she had gone there. I meant to say Australia, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you had the same trouble I did. We were having the same problem. She never said she went to Alaska. She said Australia, right? She did say Alaska. Oh, she did? Sure. Okay. Not, not only that, uh, you know, your head is spinning when you sort of stuff. Uh, but later on, I'm pretty sure that her, that she had a husband who was stationed in Alaska, and so I was a little suffering. And um, <laughs> Alaska and I visit. Uh, I think in my notes I have damage. I think there's really Alaska. Alaska happened. They lived in Alaska. Okay. That was my fault. I meant to talk about the Australian trip where she says her and Harley went over there and she blacked out and was on a beach and doing crazy things she said and then realized Harley was by herself. You remember that? It's something like that. And uh I'm relieved that you were as confused. And we know there's nothing in the record to indicate that she's ever been to Australia. She also tells you in this clip that she changes personas when she's stressed out. Remember that? Yeah. Is that is that consistent with disassociative identity disorder? Yes. A triggering event. We're going to play the next clip now, okay? Uh, we're going to go to we'll just have a second. We're now going to jump to People's Exhibit 731, which is your interview. What's the date of this? It would be on November 16, 2022, <coughs> in the morning. We're going to start this clip at one hour, 
31 minutes and 50 seconds, and we're going to stop it at one hour, 47 and 22 seconds. No, that's for the record, doctor, just so the, the record indicates what we're playing. Okay. I can play. They're being projected as some monster, and like you don't know. They're like looking around and people like, this is not me. I do these things, and I'm like, they don't say it. This is like this, whatever. Is it possible that you did stay um, yeah. If I did, I didn't know I did or did not intentionally do it. You know, I said there was no intention to harm anyone. That would be a love of mine. You see what I'm saying? Because, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so if I did not see him, what? See him? Yeah, she see him. Yeah. Sick. I did not do that. I did it. Like, whatever. Um, but this is one thing that she keeps saying. She didn't do or else gives. You know, you do give people any story. He's saying that. Um, there is a possibility. She has no clear that. What? Do you think that is possible? Oh, I said that from the beginning. Like I, I, you know, all over the place. That's I really same job. Right? Is it possible you did that for the miracle on stage? I was in a one state, the two state, and then one of these states where it doesn't go. Oh yeah, I said that definitely. I know that, but I was not an intention to hurt man. Like, you know, it was never right. No, absolutely not. I love him. I took care of these kids. They were five and two. I had these kids from coast to coast, country to country. Yeah. Like that's not what do, what do I gain out of hurting a child? Absolutely nothing. Like I lose everything in my entire life. And not only is it about me being hurt, but other people around me. And if I'm sitting there telling you that I care about all these people, there are other people hurting this. If I was going to hurt somebody, why would it not be these people that are hurting the people? Right? No, it would not be to hurt a child. You see what I'm saying? Like, absolutely not. It would not be an intention to be like, oh, okay, that's it. You're done for the day. No, like, that's not how it works. I don't feel like I'm doing things right, you know, to do that. I don't work my whole life to do things right. To just be like, today's the day. I'm just going to run my entire life and everybody else is. That's not how it works. These people in here do this, so I don't. I mean, you don't take somebody out and go shopping and do this, do that. You don't go buy somebody Valentine's candy yeah. to knock them off the planet. <laughs> yes. So I don't like, they don't even understand this. That's just not how it works. You don't buy somebody out of clothes for this amount of time. You don't go do this, you don't go do this. Like, I don't get it. I've had this, I've had this kid in Mexico, Alaska. All these places, not a scratch on their body. Tell me once more. Um, we were in Australia. Yes. When? I think it was 2017 or maybe 18. How did you just go I went to the people. I ran to sleep where I went. Well, I went in there. I think it was Sam. Oh, Christina, Sam, all the people. I don't think they're really listening. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because we did some voting. Because of what? Well, I can't. I can't. Yeah, I think that was my life. I would rather packing up all the stuff, just taking everybody back home to South Carolina, taking care of everybody. I feel like it's much easier than that. Because I can go there. No, no, they're around. No, Land's like Landon's mom. Land, which was Gannon's mom. Yeah. Yeah, this is 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 Yeah, Programs that I can be like, great, I need to go to this. So I can drop them up here for the day. I have this great nice um, <laughs> My first call with John. I have to work on it. I he said that he left a list, gave her a list of 12 different exclamations that he gave for what happened. Because then I'll have a flashback or something, but I don't know if that flashback is a cool flashback or not. And I'll have a nightmare about something, so I'll hope the nightmare was a nightmare, but the nightmare was not real. So then I'll give up with me, that's really going on for hours and hours and hours and hours. Then sometimes I'll have something and I'll try to put together something, and it's like it's really happening. Because then I told you earlier that I think if something's really going on, or this is real, or not, and I said, I thought this was just one big nightmare. We're so, any of it. It's all one of the good things. Sometimes I don't know what's going on, what's really not going on. You know what I mean? Then one minute it's something that happened, and now it's switched personality, and someone will say, and the other personality, no, this is what really happened. You know what I mean? Then I'll hear that like, another voice, so not schizophrenic, but it's so not easy. Maybe like my brother would be yeah. telling me this. So it's like going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, that I try to match so absolutely nuts. So when you ask me why well, I can tell you 100 percent that I remember sitting on the couch, you know, somebody not being in the garage, and I'm gonna remember I being in the garage. I'm gonna go look at the windows and get some outside, see someone downstairs. But that was the things I can hundred percent remember from running around frantic, not knowing what's going on. So that's what I guess. Afraid of screaming or afraid of sleeping or you know that you have that influences what you think you have. But I know I don't think it was just the neutral. But I don't know how do I know? Because I mean, how do I know? There's three people who are struggling with the level. But I'm saying though, but you don't know because well, one person this, how do I know? Because this person could be trying to go with the bad person. You see what I'm saying? Because who knows what that person is really doing? You see what I'm saying? Hey, it's a matter of I know, I'm not even talking about them. I'm talking about what this person is doing. How do you know? Because one minute I was doing this, next minute I was doing this, but another person was doing this because I was doing confusing words. So how do we know? Let's figure out what we're in some continuous state, and then it is not possible for you to remember what happened. It's not going to work for me because I'm not like that. I have to know answers. Dude, I wouldn't care if it was just a random person on the street who was a bad person. Yeah, I wouldn't care because they would just be a bad person. Yeah. Who care? But like that. see the news every day, bad people, bad things, bad things happen to bad people. Oh, bad things happen to good people. 
the car, especially when it was sitting there in the box. So, you know, I there's a very long good thing. I think it's probably important to say, you should remember what happened to the other. Again, it's where he's tossed and this event might have to be used. But it doesn't sound like she's a good man before. Yeah. Um, and there's probably no, there's probably a good reason for a lot of them. Um, you know, you have that sense of it. There's a lot of friends. Um, but let's talk about why I simply believe that there's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it's a crime. Yeah. Is this her yeah. pretending to cry or what? Because I wish I would have just lived and he asked me just to get there. I don't know face. I don't know about face king of charges. But who else to be in the He didn't want me to leave and not even tell our God should have just did it. Isn't that a really good idea? No, but at least we've been saved. At least we've been on the East Coast saved. Or I'm saved. He wanted to go with me. He knew I was leaving. He wanted to go with me. He did. He said, it would not matter. Mommy and her mom, I would stay with you and stay with Mommy and her mom. He was following me. His mommy, his nana, his poppy, he would have never. The East Coast, yeah, to the East Coast, but uh, is that we know? No, his mommy. No, his family. Yeah, his family looked there. So we had to do Yeah, that. his mom. Oh, uh, they were away. Yeah, he knew I was leaving to go back home um, to the East Coast. He was like, take me to the United son, the king of his kidnapping. Your dad would have me hand over the kid out because even though I'm your partner, here, I don't, I can't just take you. And if I would have just did that, everybody would just be fine. So, what? So, what? I know you got to add that to me. It's kind of bad how they want to be trying to figure out. I was trying to leave, but yeah, I have to make sure that they were safe because I didn't want to leave them. But say, you don't realize that this, the kids laying on the end, and if I would have left them, they would not have been taken care of. Yes, money. Money's not everything. They would have had to be aided financially. They would not have been able to take care of their activities. They would not even have anybody take care of school stuff like, oh, it's just a baby at school. Oh, it's this. They wouldn't have had that. Without me, they had none of that. So they would have lost all those things. They would have just been thrown with babysitters. What would a babysitter do? Did you ever cost your mind that they had to be No, that's you know, I have This was my plan. I could not just take them to South Carolina and drop them off with my mother. She should throw it at And if I did that, they were in just as worse hands as they are not taking care of them. Right? So, so the plan had to be add more to my plate to figure out how am I going to get them safely to their mom so she could get close to that. But at the same time, she needs a house. And in order to get custody back, well, the woman can get custody back if I help her because I'm the one that the reason we got custody was because of me. So I can help her get custody back to her. How am I going to do this? Do it correctly. Make sure she has a home. But if I could steal them again, Ben doesn't need to die. What are you talking about? 
Given that is not in the view of the I didn't come up with any idea in the end of that. My point is, getting him safely to his mother would I would have been the plan to not get him that day. I told him, at least say I would have worked out with him, but talking to her, getting her a home, I can't just go buy her a home. In That's not simple. You see what I'm saying? She's in drug addicts. Drug addicts come this in. They repeat the same cycle over and over and over. So I had to lose a I should have just took them with me, started the school across country, and then just been like, oh, well, maybe I'll need to figure it out. I'll come back here. That's what I should have done. Love that idea. That's what I should have done. Okay, we started at one forty seven seventeen. Thanks, Mr. Tamini. Absolutely. <laughs> Not sure. So I'm going to ask you a few questions about this uh, clip we just saw. Um, and I want to kind of start where we left off, where she's talking about kidnapping and Gannon wanting to go to South Carolina. Remember that? I, I found the entire thing incredibly confusing. She had to take care of Gannon and she had to think of that point I was kind of what in hell is going on here. Okay, and, and, and Dr. Lewis, Mr. Tony is gonna ask you some questions when I'm done. If we can just focus on my question and then if there's other things you want to add, I'm sure Mr. Tony can ask you about that, okay? Is that so fair? I I was responding to what no, I want to talk about uh, well, is it that unusual that an 11 year old boy uh, wants to be with his mother? And you think that might have an impact on his stepmother, Miss Stout, the fact that Gannon wanted to be with his real mom? I, I don't think that this. Demonstrated that uh, there was something incredibly puzzling about who wanted to be with whom, whom she loved, whom she was taking. I found it utterly confusing. Do you think that might be a stressor that Miss Stout talks about? The fact that an 11 year old boy says, I want my mother, not you? I don't think that this is what. Okay. Well, I don't think we heard that it's a possibility in a, in another story in another world. Well, let me let me just ask you: Do you think that's a stressor? The fact that an eleven-year-old boy tells his stepmother that I want to be with my mother, not you. It may or may not, depending on a relationship, depending on other, depending on so many factors. Speculation. And do you remember in the clip her saying that I couldn't leave, I couldn't leave them by themselves. I was the only one taking care of them. Or worse to that effect. Yeah. And you know that she had been searching on her phone about moving to Florida by herself, looking for one bed in the countenance and looking for another man, that kind of stuff. That was well before Gannon was killed, right? <laughs> Several times during the interview, um, you look to your right and appear to be talking to Mr. Cellini about this is evidence that she may not remember anything, things like that. And he's trying to figure out from what what do you make of this? Is it possible she doesn't remember this? Uh, I'm trying uh, to see if he understood better what was going on there. Well, and Miss Stout could hear everything you're saying, right? Miss Stout could hear everything you're saying, just like we could. And she had already been evaluated by the state hospital and found to be legally sane, right? And she already went through this process where she talked to uh, two psychologists explaining what happened and things like that. 
and now she's talking to you after that. And you think it's okay to say she may not have memory recall of what happened in front of her. Yes, I, uh, you know, it's kind of an open question to and also really it was open to her also. You, yeah, you remember what was going on. In my mind, it was incredibly uh, And a couple times in this clip, you asked her what we refer to as a leading question. In other words, you said, uh, do you think it's possible that you were in a peculiar state at the time of this? Remember asking those questions? Yes. I think it's dangerous to plant those types of words into a defendant's mind when you're doing a forensic interview. Well, I think that if this has not come up previously, and it has not been part of the common knowledge that she did go into these kind of objects. But it is sort of broken. What do you think was happening when you were thinking these things? It did not make sense. And what was making things so confused? Okay. And, uh, and was evidence questions other data that that she did see and this was the already wasn't adding oh gee you go into these states we already knew from that this happened it's possible this really did well, but she's never heard it from a doctor who's doing an evaluation for her insanity that the doctor thinks that she was in a peculiar state. That has an impact on someone, doesn't it? I believe that I was collecting what we already knew from previous okay. discussions and that I was not introducing the new idea, but that um, this was an established occurrence, and that you know, possible that this word war in the plane. I didn't know. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, the next clip is about seven minutes long. Uh, we can play that or whatever the court wants to do as far as lunch goes. Um, I assume you're going to have some follow up. Probably that clip. It's probably better to play the clip nearer in time to when the follow up is as opposed to. I would appreciate that. Okay. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our uh, lunch break. I have uh, everyone back in the jury room at uh, 1 20. We should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Um, and with that, I'll rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May I all be seated. The record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Um, so, Dr. Lewis, what can we do to make sure that you're here and ready to go at 120? What do you need? Right. Okay. Well, the reason I asked that question is because um, you were supposed to be here yesterday at nine, weren't, we're supposed to be here yesterday at one o'clock, weren't, we're supposed to be here this morning at nine o'clock and weren't. So we need to start, we need to have everybody, whatever it is that needs to be done, needs to be done in such a fashion so that we're here ready to start at 120. Is there anything that I can do to help make sure that that happens? Okay. 
I, I understand that. Okay. That's why there was a difficulty because I thought maybe I, I didn't want to be late for you. Right. Make it in the afternoon or tomorrow because I was quite ill. Feeling better now? Are you feeling better now? Right now, good. Okay, all right. All right, well, we will hope that that will continue. Do whatever it is that you need to do. Communicate with Mr. Tallini and Mr. Cook uh, in whatever fashion that you need to communicate so that we will have everybody here in place ready to go at 1.20 because um, the jury's waiting, everybody's waiting on that. Um, in addition, council approach, please. Going to recap now. Mic check. <laughs> Who wants to bet that she'll be late? <laughs> Let's see the poll results. Do you think she'll testify? 52% say yes. 48% say no. It'll be in recess until 120 then. All rise. Okay. Right, so let's bring this across for just now. Mic check, everyone. Can you hear me? <laughs> just check in. I am getting so. This <laughs> is what? Snorkify, snorkified. <laughs> snorkified. Is your snark tank full? <laughs> Late for sure. I think she's going to be late again. Okay. The audio on those videos was absolutely terrible. It sounded like we were listening to something that was uh, recorded underwater. But we generally got the gist of the crap that was being said there. And we generally saw Latisha just making up more lies, you know. Now she's talking about kidnapping. And then she says Landon was the only one who helped her. And if, you know, if she didn't. If she, Letitia, didn't take care of the kids, then no one else would have. Oh, you took care of them, all right? You took care of Gannon, you know, in a different meaning. I mean, why is she talking like that? Like, she's so nurturing and loving. Like, she murdered Gannon. End of story. Um, there's no excuse for any of that. Courtney, thank you so much. Um, thank you, everyone, for all the stickers and everything today. Um, I hope the coffee link's working. Some people said it wasn't working. Seems to be working. Thank you for everyone who bought coffees today. I'm going to fill up my cup again. We're going to need it for the afternoon session. Um, so for anyone saying, I put I put it in the chat just now. For anyone saying, you know, generally, we're very a very kind community, okay? But never mistake kindness for weakness or kindness for not having boundaries. Okay, that's the first time I'm saying that out loud of you on this channel. But a lot of people do mistake that. They think, oh, Gisela's so kind. She's just like, everything's okay, right? No, 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 no. I got strong, rock-solid boundaries. And for me... I cannot just sit here like an airhead and be like, oh, she's nice. Shame. She's an old lady. She's wonderful. She's got so much expertise. It's so disappointing. So if I'm feeling super disappointed and eye rolling, I guess, you know, <laughs> it's my opinion as well. And I mean, I'm feeling comforted that I'm not the only one that feels like this because Dr. Lewis didn't do any homework. None on this case. None. Unless she's got a memory problem. But then if that's the case, then don't take the stand. Don't take the stand. And yesterday, when asked, well, then why did you take the stand? She said, I probably shouldn't have. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Go watch the replay if you didn't, okay? Because no homework is being done. There's no direct answer to a question. Everything's up in the air. Everything that can't actually be explained with logic and facts is just wacky and convoluted. I mean, come on. No. Well, I'm happy it's not such a strong witness for the defense, honestly. You know? So I don't I don't like when people bash her for her age. I mean, age is, mm -mm, no, no, we're not doing that. We're not like, oh my word, she's, oh, I don't do fat shaming with anyone because people saying, you know, Letitia's huge. Okay, Letitia the killer, I feel like we could snark it up with her. She looked like a freaking maggot covered in Cheetos, okay? There's that. So killer snark, I'm always for it. But uh, ageist for Dr. Lewis? No, no, no. Not about it's not about her age. It's the crap that's coming out of her mouth. That's what she's saying. Just like I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. 
No, I haven't seen that. You haven't even seen your own video, your own, <laughs> your own recording with her. The very basis, the thing, <laughs> the sessions you had with her to even say that you think that she was psychotic or might have DID. Come on. Like, wait, I need to get out my notepad and take some notes. No, man. What the hell? So I'm sorry to the minority, it looks like, that's offended by the majority of this chat that's like, why, why, why are we snarking at the doctor? Because it's ridiculous. There's no excuse for someone not being prepared, not doing their homework. You're at a high profile case. It doesn't even matter if it's a low profile case. It's a, But this is a high profile case. You're on the stand. Do your homework. Do your homework, lady. Please, please, please. She's... She doesn't know about the Tiggy one, doesn't know about the timeline, doesn't know about the Google searches, is ready to throw L under the bus. I mean, whoa, let's just offend everyone, like in multiple, with several types of diagnosis. Um, okay, let's do that. Let's throw L under the bus. Just say he was less than loving. You're going to protect Letitia over L? Gannon's dad? No, 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 no. Based on what Letitia said, no, no, lady, no, mm -mm, no. Uh, Abby says, I think this doctor just finds any excuse to do exactly that. Yeah, excuse a killer. That's what I'm thinking. And I don't like it. It's actually, um, uh, I'll add this to <laughs> As I was about to say it, I'm like, hey, here we go again. It's a pet peeve of mine. I have many of them, but it's because I have been through a lot of stuff and learned a lot of things. Well, number one, boundaries are essential. Number two, um, don't fall for BS, okay? And this is total B BS, what's going on here. This wacky, convoluted, up in the air, insanity, but then can't really say what's in someone's mind. I'm not here for it, okay? But I'm going to save some of the snark for later for our member stream. So I'm raining it back in. Take a deep breath. Um, we kicked off with a video in this, uh, after the tea break, with Letitia on video. Yes, looking like... Um, a maggot covered in Cheetos. <laughs> Looking huge, okay, compared to tiny, petite Dr. Lewis. They damn, and she only needed protection on day three. Whoa, lady! Like you're in a you're in a in a room with Letitia. She looks scary as hell in comparison. I mean, someone in chat said, imagine you could kind of imagine how much smaller Gannon was than Letitia in that with that camera angle going on. But anyway, she started off by being like, yeah, Jasmine is a princess. She went to Dubai, but she drinks a lot and parties a lot. And I don't, I don't, I don't do that. But she does, like, not very creative there. Anyway, she said, she said something I heard, I, you know, it was all, but it sounded like her daughter. It sounded like Harley saying, mom, because she said, she says, mom, you're in the middle of the ocean. And she's like, oh, yeah, I am. No, there's no proof of that. There's no passport proof of that. There's no logical proof of that. And Harley didn't say any such thing. Letitia hasn't been in Dubai and she isn't Princess Jasmine. And Al is not Aladdin. I'm just saying, okay. Robin says, I feel like the prosecutor should be paying the doctor's fee because she's doing great for them. <laughs> I know, right? This is a hot mess. I've never seen such a mess. I've never seen such a mess either. This is very, very disappointing, honestly. Not that we mind that it's disappointing for the defense's witness, but like, we don't want grounds for an appeal or something, and there probably will be. There's going to be appeals and stuff, but we don't want a retrial. Please, no. Oh, my word. Imagine a retrial, you guys. <laughs> Imagine a retrial. No. So if anyone's asking, what time does court start again? Here we go. <laughs> and then all you got to do is go on Google and type in Colorado time. If I can do that from the Netherlands, you can to know exactly how long it is to go, okay? Because now we're just, we're just t talking a little bit, and then maybe I'll have a break. We'll see. Um, okay. So what did I miss here? In the in the field, we call this knocking futs. <laughs> so knocking futs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, I'm just catching up with some of the things here. Welcome to all the new members. There's quite a lot here joining. Yeah. What was that? The cruise? No, that wasn't even the cruise. The teacher was just making up an altar, which in the DID community, from my understanding, means an alternate personality state. That's lingo in the DID community. It's not a persona. Letitia says she creates these personas. That's completely different to suffering from dissociative identity disorder. Also, it's quite odd that she's like bad mouthing one of the alters. Like, she's such a party girl. I mean, she drinks. Okay, she parties a lot. I don't do that. Like, okay. And who are you? Who are we talking to now, Letitia? Flower Goddess says, Dr. Lewis is making a mockery of the justice system. That's what I'm thinking. It just, it feels wrong. I don't like it, okay? And I don't have to like it. 
Uh, I always stay, I try my best to stay so neutral to give everybody the benefit of that. But sometimes it reaches a level where it's just so ridiculous that you're like, yeah, no, I cannot, I cannot remain neutral now anymore about Dr. Lewis. I'm just like, this is disappointing as hell. And she's late all the time. So that is already, <laughs> it's not starting off on the right foot either. Okay. So let's see what else I wrote here. Um, yeah. So she said, mom, it says you're in the middle of the ocean. And I'm like, oh. I am also not how DID works, Letitia. You're not just like, let me look at my phone quick, okay? Whoa, my daughter's saying I'm in the middle of the ocean. Yep, I'm in Jamaica. <clears throat> That's right. Woo, look at me. I mean, also in Dubai, it's not in the middle of the ocean, but okay. Moving on. Yes, the judge is so great. He's like, remember, was it yesterday? He's like, do not move my furniture around. I wouldn't come to your house and move your stuff around. <laughs> and today he's like, no cell phones no smoking <laughs> yes when dr lewis then said something about coming from other entities she does talk about like alters as entities which is an interesting verbiage that she's using there again as if it's this otherworldly thing right okay so leticia says what would i gain out of losing a child and then she says that's just not how it works no we know what we're seeing Mm -mm, that's not how it works. It's just not how it works. <laughs> so, Leticia, that's one thing you said that we could actually quote that's accurate. That's just not how it works. But she's like, what would I gain out of losing a child? I don't know. What would you gain out of your domestic violence and battery charges from your past? Hmm? What would you gain? You're an abuser. I don't know. Ask any abuser that. I don't know if they could even answer that. So what would I gain? And just think about how sociopathic that question is. What would I gain? And narcissistic. Oh, everything's about gain for you. Oh, I see. I see. What would you gain? A new life in Florida, seeing as you were looking up apartments already for yourself because you wanted to leave L and you felt like a glorified nanny. Uh, Carrie says, if you don't believe in right and wrong, I give zero credence to the remind, remainder of your opinions. Complete bunk. I know, right? But like, isn't that her like her one job? <laughs> one job is to say in an insanity plea if the person knew right from wrong right that's what i'm understanding so for dr lewis to say i can't i can't say whether she knew right from wrong i can't say what state of mind she was in at the time but then what is your job that's your one job that's what you're supposed to do okay Heather says, Letitia's not only exploiting Gannon and his loved ones, she's exploiting people with DID and mental illness to avoid all accountability for her crimes. Exactly. And who's enabling that? Dr. Lewis. Sorry, but I do not. I do not. I'm like a hard no for any enablers. Mm -mm. Especially enabling killers. No. That's a hard no for me. So I used to have like merch that said, Hybristo, no. Because no Hybristophilia. Nobody falling in love with killers over here, okay? <laughs> They are not hot. Serial killers, not hot. Killers, not sexy. Okay. And people who enable killers, mm -mm, no. And I have no respect for therapists like that. I just don't. I've had a lot of therapy. And if anybody's enabling you, instead of saying, you know what, you're really an asshole in that situation, that would be like, yes, I respect you so much. I was wrong, right? I'm the problem, right? In the situation, that would I would respect that person so much. Yeah, I just feel like a lot of times, not all, not all. There's a lot of there's a lot of good therapists there. I know there's professionals in here as well, but don't like when I see it's like a trigger for me. <laughs> if I see a psychiatrist or a psychologist enabling bad behavior, I'm like, oh, you like them dollars, huh? You'll just say anything. Hmm? <sighs> okay, calm down. I've got to save the snark for later. Remind me to. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna run out of snark at this point. My tank is emptying. Don't worry, the afternoon will fill us right up again. Bamaskin says, I feel like the doctor was leading. Yes. She saw her. I wrote this down yesterday. Wait, November 15th, 16th, and 17th. Three days. Morning session, afternoon session. And I can't believe on the on the third day, she's like, ooh, needed that attorney in the room just in case. You know, it's just in case it's a danger to me. I'd be a fool not to. Um, you'd be a fool not to have protection with you on day one. If it's someone that you believe has DID or is psychotic or was psychotic and can switch in a dime and who's triple the size of you. Careful now. Um, so yeah, when she's like, looks at the attorney and says like, I, you see, this is, this is, I see, this is evidence of her having no memory of this. No, no, no. The only person with no memory is uh, of this 
event is Dr. Lewis, probably because she didn't do her homework at all. And for that, the defense is also partly at fault, I think, because they just like quickly, quickly, they probably gave her like little <laughs> cram on this. Like, here's some info, here's some bullet points. And just read through that, you'll be fine. Like, no, it's not working out. Okay, it's not working out. So when, when the teacher said, what would I gain out of losing a child? Very interesting question, Letitia, that your mind weighs up everything about what you'll gain or not gain. It just says who she is all the way. No empathy, weird question, answering a question with a question, red flag, all that. Wild Sage says, Bet Landon comes on for rebuttal. Interesting. Right? And so when she said, why would I go and buy Valentine's candy just to take them out from the planet? I don't know why you're buying Valentine's candy for a little boy on January 27th, 2020. It makes no sense. And I don't mean like psychosis or insane or no, no. You're just, it's alibi talk. I want to buy him candy and everything. If she had Valentine's on the mind, man. She's freaking searching for real military singles and guys either with kids, she can just move in to the house and look after. And then she's like, you know what? Scrap the kids. Find a guy without kids. These are her Google searches. We've looked at them many times before in the from the probable cause affidavit. And I have another video for you, which I've made, just clipping the trial and taking out all those long pauses and things. Okay. Sniffle free to <laughs> taking out all those pauses and things where they go over her new that new is what we didn't know yet. Google searches. And they were so bad. Oh my word. I mean, one of them was. Spanish girl names and how long before a body starts to decompose in a bag. That's one of her searches. How do people avoid the FBI? That's one of her searches. Vienna says controlled psychopath, narcissistic, non-empathic, patho, liar, manipulator, organized, love control, act in calculated planned ways, defiant, paranoid traits. It's AMD. It doesn't suppose any alteration of intellectual capacity. Thank you, Vienna. I hope I'm saying your name right. Okay, this DID does exist. Charlotte says, I don't think DID exists. It exists. There's lots of research to back up that it exists. There's many people in this chat. I don't know, many. It's still like, you know, zero to 1%. But there's people in this chat that have DID. That's like saying, I don't know. I feel like it's like saying, I don't believe OCD exists or any other diagnosis. It's in the DSM-5. It exists. Um, I don't know. I accept that. But you're entitled to your opinion. I just don't want anyone to be offended in chat by saying something doesn't exist. I think what um, doesn't exist is any sign of Letitia <laughs> being insane or psychotic. I think she needs to be held accountable for her actions completely. And I cannot wait for sentencing. Oh my word. Closing arguments are going to be good and sentencing. I can't wait. Not looking forward to the appeals phase, though, because I'm sure they will be. Welcome, Julie. Okay, so... Letitia said that Landon was the only person who helped her. And if it wasn't for her, Letitia saying about herself, those kids, you know, would have basically been neglected. Right, says the child killer. Hmm, nice. Great one, Letitia. Yes, you're so nurturing and loving. Look what you did. Um, she said, I would have left him and they would not have had anyone to take care of them. When Dr. Lewis was asked about this video that they just played in court, they played two of them. What are you, you know, what are her thoughts on this? She said it's utterly confusing. Interesting. What did I write here? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm like, I want my mother, not you. That's what uh, the prosecutor said, that Gannon likely said. Did you also pick up that the um, the prosecutor said, and then, okay, trigger warning. And then she dragged Gannon's body down into the storeroom and put him in a suitcase. Because we always wondered, of course, from the room, where what did she do then? So that, that was a little piece of information. Sonia says, I don't know how Landon and Al keep it together. I don't know either, man. I don't know either. Hmm? How? How? I didn't hear any Spanish accent. I didn't hear any um, Russian accent yet either. 
Peace Dog said, how about Dr. Lewis said she wondered about Alaska not being true, but that's about the only truth she told Dr. Lewis. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, man. And allegedly said uh, what she'd gain from losing a kid is all the evidence of abuse and murder. That's what she'd gain. And you see, I mean, she would say, what would I gain by doing it? I don't know if we've ever met uh, someone who... I know the word narcissist gets thrown around a lot, but I think we've all experienced one in our lifetime. <laughs> one or two, you know, um, and it's just that's the type of questions from everything I've read and studied on narcissists they would ask. It's like, what would I gain from this? You know, why would I ever do something like that? Okay. Yes. Wait, wait. I'm missing a comment that I saw there. Damn it. Where did it go? <laughs> Someone said cuck. It's a lot of cuck. So much cuck. Someone earlier bought me a sticker and said, ish, ish, ish. <laughs> In South Africa, we say, ish, when things get hectic, ish, ish, ish. Do you guys remember this Dr. Spiegel from the Johnny Depp trial? Do you guys remember this, this one? <laughs> Dr. Lewis is giving these vibes. Now, are we also going to go and say to him, why would people be so ugly to him? This was ridiculous. <laughs> it was so ridiculous. Okay, so I'm going to play a clip of this. Under the rubric of not doing that with somebody you did not see, and I'm, and I'm questioning, I'm asking, so you are talking about expert witness testimony? No, I'm talking about, do you know the rule? I'm not a member of the AMA, so I don't, okay, I don't read the rule. Okay, you move on. You don't know the rule. Huh? <laughs> All right. You rendered an opinion about Mr. Depp's purported cognitive impairment yes yeah what do you use as a baseline a baseline for so if you didn't know in the johnny depp versus um amber Heard trial dr spiegel was an expert <laughs> called in by the defense as well right and this was like whoa this was so interesting to watch like what in the hell processing speed yeah for for analyzing Mr. Depp before you watched his deposition. What well, is the baseline for that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess my baseline would probably be what I, how I've seen him interact in public. I have seen him interact with others. I've seen him interact in media. I've seen him interact all, and his process speed is certainly not slow. I've seen him do commercials. His process speed was not slow. A deposition, didn't you say that what you did was <laughs> yada, yada, yada. compare Mr. Depp's performance in lots of pirate movies against his deposition testimony what here? I, what I said was I've seen Mr. Depp mm -hmm. do apology ads. I remember he did apology ad with Bad Dog, no delay in process speed. I've seen him interact with the media regarding to that. I saw no delay in processing speed. All I'm saying Let me ask you about pirates, though. You compared pirates <laughs> to the tech, uh, to to the depositions given then in this I, case. Then I apologize for what I said. Then I misspoke. You miss I'm just going to pause it for a second. Wild Sage says, when talked about what she had to gain, Munchausen syndrome wants recognition based on the child's suffering. She wanted the sympathy, but stuffed it up through her method. I'm not. On, I'm not quite on that page of this Munchausen. I know a couple of people have emailed me about it. I'm not in agreement with this is Munchausen syndrome by proxy, but I'm not a mental health expert by any means. Nope, not at all. But uh, yeah, with Letitia, I don't know. I just think she's, Ugh. <laughs> I have no words. Actually, I do have words, but they're all naughty right now. So I'm going to rein it in. Spoke, you didn't make the comparison right now, just a second ago, just a second ago. I, I may have said that I misspoke. I apologize. I misspoke. Okay. I, how I've seen it. Because you know you can't compare pirates to sworn testimony, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. But you uh, can, but as an aside, you can go judge someone's processing speed at any time. Like I'm judging yours right now, you're judging mine. We all judge processing speed <laughs> as a baseline. Because we all judge processing speed as a baseline. <laughs> of what we know about it. And I would say your processing speed right now is not slow. So, Thank I you. mean, we're judging processing speed. I'm just saying to you. Yeah. Um, so, but no, any of Mr. <laughs> Let me show you one that's just a more condensed version of these funny clips. Just hold on. Right here. 
interact in public. I have seen him interact with others. I've seen him interact in media. I've seen him interact all, and his process speed is certainly not slow. I've seen him do commercials. His process speed was not slow. At deposition, didn't you say that what you did was compare Mr. Depp's performance in lots of pirate movies against his deposition testimony what here? I, what I said was I've seen Mr. Depp do apology ads. I remember he did apology ad with that dog with no delay in process speed. I've seen him interact with the media regarding to that. I saw no delay in processing speed. All I'm saying Let is me ask you about pirates, though. You compared pirates to the tech, uh, to, to the depositions given in this I, case. Then I apologize for what I said. Then I misspoke. You misspoke? You didn't make the comparison? Right now, just a second ago? Just a second ago? I, I may have said that I misspoke. I apologize. I misspoke. Okay. Because you know you can't compare pirates to sworn testimony, right? <laughs> Pick a good judge. Yes. Okay. But you I, can't, but as an aside, you can't judge someone's processing speed at any time. Like I'm judging yours right now. You're judging mine. We all judge processing speed as a baseline because of what we know about it. So I would say your process speed right now is not slow. So, Thank I you. mean, we're judging processing speed. I'm just saying to you. Yeah. Um, so, but no, any of Mr. Depp's other portrayals, in movies, did that affect your analysis of processing speed? Only I've seen him interact w on interviews, right. and that was it. Right. When he wasn't in movies. What, right. But Willy Wonka, it doesn't matter to you. you? You see him in that movie, Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Did you look at that one when you were comparing his processing speed? <laughs> Oh, man. Is, is that, do I have to answer that question, Your Honor? Oh, man. This was so happy. You have to answer questions. Yes, sir. No, you'll be happy. No, I didn't see Willy Wonka. As a, as I didn't see 21 Jump Street when it happened. Whatever it was about. No, I did not. All right. You'll, wait, you made a, a very kind admission, I think, early on in your deposition that you're not claiming to be a better actor than Mr. Depp. <laughs> That's correct, isn't it? 100%. All right. Wow. Okay, I think... Oh, no, no, we're not going to listen to dogs dip on a beat. Mm-mm, mm-mm. That's where we draw the line. It's just reminding... It's giving me flashbacks of that. I don't know about you guys. Okay, so I don't have a... I've got the video for you. But this little list... I want a list. I need to make a list of all the Google searches that they showed us Letitia had, right? Hiding IP address. Could Dr. Lewis please just look at her Google searches in this lunch break? There will be no lunch for you. <laughs> please, please look at her Google searches. It might help. So, Stark's Google searches indicate she was concerned about being charged in connection with Gannon's death. Some of her searches include hiding IP address, need a fake ID, legit. Several searches regarding face transplants that we saw, face, facial reconstructive surgery, how to change your face, how to change your appearance drastically. Also not something I think someone with DID would look up. You know what I mean? Based on how that works, which Letitia doesn't seem to know about at all. Okay. So, yeah, Courtney said, Dr. Lewis cares more about DID than a murdered child. I believe she's one of those people who's always right. You know what really sucked was when... There's a few things, actually. But when the prosecutor asked her, but it's crazy when people murder their children, right? She gave a answer back, well, it's crazy when people go shopping or do this and this. Like that, I didn't like that because it really, it invalidated the crime. It That's the thing. To me, this is like her theory is invalidating the crime. And it's not holding the killer responsible for the actions at all. I mean, damn. Uh, you say, bah, ha, ha. <laughs> you like that, Renee. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and she searched as well. How do they identify bodies found in another state? Spanish girl names. How long before a body starts to decompose in a bag? How do people avoid the FBI? I mean, damn. And let's not even get started with that fake polygraph.com. <laughs> Karin fakepolygraph.com. She was look. I mean, if someone is insane, no, doesn't know right from wrong, 
even though Dr. Lewis's one job is to say if Letitia knew right from wrong at the time, not that she could say that because she didn't see her at the time, but you know what I mean? That's what she's there for to testify on. She can't say that though. It's all just very complicated, utterly confusing, um, coming from other entities, so convoluted and wacky, she says. And also our lesson for the day was that knowing or that the difference between right and wrong, it's abstract. Wow. Sounds like a zero discipline household there. <laughs> there are no consequences. <laughs> wow. Uh, Angelica says, remember Jody Arias, a defense witness psychiatrist, Dr. Richard Samuels, who was also a complete disaster on the stand. I may have to revisit that. I vaguely remember that. There's been a couple of disasters in a couple of cases. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go relook at that. That will that will comfort me in this moment because, oh, my word, this, is, this trial, whew, it's quite hectic, right? I I haven't got access to HBO in the Netherlands, but I would like to watch that documentary. <laughs> if someone has a link for me or something, <laughs> send it to me. Um, she laughs inappropriately and grins maniacally when talking about murders. That's what I'm, I'm it just seems like she's definitely on the side of murderers. Like she's she is the voice, the ambassador of killers, it seems like. In my opinion, from what I'm gathering, I'm like, oh, you feel sorry for them. You want to be a voice for them. You think that they're vulnerable. You think that somebody needs to stand up for them. That's what it seems like. That's what it's coming across as. Which is very much just a step away from hyperstophilia. Uh, and also when she said, welcome Megan. When she said that it is evidence of stupidity that Letitia went to go and retrieve Gannon's body again. When she would return to the place where she discarded of him the actually second time because first at the airport then in Palmer Lake Douglas County South Perry Park Road she said that's evidence of stupidity very strange that because killers so often return to the scene so maybe that's all evidence of stupidity sure but a lot of them really get a kick out of that huh and for Letitia, it was all about concealing. It's like, oh, no, that's not going to work out because they're starting to search there. Move, move, move. And then she's like, go to Florida. The hell? Okay, let's see what you guys say. Yeah, but then she's like, oh, these stories are just ridiculous. Yes. She is the mouthpiece for death row inmates and murderers. That's what it seems like. G4 class G14 classified. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Phoenix Rising says, Dr. Lewis' assessment or interviews of Light Tisha was more like a class on DID. What the fuck? Yeah, it was It was just saying, you have it. <laughs> Hi, Letitia, nice to meet you. So once upon a time, you called yourself what now? Maria? You oh, yeah, no, you've got it. <laughs> oh, man. You don't have to wait to get a diagnosis from her. And yeah, let her not ever see my second channel. She'd be like, definitely has it. <laughs> Charlotte, I will always want to say from from Bois. Sorry, comment on the ID. Don't want to invalidate anyone. Okay, okay. Frambois. Am I saying it correctly? Mm -hmm. Probably not. <laughs> it's just, it is real. There is research. There's just plenty of malingerers with this particular diagnosis. I told you guys that at a deep dive, I've gone down that rabbit hole because there is a YouTuber with millions of subscribers, which is like, the, the leader of, of DID and it's just, ooh, it's a big red flag. There's a, there's, there's a few things there that's like, it was interesting to observe that years ago. And I'm like, wait a minute, start studying everything on it. That's just what I do. I don't know. Don't we all do that? Is that a true crime thing or a nerd thing? Or is that just a me thing? Because when I, I don't know, come across something that interests me, I just want to study all of it. <laughs> Marisol my, Mayas, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I mean, I don't know. But some people are, of course, going to disagree with my opinions, and that's okay. It was just like, yeah, I just can't also just sit there and be like, it's fine. <laughs> Everything's great. Denial is not my thing, okay? Um, no. Life is short. Uh, thank you so much. I'm like, and <laughs> Super scared. Thank you so much. Oh, she be malingering. She be malingering for real. She a malingerer. Dr. Lewis says Carla is very educated, obsessed with the idea that she sees it everywhere. Literally, she sees it everywhere. It's her absolute passion, obsession. It's her world. It's her everything. It's almost like, does she have it? <laughs> I wonder if she has it. When she looks in the mirror, huh? Does she have it? 
that would be an interesting question to ask. Huh? <laughs> oh my word, has anyone ever asked her? Like, do you have it? Do you experience this? Have you ever been diagnosed with it? <laughs> Maybe that'll get all of that just like weight off her shoulders and she can just stop looking for it everywhere. I think it was Eileen yesterday that said she is a hammer and she just sees nails everywhere. <laughs> Something like that, right? Okay, My, Marisol said, Gislet, did Dr. Lewis see Gannon's autopsy at all? She claims she did, but I'm not so sure about that. I don't know if she saw any of this trial or any of the photos or if she read any of the discovery whatsoever. Okay, so what's the time now? Half past, let's just see. They're coming back at 20 past. Let me put the banner on again so that you know. 20 past one. <laughs> Sarah Sunshine says, you crack me up just listening and laughing. I'm enjoying sitting here with you guys. Now, let me get a little video to play for you. Um, right now, they're coming back. It's, it's almost up as 12 and they're coming back at 120, which is, that's not too long to go, actually. But let me just, I just want to get this video ready. Where is it? Um, yeah, this one. Comment this one. There you go. Okay. Bring it back up. We'll look at that in a moment just to relax. Take a breather. But for now, I just quickly want to see what you guys are saying here. Now I know, you know, I was so silly. I had such a blonde moment and no offense to any blondes. Okay. I'm just, you know, that's saying I'm always like, shame, isn't that offensive? I had such a blonde moment though, because I see everyone commenting <laughs> on yesterday's stream and just putting ducks. And I'm like, why are they all putting ducks though? <laughs> She's a quack. That's what you guys are all saying. Oh, a quack. Okay. Ish, ish, ish. I wrote here, evasive, deflective. She reminds me of Letitia a little bit. Answer a question with a question. Tire everyone out. Exhaust them with like too many answers. Just weave that freaking web, right? It's so crazy. Oh, my word. Amber King says, they are letting this dog speak too much. They need to control the witness. She's so entitled. Mm, you guys are saying very arrogant and elitist. You know what was interesting is she's like, yes, she knows. She knows that. Listen to this, okay? Okay, firstly, number one. The very moment, mic drop, where you know, Letitia's lying to her, even though we can already see it miles away. She lying to her is when she's like, Landon was the only one who helped me. Really? Because it seems to me like your Google searches and all your rage and everything was always directed at Landon. She brought up Landon, Gannon's biological mother, at every opportunity she could. Anytime she could, she's bringing up Landon. But in this context, this time, she brings her up in a, almost a positive light, which was very weird. I'm like, she's lying so hard right now. <laughs> she's lying like she's never lied before. She's like, lights, camera, action. This lady's going to believe me. And you know what the sad thing is? She does. Dr. Lewis believes her. She has empathy for Letitia. No, no, no. Stop with the empathy for killers. Stop it. It will get you nowhere in life. My word. Okay, so I do need to save the snark for later. Anyway, so there was the landed thing. Okay, wait, wait. I was getting to a point. She was lying to her there. See, I, I went too snarky. Now I'm just like <laughs> snarky mode. She's a croc, you guys say. She sees DID everywhere. You, you can just see that Buzz Lightyear meme. DID, DID everywhere. <laughs> you have DID. That's the Oprah one. Now. You have it. You have it. You have it. Everybody has it. <laughs> yes. Oh, I just, come on, brain. Remind me of what I was going to say. Oh, I was going to point out one of the liars. I mean, one of them is Landon, yes. Oh, there we go, there we go. Thank you, brain. <laughs> the other lie was when Dr. Lewis is so certain that Letitia's stepdad died eight years before this. It was definitely eight years before this. It was not. What a miscalculation. Letitia's stepdad, who she calls Jackass James, who can't even speak for himself, who she's just saying, he molested me, he abused me. Like, how, how, how do we even know? It's not about not believing victims. Give victims the benefit of the doubt. But with Letitia, mm, mm, I don't think killers, I don't know. With that, I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't really, mm -mm. I don't trust at all. But when she said, no, the stepdad, he died eight years before. Well, Gannon was murdered on January 27, 2020. 
Okay, so eight years before, you're off by many, many years <laughs> because he was uh, killed in a hit and run accident in 2004, not eight years before. Just double that. <laughs> Becky G says, I thought she said that Lana's mom was the one who helped her. Lena's grandma. Oh, Landon's mom. Maybe she did. I'll have to listen again. She might have said that because I'm like, but she just wants to, she wants to bring up Landon at every point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody has it, but she can't define it, says Lisa Wilson. Everyone has it, but it's just <laughs> wacky. <laughs> can't quite be defined. Still so much research. Like, oh man, come on, come on. Crazy Daisy says she's guided by politics and a paycheck. Unfortunately, that paycheck does seem to be determining quite a bit. Okay, so let's see. Quickly, quickly, let's see the time. Then we're going to get up, stretch our legs a little bit. Colorado time right now is 12.32. Okay, so let's do it from here. I'll be back then in 45 minutes. Just in case, although they'll probably be late, right? So I'm going to add this to the stream. Let's say, what is this with red triggers? L, is this a real thing? Letitia said that Maria can only be triggered out, okay, with, she said something like with a drug-induced state. That was a weird statement one time. She said that. And another time she said um, people wearing red and black. Well, Dr. Lewis has worn red and black <laughs> two days in a row now. Where's Maria? <laughs> right? Oh, sorry. There's a there's a double grizzly logo now. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Welcome to all the members. If you do buy stickers during this lunch break, just know I'm not really seeing them because I'm taking a tiny mental break because I need it. <laughs> we all need it. So just chill. Stay in the stream. Pop it on in the background. Like the video if you haven't yet. Share it so that others can at least be invited to come and watch with us. And I will see you back in 45 minutes or so. Where did it go now? Go back there. Go to 45 minutes. There we go.
Mic check. Um, thank you so much. Wait, wait, wait. To Tammy M for your super sticker. And Magali says, Maria may testify, perhaps? Miss T is using a Latin woman's name in a made-up story similar to what Casey Anthony did. The internet provided endless information to help create fantastical stories. And you know what? <sighs> Dr. Lewis just ate those stories right up. Okay, okay, okay. Quickly, let me get the court thing going. <laughs> Does this mean it's karaoke time? <laughs> okay, Paul. <laughs> Let's start singing, everyone. No. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so they resume at 120. So that's in three minutes. Who thinks Dr. Lewis will be late? Because I think so. <laughs> Let's see. 
Okay, I'm glad you guys love the music. Okay, loud and clear. Ozzy, you're not blocked. You're right here. Uh, we do have slow mode on, though. Uh, members, slow mode doesn't apply to you. Uh, so just keep that in mind, because if you chat a lot, then the chat goes so fast <laughs> that we can't see a thing. But no, you're not blocked, Ozzy. If you, if you see that you can only type every minute or whatever it is, it's because slow mode is on, so we can all cope with the chat so that I can even see a thing. Okay, we're waiting. We're waiting for the courtroom here. Okay, let's do the layout. We're going to see more video. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> Grizzlies are more on time than Dr. Lewis. I almost, when I first read, I thought more on it. Yeah, we also have all the bullet points and facts. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Kathy says maybe not at all. Too sick. That's an option as well. Mm -hmm. Duru says I vote late again. Okay, so let's see what the afternoon brings us. I don't even know. Are we ready? I made another coffee, you guys. So thank you for the coffees. This would be, I think this is coffee number four. So I'm ready. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, thank you. Aaron says, nice layout, Dree. Like this? <laughs> All right, so let's see what Dr. Dorothy Lewis still has to say, if she's going to say something. I'll do my best here to take notes. And then after the court today, we're going to have a members-only stream. So make sure your snark tank is full. If you're wondering where it is, I'm going to be posting it on the community tab. You should get a notification half an hour before and when I go live. So let me actually just do that. Let me post it now on the community tab if you want to set your reminder. So I'm going to do that. Here we go. Okay, so members, you should get your notification now for Snark Tank. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Where's the audio? Got the audio going on. Okay, let me start zooming. All right, court will call 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury's not present in the courtroom. Uh, is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? Prosecution? Yes, Your Honor. Um, okay. I don't think we put this on the record at the time, but I could be wrong. But uh, if the court recalls, I was asking for notes and documents that were used during a portion of the interview that we're watching now this afternoon mm -hmm. that the doctor had. Namely, there was a so-called confession that was written in Latin. Um, Mr. Cellini informed me that those documents were lost, uh, that they don't know where they're at, and that the Latin confession was gibberish. I just want to, as a, a precaution, <laughs> I don't want something to come out of Dr. Lewis's box regarding these notes for the first time while she's on the stand, uh, because I'm under the impression they're gone. I'm going to ask her about it, uh, <laughs> but I can foresee her pulling notes out and saying they're right here uh, or words to that effect. And so I, 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 like I said, I have no reason to disbelieve what Mr. Tulini is telling me. Well, here's, well, wait a minute. Um, so you, you do intend to ask about it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, then what I can do is confirm that, yes, the notes were lost, that she does not have them, uh, which would alleviate the issue of her pulling them out during trial, I suppose. Um, I thought it was more of if you didn't get it, you were going to ask that she not be allowed to testify about it. Um, but your issue is you don't want you don't want to start questioning her and then say oh yeah by the way here they are do i have that right i don't want her to pull out a latin confession that somehow is okay. relevant in this case uh because i've been told differently by well it seems to me that the easiest way to deal with that is once um dr lewis gets here and is on the stand i'll ask her if she has those we can make uh, she can tell us what happened or if she had it and where it went and or if she doesn't have it if she does have it i think you're entitled to it Absolutely. and then and, and then it's a different issue about how to proceed forward then but um if she doesn't have it then i think we can proceed in the fashion that you want so, sounds good okay i hope i understand why i brought it up yeah no i do all right and i know dr lewis is down the hallway and i think we're just uh, waiting on her and once that may be her
And for you, for the video, it's probably easier to just have her transfer As opposed to transferring, yeah, that makes sense. Is that, yeah, that's, that's what we're, we're gonna do, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. And uh, yeah, Mr. Cook, go ahead and bring her on in. And we were thinking Mr. Tallini had suggested, I think it's probably accurate to place her where she was when we ended, because we're still not done with the videos yet. So yeah, that's fine. Her. Okay, bag. And <clears throat> your notes are just yeah. that. Okay. <coughs> soccer. We're late. We saved a jumping spider at lunch. <laughs> well, that's why you need to get back. Oh, the video Audio's just started playing. <laughs> Audio's working fine. Okay. Yeah, she's late again. Um, yes. Uh, Dr. Lewis, I just wanted to uh, double check. Um, my understanding is that at some point during one of your interviews with the defendant, um, you obtained from the defendant a, uh, as I understand it, I think it was a confession that was written in Latin. Is that accurate? Your Honor, I have been looking for something written in Latin. I didn't receive it, but in my notes it says, get hold of a letter written in Latin. Okay, so let's, well, I want to focus on that for just a moment. Um, you understand that there is that document or it was created at some point in time and you may or may not have had it at some point in time. You, you never had it. Okay. So it's fair to say then that it is not in your possession now. It's not in the stack of notes and things that you have now. All right, we good? There's also some documents that she used uh, that she exchanged back and forth with the defendant with signatures and things like that that we didn't get. I don't know if she has any of those documents either, Your Honor. Do you have uh, Do you have any of the signatures, uh, the other signatures that the defendant made? I mean, what uh, you have Mm -hmm. We have that. We got that. Very important. And also, I have here, and I made this available to others, something called Ray's complex figure. It is a. We have that. Thing, and it takes a bit of explaining. I'm sure part of it's the best I could do. Okay. But I do have it. And if you wish, you could copy it. Perhaps you could give it back to me or give me a copy. We actually have the raised complex figure, if I recall correctly. Um, that you should infer copy of it and for memory, for memory, she did. And I have right. I think we have that. I think what Mr. Young was asking about was the signatures and the confession in Latin, right? And you do not have either one of those. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Judge. All right. Appreciate Anything it. else? Nope. Anything from the defense? No, sir. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury in then. Jacqueline, would you rather be, you want to look that way or do you want to look at this? Well, so far, this was. Okay. All right. And the, audio the, the audio is the same. It is, it comes out of the speakers in the ceiling. We had to have the ring lights off, Judge. I don't know if we. Yeah, um, and that would that'd be a good idea. The greens, right? Yeah, just the green ones. Your Honor, there, uh, I was given materials from uh, tens of uh, documents that had been signed by, uh, by Leticia in the past. And okay. But you don't have any in your possession now? That, that they gave me? That anybody gave you? Well, I may have them. You don't have them with you now? And I, okay. clear, I think there's a little bit of confusion. There were some signatures done by Ms. Stout that were found like in work and so forth. Okay. That we provided to um, okay. Dr. Lewis. And those have been provided. Ones we provided to Dr. Lewis have been provided to the district. It's the ones that were at the jail that we can't locate. Before. Okay. And it'll become obvious when we play that portion of the video what, what we're talking about. Okay. Mm 
All rise for the jury, please. The teacher looks scary as hell right now. Look at her, look at her. What are you, who is she looking at like that? Thank you. May I'll be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stauk. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. When we took our break, uh, we were in the midst of the cross-examination of uh, Dr. Lewis. That's where we will resume. Mr. Young. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, we'll play People's Exhibit 732, which is the interview that took place on November 16th, 2022 with Dr. Lewis. We're going to start it at 5530 and ended at 102.37. About 30 minutes. And it's about seven minutes, 55.30. Oh, they, they better put that camera on. This is what we have right now. Put the camera on. Again, not me, but someone else can take over and hurt someone, and that's not where I want to be. Yeah, because I don't we can't that. see. That's not. So the party is a bit much. You know, it's so intense. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Camera. It's, I got to say it's for good intention. So, you know, it's, it's not like it's just like just some random person who don't cause problems. <laughs> no, it's for good. No. Maybe it doesn't look good for some people, but it's for good. It's for someone to bring heaven to her. Really, let me do a bad fight or work for his state and over. It's really bad. But heaven will be. What's happening there? What's going on here in the back? Can you see? I'm not a violent. I'm not a violent. I'm not a violent person. And I'm not violent at all. I'm not going to let people be hurt in the bed. So I'm not going to let people be hurt because I don't do this to me too. They, if someone is trying to hurt people, I'm going to make sure they're okay because that is what I do each and every time. I'm going to always make sure that people are going to be okay. So I don't want to do just the I understand why I'm always being asked what is going on in here because this is my job to do things for people and to protect them yeah. because it's what I have to do. That is who I have to protect. I'm going to always do that because if people are molesting kids and people are hurting kids, it's what I do for them. And if people are hurting with elderly people and people are always doing this to people, this is what I'm going to do. And if people are inside your home or inside my home, I'm going to protect them. Do you understand that? Yeah. 
She does that in jail already. And it's not a question. Do you know what just happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? You what just happened? You were asking about my girlfriend? I asked her to do that. Oh, look at my bread. No, it's good to see the bread here. And it has some gold. Yeah, he did work at the prison. I think it was in North Carolina. Where? Number two, no, 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 Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I don't know. I say who is the judge. Oh, sorry. I don't get it. I was saying sorry. I don't know what we were talking about. We were talking about credit until I remember. <laughs> if you told me that it was a fruits kind of space, it's the most things. Who would be the protector? Oh, my protector is Maria. Maria, I don't like very much to talk with you. If you want to talk to Maria, I don't know. Sometimes she'll talk, sometimes she won't. <laughs> I love it for you, Taylor. Yeah. Taylor, you look at kind of okay. Where's the reception when we go when St. Maria is in love? I like to go hang out and drink some wine and be by the beach and hang out with Tyler. Um, yeah, well, I would like to go there and let me home with Maria. And but now I'd like to go to a special place and Maria, I need to talk to you. Because Maria, you have a lot of control. What is that correct? I think she does, for sure, but I need to talk with you. Yeah, I know you are doing and a beautiful hand. Okay, we paused it at an hour and two minutes and 37 seconds. Do you mind if I turned you around, Dr. Lewis? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're real. <clears throat> is this the magic you were talking about yesterday? Well, this is. Which we learned how do you get to talk? No, uh, Liz takes himself a by month. Oh, he uh, is uh, get to. Or used hypnosis much whether it's now that the procedure visuals very subjective. So you're always in the first this. you 
if you're talking with a kid or with somebody who has a problem with saying, what do you suggest that we test that we can trust or that we are find out more? Mm -hmm. you know, we try not. We try not to say set the protocol. I said to do it all. And we learned, and this is not only from recitations, but uh, from any part of that is that by and large they have a special place in because it is known that. Say there are three or four individual entities. Sometimes they can hear what's going on at church. Sometimes say that. And uh, what we learn from our patients is to simply what happens to you? Where do you go? Where do you go when I'm talking to the so and so Maria? Where do you go? Uh, what about a special place? Do you have a special place? And, and let me stop. I get that. Uh, that's why you're asking at the end. Tell me about your special place so that the persona that you think is Maria comes out. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, I, somebody can say, there is no special I don't have a special place. But when it, it is very common. But in, when we started the video, Maria came out, right? The protector. That's the first time in the entirety of your interviews with Ms. Stalk that you think Maria comes out. I don't recall if that is. I, uh, you've watched it more than I, I don't know if that was the first time. But uh, well, and I let me... know that she existed, and I did want the opportunity to learn more because I suspected that if indeed that perhaps it was in the guise of but you didn't do anything to have Maria come out. She just came out and started talking to you, right? Sometimes. Well, that's what happened in the video, right? I watched kind of carefully, and I think I, I said, you know, I really would like to talk to Maria. Very calmly, but at the beginning, uh, and was that the Russian accent that we heard on there that you were talking about? I don't know. That was that appeared, and uh, I'm not sure whether that is typical video or it's entity or it's a combination. These are not well defined, well listed. Well, she said she's the protector, and you followed up and said, "Hey, we just talked to the protector." And then, well, she said, "She, she said, was. can I finish my question, please?" And then she said, "Well, yeah, Maria's my protector, and then I'm Taylor." That's what she just said, right? right? And there was no accent when the protector was on there, right? Right. She was speaking just like she speaks all the time. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm not sure what the point is. The point is, she didn't have an accent when she came out as Maria. That's the point, right? You're, you're not dealing with logic. <laughs> this, doesn't have to, it does, this is not a total different here. Not a consistent person who remembers it when he's fooling you and always be a certain way. How do you know she's not fooling you? How do you know that? Well, watch, listen, see what is consistent, see what isn't. Is there any benefit? Yes. So far, speaking with a Russian kind of accent and not really Russian words. Advantage, disadvantage, something. Well, here's, here's, here's the benefit. Let me explain it to you, okay? You want consistency in your persona. If you want to say Maria comes out and speaks in a Russian accent, she should come out and speak in a Russian accent. You should is that logical? Logic. It is not logical. Okay. They are as logical as dreams. So you handed her a piece of paper and asked her to sign her name. Yeah. What happened to that piece of paper? Well, 
Well, wait a minute here. You just told the court <laughs> that you don't have these documents, that you lost them. That's what you just did. Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have you step out in the hallway back to the jury room, please. <laughs> Guys, for the jury, please. Oh, you guys. So now she's got the documents, the ones we just heard that she had lost. She's like, oh, I got them right here. Just like the prosecutor said, don't do that. She's probably, he said, she's probably going to say, oh, I've got them here in my notes. And now that's what she's doing. Damn, Letitia looks hectic, you guys. Look at this. Whoa, she really looking like the grudge or the ring today. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the yes. jury has left the courtroom. Okay. Time to discipline her. <laughs> yeah, no, I hate to say I predicted this, but this is exactly what I predicted was going to happen. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That somehow she pulls these documents out when confronted on them. And that's why I wanted to get on the record that she lost them. And the record should reflect that the witness is now giving Mr. Tallini a series of documents that she has on her lap. Mm, nice. Let's let's finish it out. What's the record? What what is it that you're being handed? These are documents that were already provided. Okay. So show them to Mr. Young and let's see if they are what he understands them to be. I haven't seen these. I haven't seen that. I've never seen that. I don't know what this is. Mr. Young? Three of the four documents that were shown to me by Mr. Tomini we have in discovery, which talked about the test that the doctor had told the court about over the break. Uh, one of the documents, it looks like a series of highlighted colors and different colors. On the top of it, it says Leticia, and then below it, it says red. I have no idea what that is. Uh, I don't know if that's the document that she has up there uh, on the video or not, uh, because I've never seen those documents. So what are you requesting as a remedy? Mm -hmm. If she's got these documents, I'd like to have them. And I don't want to be surprised by them when I'm asking her when she's already told the court she didn't have them. All right. Well, here's here's the easy solution to this. Uh, we'll take about a 15 minute recess. Um, in the state of Colorado, um, Dr. Lewis, in, in case, because uh, I know you testify in other places, in the state of Colorado, anything that you relied on, any piece of information, document, uh, anything that was given to you by the defense counsel, anything that was given to you by the defendant, anything that was given to you by CMHIP, anything and everything in your file, um, without exception, must be provided to the prosecution. In addition, in the state of Colorado, anytime somebody takes the witness stand and is starting to testify, and is starting to testify and all of a sudden is looking at some documents in their hands or something like that, counsel is entitled to see what they are. So. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take about 15 minutes. You look through everything she has in her lap. Then we'll see where we are. Um, and we can go from there. There's a number of remedies uh, from there. Um, I, and we can deal with all of those remedies once I have a better idea of what it is that you think she has that has not been provided. Um, and uh, I know that certain things were taken out. I want those taken back out um, and we're going to put them in the court file uh, to be sealed so that we have something for the appellate record as opposed to he showed me four documents and I had three of them, but not the fourth one or whatever. I want it. I, I want in the court record um, what it is that we're referring to when we talk about that. I also will have the documents to if you find any documents that you've not previously been given, take those out. Uh, because A, you're entitled to see them, and B, I want those in the record as well for appellate purposes in the event that uh, that becomes necessary. Um, obviously, you would also be entitled to have um, uh, either Dr. Torres or Dr. Gray look at those uh, and render opinions about that uh, in rebuttal if you choose to do so. So 
um, let's start there so that we have at least a starting point. So court will be I just asked that Mr. Tolini join me in that. So yep. we're looking at the same. That's fine. Place. So court will take a recess until two o'clock. All rise. Until two. Okay. So it's 12 minutes or so. Okay. <laughs> Shall I just stay down here, you guys? <laughs> I'm just going to be a, oh my word, that was, I told you guys, triple buckle up. Mic check. Triple buckle. Now we need quattro buckle up. This is so bad. <laughs> I don't even have words, but... Um... Let's try to find some words, okay? Uh, use, use your words. Well, tell myself, okay? Liza says, has LS made a decision about testifying? Not yet. She will only make a decision once Dr. Dorothy Lewis is done, which seems like that's never going to happen. So maybe we are going to be up for another four weeks, you guys. They're like, the trial, I just see, you know, the media is like, the trial is coming to an end. It's closing time. So, you know, because the judge said um, closing arguments by earliest Friday. Um well, now I hear why it says by earliest Friday. <laughs> and we're going to need that break tomorrow because the last two days have been such a mess. Yeah, mistrial is the word. That's what I'm worried about. Okay, let's see. Pepper says not grounds for a mistrial, but he could dismiss the witness and strike her testimony or the judge can sanction the defense. I really wish they would dismiss the witness and strike her testimony because it's absolute... I'm going to say a British word now, bollocks, absolute bollocks. Like, what is this? Well, we saw Maria. Thankfully, they put the, the, the camera on that witness stand because now, of course, Dr. Dorothy Lewis is sitting elsewhere, right? So um, they didn't have the cameras on for that first bit, so we could only hear things. But we saw Maria come out, and there was no change well, micro changes in demeanor, which would be easy to fake. There were some micro changes, but not much. No change in accent. Um, <laughs> no Spanish accent for Maria Sanchez. There was no Russian act at all either. Uh, Red Cloud says they should dismiss the witness. Cha Cha Dodd says all these buckles add up to a straight jacket. <laughs> yes, by Friday we'll all be in straight jackets. Yes, gee. Bollocks. Mm, mm, mm. This is so bad. Uh, Veruca says, salt bow. Do we think the jury will have any questions that would be answered? Good luck. I, I, I wonder. I still think if they don't have any questions, that's going to be very telling. If they're just like, I don't know what to ask this lady. But I'm sure there's going to be someone on the jury curious about all of this, right? It, it that was very interesting you know it sounded so weird it sounded almost like dr dorothy lewis was the one triggered by listening to those videos i mean she was all like whimpering in the corner there and trying to justify what her methods were it sounded like she was a little embarrassed too we couldn't see her but she's just like well um she said you're not dealing with logic no okay now i'm gonna say rude words again no shit sherlock <laughs> you're not dealing with logic we we gathered that from her earlier saying wacky, convoluted, pe extremely peculiar. Yeah, we gather. There's no logic that we're dealing with here. <laughs> oh, and she was leading us so much. Like, just like, she just walks into that room. Okay, this was from November 15th or so. I don't know. They didn't say the exact date of that one, but they are talking about November 15th, 16th, and 17th, 2022. Morning and evening sessions, right? Morning and afternoon. You, you've seen her for a day, and you're already like, excellent. You've got the ID. I mean, it, what? We heard other experts testify. Sometimes it takes up to six years, six to eight years for someone to be correctly diagnosed with the ID. And she's just there for like one day, and she's like, mm-hmm. Now, I'd like to speak to Maria. Whoa, that got really creepy and awkward quickly. <laughs> yeah, C minor op says, how about the Latin confession? Again, possession. <laughs> yeah, she's mimicking some possession. She's watched a little bit of The Exorcist. <laughs> Definitely. So I told you guys yesterday, we went from the ring 
to the grudge and now we're at the exorcist level yes and even exorcist level already started yesterday and now dr dorothy lewis has also got food poisoning i'm like oh no well we're going to have like projectile vomiting going on in this court because then we're really at exorcist level and we're all going to need to just i don't even know if we should buckle up we should unbuckle and run <laughs> oh man so kaya says i don't know can't be sure i don't know can't remember wacky <laughs> yes all of those all of the above for anyone joining the stream now if you're wondering what why am i sitting here and there's no court happening right now well dr dorothy lewis has been very very naughty <laughs> at this point she really needs to be disciplined honestly like she's late all the time even when the judge tells her so he actually asked her so nicely you were late on day one okay you were late on day two the first day was also by three three and a half hours late okay the next day please be here okay nine o'clock wasn't after lunch, can you be on time? Wasn't. She's never, ever on time. Ever. Ever. Like, not one time. And then Will Cook made a joke now when they came back of, we were catching a jumping spider during lunch. That's why we're late. And I'm like, this is no laughing matter, okay? Anna Green says, so unprofessional. The defense obviously should be talked to by the judge. A waste of the court's time. Yeah. This is so terrible. So what happened was, before the jury entered the courtroom now, um, Mr. Young, when the judge is like any, anything, you know, then he said, okay, the prosecution said that he basically doesn't want, apparently there's notes where Letitia had written some gibberish, but written, written in Latin. And these notes have now conveniently been lost. Okay. <laughs> there's some other signatures and other notes and they've now been lost. So Mr. Young said he doesn't want Dr. Dorothy Lewis to say these notes are lost. And then when the jury's in the room, to be like, oh, no, I have them right here in my notes. Okay, let's just go over these. You didn't want that to happen, okay? So what did I just do? I just zoomed into something. Um, Her Maria is Anna Chapman, the Russian spy. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for your sticker. And Cha Cha Dodd says, in my opinion, this witness is the defense's strategy. I'm also starting to wonder that. Hmm? I'm also starting to wonder that. Do they want a mistrial or what's going on here? Anyway. And you know what? When the jury came into the room and we saw the video and we could see there's no Maria meaning with a Spanish accent, with a Russian accent. There's nothing like that. This all looked like Ooh, red flag, everyone. This is someone with her own narrative. That would be Dr. Lewis. Okay, Letitia's got her narrative and Dr. Lewis has got her own. And those two worlds collided and Dr. Lewis is like, excellent. You've definitely got it. <laughs> like, oh no, it just looked so bad. And so what did Dr. Lewis do in response to the questioning? Say, well, I have the notes. I have notes over here. And it's like, man, that's exactly what Mr. Young predicted would happen. And it happened. So now the jury has been excused out of the courtroom. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> all rise again. Second time in this trial when it's like, oh, this, that was awkward. The first time was when Dakota Lowry, the teacher's brother, was like, why, Tisha, why? And it's like, okay, all rise. <laughs> that was quite a moment, right? Um, And now... All rise again, jury out, whew, okay, and they addressed all of this. Now they're going over the notes, which is why there's a 15-minute break to go over all those notes that Dr. Dorothy Lewis had on her lap. Wow, Tony says the doctor lied about the papers with the with LT signatures. That was shady. I don't, I think, okay, let me just be careful with my opinion here. I'm just starting to think that she's a crafty little lady, that she's using her age <laughs> She seemed like this innocent little lady, but she's not. She just seems quite cunning to me. It's just like, oh, conveniently, here it is. Got it right here. <laughs> I mean, she just like, what? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Young was spot on. He was like, I don't want this to happen. Okay, we got it. You've lost the notes, right? Don't know where they are. Cool. Got it. Jury enters. Ooh, the notes. I mean, like, damn. That was quite something. Crafty. She's crafty and cunning. <laughs> and I think quite... um you know, calculated. It's kind of just like, hmm, manipulative is a word that's coming to mind. And all in Tisha's favor. Because based on this, Tisha will have, maybe maybe this will be grounds for a mistrial. And maybe that would be the goal for someone who's on Tisha's side. You know what I mean? Tanya says the defense is setting up an appeal. Yeah, yep. That's what I think is happening. I don't even, I'm not a lawyer at all by any means, but seems so. 
And Kimberly, thank you so much. You say, oh, thank you so much. I'm like, you say, super sick. <laughs> so I'm so used to ring them out. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. PD says, Will Cook is disrespectful. I mean, he's always been. He's always been. Now, the question is, if you guys were Letitia Stark's defense attorneys, how would you defend her? What would your strategy be? Because I was thinking about that last night, and I'm like, hmm. Like, literally, it's just like so much evidence against her. Like, what? It wouldn't be this. This is a waste of everyone's time, of money, of just everything. And it's just putting the family through hell. It's still, it doesn't really boggle my mind because I know they just, if the basic word would be evil, killers, you know, people like Letitia. But if she's just like, oh, okay, yeah, don't, I don't want to put the whole family through this, but they don't care about that. Elle's going through it, Landon. Family, friends, the whole community, everybody's watching, going through this. And Letitia's just there trying her level best to be found not guilty by reason of insanity. So she can go to a mental institute and manipulate the crap out of everyone. Be like, see, I'm fixed. Like, you can let me out now. That's what her little dream would be. Um, or, or, mistrial. This is bad. Objection cake says, Mr. Young nailed it yesterday when he asked Doc, do you have just have no regard for the rules? He did. Today, her cell phone was on, too. There was a cell phone going off, and they're like, uh, the judge was like, no smoking, <laughs> no cell phones. And guess whose cell phone it was? Dr. Dorothy Lewis's. Yes, it was indeed. I'm just not buying it. Mm -mm. I'm not buying it. This whole, like, little lady act. Mm -mm. <laughs> or oh, you crafty, you cunning lady. <laughs> uh, Robin says, how do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you catch a way from putting it down? Marry off to Baron Von Trapp. <laughs> I'm not going to sing now. It's a karaoke time. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for your sticker. Abby says, I would walk out like her lawyer at opening statement, but wouldn't come back in G. Yes, that would be good. That would be better than this. This is bad. This is really terrible. I'm a word. Uh, I would have wanted to. I'm sure a case is being followed by some high priced attorneys who will take on her appeal at no cost. Yes, I'm watching the court, don't worry. Um, Irene says, Doc is affected by years of loony characters she got exposed to. Is she, though, or is she cunning as hell and she's got her own narrative and she sees what she wants to see? Did I miss anything here? Uh, Nancy says, so far, Dr. Lewis is BSing us all. She is hogging the stage for herself and the defense knew this was going to be a cluster F. <laughs> this is so disrespectful to the court. Yes, I agree in very little regard for Gannon, the actual victim of murder, a little 11-year-old boy. What the hell? Eat Drink says, only 1% of world population can speak Latin. The teacher can barely speak in English, right? <laughs> Her first language, but can write in Latin. <laughs> yes. And she can just bust out that Russian as well sometimes, you know? Okay. I hope I'm not missing anything. This chat is flying so fast. Uh, thank you. Keep it real. Christy Taylor says, walks like a duck, talks like a duck. She, yeah, she's a quack. Yes, I, I must agree. I'm on that side of the fence too. I'm like, what is going on here? I think they're still flapping through pages. Now they're two minutes late, so already we're late. LS Googled how to write Latin. Did she though? <laughs> they said it's gibberish anyway, so I don't even know. <laughs> what are we asking? Lewis says, G's never going to reply to me. Well, I just read out your comment. What is it? What you got? Oh, yes. I wonder if she's going to be impeached. What do you think is going to happen, you guys? Anyone with legal experience in here? Tell me what's going to happen next, man. Well, where, where do they go from here? Impeach her. Impeach her. Never mind. Cuff Tisha. Cuff her. Cuff her. This is like impeach, impeach. Just let this, disregard this witness and her testimony. This is absolutely horrendous. And he said, gee, did you notice when Maria came out, she wiped, you know, I know it's the same way Letitia does. Different personalities have their own mannerisms. Oh, you think I don't see that? I noticed it, right? <laughs> How do we miss it? It's like, oh, no, exactly. That was, yeah. So then technically she's what? Maria in court a lot, <laughs> but yet not triggered by anyone like Dr. Lewis wearing red and black on both days she's been there. Thank you, S.V. Kathy. Steve says, I speak fluent gibberish. <laughs> Maybe you can decode what the T-shirt wrote. <laughs> Get Steve on the stand. 
Uh, welcome to all the members. Welcome, Becky. Leader says, in a documentary, Dr. Lewis is shown to be unprepared for other trials. I mean, why, why, why? I really think she's just winging it, man. She's just winging it. Mace Windu says, gee, I love the way you say bollocks <laughs> from Great Britain, so I appreciate it. There's no other word. To, well, cuck is one word. Afrikaans word. This is cuck. A lot of cuck. Ish, ish, ish. I could say lots of Afrikaans words right now, but yeah, it's also a load of bollocks, which all means the same thing. <laughs> Mrs. A lot, Mary. Let's get some sage up in here. <laughs> I know, right? It's almost time to get that sage up in here. Damn, they're late now. They are late now. Now we're again this whole day. Oh my word, they're going to make me so mad. You'll see a demeanor change in me <laughs> if they're late again. Is this the last day that Dr. Lewis is testifying? Please, please. Not one more minute of this nonsense. I know. Thank you, Torna. He's been on the show. Have you guys seen the lawyer you know on the show? Yes. Oh, that's where I learned some of my legalese. <laughs> yes. So what's going to happen here? Thank you so much. Uh, wait, now, Mr. Torna. Thank you so much. I know, right? Oh, man. Yeah. She's making easy money now. <laughs> $350. TikTok, TikTok. Okay. Wow. We're just monitoring this. When's the court coming back? Janet Tucker says, that blonde lady in court still looks so familiar. She really does. You mean the one that was like that we thought was Dr. Lewis yesterday? Mm, clearly, that wasn't her. So sorry about that. I was like pointing at her, people in the chat saying it's her, but I did later. I'm like, I don't know if that's actually her. Apparently, it wasn't her. Unless she changed her hair <laughs> in a day. Oh, Quite man. Deep. Uh, smoking. People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury's Here not present go. in the courtroom. Um, how are we with the review of notes? Uh, Mr. Tony and I had an opportunity to go through them very quickly. Okay. Um, obviously, I would need more time to go through them thoroughly. Uh, the remedy that I suggest on behalf of the people is that she's not allowed to have notes during the remainder of my cross and during Mr. Tony's redirect. We'll keep the notes over on the table. Um, someone can make copies for the court file and the appellate record later. Uh, I don't want to keep the jury waiting any longer. I want to keep going. Uh, okay. And I think that's a reasonable remedy under the circumstances. Mr. Tallini. Okay. All right. So, um, Dr. Lewis, you can have your reports. Um, I don't know that she has her reports. Okay. I, I have copy of the reports. I don't think. Okay, Mr. Tallini is going to provide you with copies of your reports, but you cannot have copies of your notes uh, or uh, use them during your uh, the remainder of your testimony here. Um, so we'll leave it at that. And uh, prosecution, as this may or may not have something to do with rebuttal, um, I'm going to impose the burden on the prosecution to uh, take those you can just release those in discovery to Mr. Tallini and also upload them. Uh, let us know when you're going to do that. And we will need to do that as a sealed file. Um, and we need to take those and have one of our people start copying it now. Yeah, that would be fine. He's got a lot more pull than I do. Jeff. Okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, I also want to, um, I, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but please everybody be patient with me. Um, I, I know that, uh, this matter is being broadcast, um, simultaneously with, um, what's going on in the courtroom. And I know that I have a lot of people in the courtroom, regardless of how you view this case, remember what it is about. There is. Uh, a child who lost his life and a woman who may be facing a life sentence. Okay. So remember what this case is about and remember the decorum. My order is that there are no cell phones to be used in the courtroom unless you are with the press. And we know who those people are because they're sitting in the front row. Remember what this case is about. None of these people in here are actors. They are all associated with this case in some fashion. It's not television. If your phone is, if something's going on with your phone and it's really important, I get that. Go in the hallway. You will not be allowed to have your phone out 
unless you are press. If you have your phone out and someone sees you with it, you will be asked to leave. You will not be permitted back into the courtroom. Also, please understand, and I'm, I know that, that sometimes people say that I can be really direct, but I try to be that way so that there's not a lot of confusion. This is not a guideline. This is not a suggestion. This is the process that we're going to follow in the courtroom. And it applies to everyone. So unless you're press or you're associated with that team or this team, put your phones away. Don't get them out. So I understand we're ready for the jury. Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay. yeah just real quickly, Judge, uh, gave that entire pile of um, documents to our investigator, Cecil Weir. He's making three copies. One Perfect. that will we'll get to us, we'll um, get one to the court, and then it'll be released in discovery to the defense. Okay. All right. Excuse me, Your Honor. Ma'am? It's essential that they be copied in color because to be the colors must be copied. It's inaccurate. I, black and white. I'm leaving it up to the, the prosecution uh, for that, and it may be an issue on another day, but it's not one that we're taking up today, and it's not one that we're taking up now. Let's bring the jury back in. <laughs> See if you can get, see if we got any response on getting another security guy up here to stand right there looking back. Okay. Another security guy. I can't believe she's like, this. these copies must be in color. Love this judge. This is about Gannon, you guys, and no one else. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May I'll be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358. People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Uh, Mr. Young. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Dr. Lewis, uh, we just took a break, and Mr. Tommy and I just went through all your notes that you had here in the courtroom. Is that right? Uh, having gone through those notes, we see no documents that you were using during the course of this interview with Ms. Stout, correct? Not yet. You know, because I don't know what. What there is in terms of those of that interview, if you have the whole thing, you will see those documents. Let me, let me just ask you a simple question Do you have those documents that you used in the interview with Ms. Stout? Yes or no? I gave them to you. Yes, they yeah. are there, but they haven't. Now, at this time, I'm going to ask um, that the court take judicial notice that Mr. Tallini and I went through those stacks of notes and none of the notes that she's referring to are in the stack of notes that she has in the court. Mr. Tallini, it's not a judicial notice thing. It sounds like it's a stipulation. There is the complex figure drawing that had not been referenced that were notes that were that was documented that were turned over to this attorney and that was in there and I think that's a little bit of the was is having as far as the signatures or the alleged okay all right i i would accept that stipulation i appreciate okay. that thank you okay dr lewis you know the importance of turning over notes that you use in a forensic interview especially in a homicide case what did you do with those notes that we just talked about where you had Ms. stalk sign something signed there where I had was turned over to uh to me to be copied and shared with me. I approach a witness. 
Oh, yes, you can go ahead. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 735. Have you taken a moment to look at that document? This is not. This is a different location with. Well, you have a question about it. Yeah, I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Sure. Because you recognize that people's exhibit 735? I recognize that it was a communication line to Mr. An email between you and Mr. Tolini, correct? To the best of my knowledge. And does that document accurately reflect? that email that you have with regards to the EEG that we talked about yesterday and whether or not you had knowledge that you were withdrawing your request to have an EEG done. <laughs> to my mind, it was not simply dropping and it was saying, it, Dr. Miller, let's just answer my question. I, Does the document accurately depict the email exchange between you and Mr. Chalene with regards to your knowledge of whether an EEG was withdrawn? Yes or no? Whether it was, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the Withdrawn, word. your request for an EEG. It was, it was not a permanently withdrawn meeting saying right now. Your Honor, I'm going to ask you to direct her to Dr. answer Dr. my Lewis, question. Dr. Lewis, the question is simple. Is this an email that you sent to Mr. Chalene? Yes or no? Yes, it is. Okay. Mr. Young? We move to admit People's Exhibit 735. No objection. Exhibit 735 will be admitted. Go ahead. And did you say in that email, go ahead and withdraw the EEG? We'll address it at a later time. I said, you may now, but we could address it later. This did not mean it's not important. It was just organizing in my head. It's most important. That became less important than something else. Well, the email speaks for itself, doesn't it? You're, you're dictating the email why you didn't think it was important at that time. Well, I'm saying that there are other, other things have arisen that we should also address. So why did you yesterday blame the attorneys that you didn't know anything about the EEG being withdrawn? I did not consider this withdrawing it permanently, but simply... I did not wish to fight with the court over, over, are you getting this, are you not? The court refused to get it, and I was saying it can be addressed again. But I did not think of okay. that thing was going. Listen to my question carefully. Yes. Why did you yesterday tell this jury that you never requested to withdraw the EEG, that the attorneys did it, never told you anything about it? Because I did not. Request to withdraw it. I said you could kind of wait and do it, and I did not think that they had it. Can I retrieve the document from the desk? This is what you said in your email, and you, you we can explain what it means after I read it, okay? I have been reading more on Letitia, and I think we should drop. The EEG request. What does that mean to you? Rest of it, know the timing of it, and know what I was thinking about at that point that was most important. But this was not something that I was going to say. I can't possibly assist you if you don't have this. I think it's. I, I think we should have it, but you can wait. Get it later. In fact. It may be, I could be mistaken, but I believe that uh, Mr. Bellini had said to me, there will be appeals on this. Yeah, I'm going to ask that that be, yes. yeah. Dr. Lewis, yeah. I'd like, yeah. Dr. Lewis, uh, please wait, stop. wait, 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 one at a time, one at a time. Dr. Lewis, please confine your answer to the question being asked. Mr. Tolini will have an opportunity to ask you questions on redirect. 
And if there's anything that he thinks you need to bring up, he can bring it up then. But just confine your answer to the question being asked. Um, and Mr. Young. Your Honor, I would ask that what she just said be stricken, uh, that the jury be uh, instructed to disregard it. Mr. Tolini. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, you're instructed to disregard Dr. Lewis's response to Mr. Young's uh, most recent question. Mr. Young. We're going to play the next video, okay? Would you like me to turn you around towards the TV? Okay. And so for the record, we're going to play uh, People's Exhibit 732. Uh, We're going to start at an hour and seven minutes and eight seconds and ended at an hour and 40 minutes and eight seconds. So this is roughly 33 minutes. Um, and so we're going to play it continuously through Dr. Lewis. So if you wouldn't mind, I'll ask you some questions when it's over. Okay. Date of this again, please. It's November 16th in the afternoon, uh, 2022. Currently, we have the screen. Oh, sorry, my bad. Applying an insurance there. And who said that she, she said that she didn't know who you are? Who was that? Okay. Because you have been told who was Taylor. I can break up. You did not bring that. And see, I was sitting on the table, but I had to let her know. Okay, there was just some tea there for her. Then the tea egg is clean, it's also very fine, right? And you know, you said, Ginger, what else? Just put on a little left me. So, TCA, who would have been? So, TCA, that is what you feel. And so, Taylor, that's why you said, that was the TCA. This is the letter. Okay, you said you need to talk to me. Yeah, but um, the TCA wrote that. Yeah, from that, and the TCA just wrote the same letter. Because you tell her, right? Just give me a number. And he said, Taylor, now I'm going to go. Okay, I am um, um, two. Oh, I don't know if they say one more. And each of you um, seems to be confusing. We have a possible So, well, yes, she's not a secret.
Maria said she will come in on her terms with no faith that she has this When you say that, was that doesn't So we have a red section of the trips, but don't think that she answers to anyone. The ticket and only talk to her. Not me. The ticket. You'll let me talk to her. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what I, I can't talk about it. If she can, because I don't curse and do bad things. You see what I mean? I don't curse and do bad things. I don't live through that world. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so that's why I have um, to so uh, I need to with Maria. I think that Maria has a lot more than I need to say that she said. Right, she so, said, like, because I'm a really good person. Same time, I kind of like it. Not like Same she gets me. Because I'm like a good, not bad, but PC is bad. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm not better. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I do a lot more good. You see what I'm saying? You do a lot more Yeah. She yeah. not always like very good. Um, oh, what do you say? Right, okay. Well, my day, I just need to do good. Let's, you know, do good to people, do right by me. And I don't need to do that. You think I have to do something that's like that? No, I'm saying I think, I think some things are good, you know what I mean? And so we should be using something that's good that they don't need to do. Right. And so that's why sometimes she doesn't like talking to me. Well, Yes, so it seems to me that sometimes you think it's good. So, to be the strong and the deep, find the poor, keep things under control, and then they don't see what is right. I try to like be the mediator or try to be calm. Everybody else get along, communicate, do good to people, what happens when you lose what happens when you temper so that's you what what happens to them when you leave you do what you want to take over and then um, takes away from like the good part of Taylor, you know, like good part of Taylor is the like to a good communicator, effective, you know, like not a bad temper. I can communicate effectively with them. Do they know what to do? Like if I if they come to visit me and I'm as myself as Taylor, then I can sit down and talk to them and be like uh, able to like be nice and be like. Oh, okay, how are you guys doing? They don't even know what to do. 
Oh, if I had they come and they see I'm not like whatever, I'm not tailored because then I'm just like, I'm not taking a lot. But then I'm not trying to be me, but then who really I can take it if they're not good. I love this well, so that's for you, are you with me? Hmm? How long is for you? I'm honest with you. Yeah. So what happened was uh, you don't play what happened or sure. Okay, so um the night of January twenty seventh, uh, two thousand and twenty. Uh, I had um reported again missing because he was you had not the disease. I had so January So you reported the Because I was well, because I was calm at first because I didn't think anything was wrong. I thought that he was just playing like a hiding challenge and that he would be okay. And I thought that he would eventually come out of his hiding spot and he would eventually everything would be fine. I was calm. He wanted to have much power on me too. So I thought that the whole practice circle. So I wasn't in a panic mode. I wasn't in any kind of like uh, anxiety or hallucinating. Yet. Not yet. I was not there. Some people already have to. No, nothing had happened to him. Nobody ever saw that after one. And you were there and all the things. Right. He was, he was missing. He was, he was already, he was missing, but nothing had happened to him. He was missing. He was in the club. Well, I would have been Because he was the house or he was hiding. Yeah, and that's why. That's why. I moved to the to the room. I think all of you can break down and talk to everyone. I think all of you have to cover for each other. And, you know, I think that you all want to be able to be right on the TC. I actually knew the prevention them from getting help. Not always happens, but I think you're afraid of telling what happened to the enemy. I wish you were afraid. Do you want to keep going? Do you want to keep going? When I want to talk to you, is it? Yes. Well, no, as we were in the first line, but I just want to keep going. So, um, we was missing, and I called that. I remember he started to painting after a couple of minutes. 
that's when I started to get worried because I realized that it started to rain, it get cold outside. I did try to bring me back. I started a brain program and I'm trying to bring her back to life. And when he didn't come back to life, he didn't. What was he like? Well, in the in your rooms. Where are you found? I don't remember where I found him. Just a moment. So you know he was in the rooms. But do you, if you don't understand why it was like that, just like that, because he wasn't supposed to die. He's not. No. 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 What was the What was the idea? What was supposed to be him? It was the Was it supposed to be? Was it supposed to be? Yeah. And our, it was a kid. Yeah, what did you think about? Mm -hmm. I'm not a monster. Great. I'm not a monster. What? It's going to be a lot of people thinking that I was a mass murderer that just killed someone right now while I was scanning. Okay. Under no circumstances. I think you're just scanning about this. We're going to do it in something. Okay. Uh -huh. Do you need something to help us do it? Did it was to look like something. You know, they don't know what it's like in my life. I have to see when I realized that it was good and I never knew it was him. So now I was in the hall, we don't understand. Someone was in the hall, okay? Yes, there is no hall. Yeah. We're seeing a big, okay? Everybody was in the hall. That was in the hall, so it was like a rick. Everyone, everyone was looking for himself. There was someone in the hall. Yeah. And everyone was looking for else in the hall. Okay. But I did what's got done. 
Which is the 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 Okay. And I fired the gun. I did not know, I didn't have a safety. I didn't know any of that. That's what I'm trained to do. Trained to kill. Okay. You're trained to kill. So what I do, you're trained to kill. I'm trained to kill. That's what I do. Trained to kill. Okay. That's what I do. Kill. Very little. Okay. Any of my dress number two, I'm trained to kill. Okay. The first The first two people that I care about. Okay, so yes, yes, and that's what I did. I took the gun, I fired the gun at someone. They had a cape on, they looked like a dangerous man. He fired at someone, yes, a dangerous man. Man, yeah. I am a dangerous man. Great. So what I do? Just how I walk. This is very old. Yes. Under the gun. And then just one more thing. Kill the man. Okay. Yeah. Oh. They come to the man. So what I do? Um. I will protect the people that I don't I don't want to do that, okay? I don't understand the problem. When did you realize it was not the person who I don't realize anything. I got the meeting. I got the meeting after I did my job. You missed yourself. I got the meeting after I did my job. So, what did you think of that? Get what I was supposed to do? Which is, I killed a dragon. I killed a red kiss. So, the red was there for the TCL and Gammon and for the Zerbs. What did you think of the dragon? The so short. Because as you hear, my family, they were missing and I had to protect them. Who was this? But he's your son. Really? But your son was missing. Her protector, sort of you. She was upset. Everyone was upset. Little baby girl was upset. Everyone was crying. That's what I did. And then I. You left your mind. What happened? I left. I don't know what happened. I turned it. Would you believe in the Who did this? If I could turn it into the beast, what? If I could turn it into the beast, I'm not just, I'm just. Double up. Okay. What do you want to try? What do you want to try? Just you. Yeah,
You want to be called as invisible. No. No. I have jobs to do. I need to drop in our what is the other? I always have a What are you trying to say for me? Us. Do you see anyone? I don't have to do No, you don't need to. I'm I don't 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 I I don't see any of that. I did not put out the 
And we'll do the top of that. Would you like the game to talk about stuff to tell how you want to use the information that Maria gave? Sure. Yeah. So they will do that. And um, I think I know these people. I think none of us here would ever do anything like if we use this, these would only be in the DC center to get the DC center. And so, so, as you made it, we're not going to use it. We're going to do that. Can I see that? The only thing I have is that I have a little bit of 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 do you surprise yourself when you were spraying? No, I didn't. You are. This is what I do. Well, you do it, and often you're very ready to trust us. But we will only use what we're talking about. Definitely. And again, it does not help. Leticia, I'm going to eat. Just stay here. Uh, I didn't find this. You were pretty young right today. Do you think we should take a rest for maybe an hour or two? Well, let's come back in two ish, three, and let's look. Is that our shirt? I think it's almost seeing the truth. I do need the promise. It only passes. I have a guess. I have a request. I know. I would like you not to. And to remain safe and strong, but not for you. If you say this, we go for whatever talent. But you will only have me to tell to you tomorrow. But you have to you know the name of you can talk to those people. Well, maybe. Maybe you would come forward a little bit and let uh, let Maria meet you. Yeah. And she doesn't just talk to him. I noticed only when I went to the drug when I talked with her that she got a feeling he and I hope was really uh, was I would you know, they guessed and that I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I would have met like and I would have been with her. Yeah. Okay, why don't we take a thing and then some Maria? I have something that I'm going to do something to do to go to the room. I don't. Where is that? Oh, yes, did Okay, the camera or the video stops at uh, 140 and 08 seconds. Who was that other person that was leaving the room there, Dr. Lewis? Well, uh, Mr. Tomini went out the door and then some gentleman with a mask on followed him out. Who was that person? I don't recall and I Can we just play that portion back? We're going to play the portion back. You can just look at this TV right here.
Thank you. Okay, we're not talking about him, Dr. Lewis. Please keep watching. Uh, two, four. Well, freeze it. Who's that person right there? I don't recognize That's not your son? You don't recognize your own son? Because he was running the camera, but I don't recognize well, running the camera, Dr. Lewis, he's going out the door when the camera shuts off. What is your son doing in the interview room? Well, particular interview, we had asked uh, when this will occur, and uh, I had asked her. Is that recognized within the field of psychiatry to do forensic interviews with people who are charged with first degree murder and bring your son along? Cameras be on us and that there'll be competent. I had said I'd like to have them on. Gone. She told me have to be. Well, this investigator seated in the back courtroom was in there, right? Mr. Cellini was in there. Why was your son in there? He was asked to run if he knew how could he run the campus. Why did you stop the interview? Well, we spent a day and a half hours of talking to her, trying to get Maria to come out. According to you, I'm assuming you're saying this is Maria who comes out that we see. Sure, I'm asking myself, who is this? If you look at, at the character they are talking, there are times that uh, she goes by Maria. Her expressions change. She looks different. She sounds different. She does different things. She protects. I think that there was a back and forth over how she perceived herself. What's going on in her head? But I think that there were times when they saw she. I don't think it was always Maria. I think that there were changes there as I watched as a clinician. There was not a good system. Okay, and I and, and so you're saying that Leticia could have came back and faked the Spanish accent while she was faking to be Maria. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's what I'm asking you. Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm not saying. I don't think that I don't think it's faked. I think that she switches back and forth, and her identity and who she is is clear. What did you talk about after the camera was turned off, Doctor? I beg your pardon. What did you talk about with Maria after the camera turned off? I have no recollection of talking with her after the camera was turned off. No idea. I don't know for sure. Uh, on the papers, but I can tell you sometimes if things seem <coughs> that was down or that patient would be improved, sometimes we will write back and forth. I, those were preserved. But I don't I don't know who she was. I didn't. You didn't preserve those documents. We've already gone through you did not preserve those documents that you see her writing on, did you? I do not know. I'd have to look, but I, I don't have a recollection of having preserved them. They were uh, kind of a communication device there. And I may, you know, they may be there, like and they may have been handed over. I, I don't have perfect memory of what, of what happened to those papers. Other serial killers that you've interviewed that you've diagnosed with disassociative identity disorder, for instance, the ones that are on your HBO documentary. 
when you ask them to change personalities, they do. Some of them do the same neck roll thing. What? Do you remember that? And when they change personalities, they confess and they tell you how they did the killing, correct? Some. Some. When there is a real definitive kind of uh, different, this is a fluid kind of, as I told you, uh, not like on again, off again, perfect logical. But what Maria says to you is a mistaken identity. I didn't know it was Gannon. I shot the gun one time, correct? Uh, see, someone says this at another time. Someone there with this very odd demeanor says, uh, I'm there to protect them. I, I protect them. Uh, there is a fluid kind of. Uh, Did she, doctor, just listen to my question carefully and just answer yes or no if you could, okay? Did she tell you that she mistaken identity, didn't know it was Gannon, fired a gun one time, did what she had to do? Or words to that effect? Early on. In this portion we just saw. At the beginning, of it, I believe at the beginning of the then she spoke about other things. So that about defending and and you know that's not how Gannon died. He didn't die, die from one gunshot wound, did he? Why didn't you confront her on that? It does not make logical sense. And on how you start psychiatric interviews, in fact, it's amateurish to say, oh, but you said this at that point, how come you're saying it now? This is amateurish work if anyone does that. But you then follow what is going on and you saw in front of your eyes without asking anything or her. Direction change. You saw what this person said uh, change. I take care of them. I, uh, I hurt the people who are out to hurt them. And I have down here, as I'm looking at that thing, is it is issue of uh, and Dr. Lewis, I, I just want you to respond to my questions, please. I'm okay. trying to do that. I, I'm can, saying can you listen to my next question, please? Robert De Niro did a pretty good job at that in the movie Cape Fear as well, didn't he? No. He didn't? No. Okay. No, Robert De Niro. Actors, actors do a good job of acting, don't they? No, Robert De Niro was not an outstanding. In fact, he was not. Of, of necessarily in uh, no, he did not do it. Did he, Again, all right, I'm gonna. Probably, but no, it was not a wonderful. Can we agree to disagree on that, please? See the first case. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go uh, to the last clip, doctor. Okay, and this is longer. Um, this is going to be. Uh, that I want to say an hour and 30 minutes or so okay um so are you comfortable there or do you want to go somewhere else this is going to be a longer clip an hour and a half you guys we can actually we can get you a drink of water and we're probably going to take a break in about 20 minutes to find a okay, so good place will be a bit of a break. oh yeah no i'm not going to have the jury sitting there for all of this so um find a good place in about 20 minutes and then we'll take our break there sounds good judge thanks and this is uh, People's Exhibit 734. It's the afternoon of November 17th, 2022. It starts at eight minutes and 23 seconds, and we're going to go to the end. Find a, a reasonable break in the point. Sure. We just need the TV on, don't you? Oh, okay. Buckle up, everyone. And this is the convention. This is under the dance. I, Maria, think this is not English. Confesso, Clara, Clara, man, we say. And then, and then, um, 
Say Gaga Maria, say Vina Sana in the Kong of Sana, Vetana Desut. What is it? I don't know what they can say to the question, but that's all. This is a little bit. And so now I can confess. I, Maria, confess that we don't know what she's confessing to. I know I was not just told you since my relation was bad. But hold on. Did you ever take Latin in school? No, I mean, it's figured it was that. Has to be different in Spanish because of the way in the trailer. It's spelled Spanish. Yeah, I knew it was not Spanish, but I knew it was kind of not Spanish. Yeah. We would be what? We did. There's no Portuguese. That's why I see maybe like real sense of it. Maria, then okay. Sana, Maria is in that was the same mind that it was, it has not. The Sana in the Sun, the Tibetan Sun. Well, they we have these in photocopy French. Because uh, here it does look as if she's saying, and I'm over here, and then. In the same state of mind. Um, Requiem Sun, in Pache, rest in peace. Yeah. Aria, aka, I wonder what is Aria. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We say defending something about defending, uh, and for us to do this is acting that we can be kind of a free. Yeah. You think a lot of languages. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like saying French, so okay. Uh, and oh, and we also saying the right wing mass and and the right wing mass and that's not. I get by okay. <laughs> so I <laughs> 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 Oh, and then that's the lady who has been here for a while. She keeps going back to her husband, he keeps cheating on him. And the lawyer didn't get that here. She gets the domestic violence. Yeah. And I keep talking to her, guys. She's like a young lady. But again, with like the man who needs to be in her grass. Yeah, I'm just. I know, old teachers get in trouble when she needs to live with what's wrong with her. Yeah, the wisdom. Yeah. Well, I could have been a player. Oh, I always look at it. Oh, she. That's no, but right, it's funny. I think it's from the mass, you know, resting peace, right? That's what it is. But if you believe that that is a, a confession from Marie, well, I have still the one word I thought of is the O. Yeah, the confession. That's the end of the rest. Says that. Well, because the, yeah, that's why I can say the word, the U B, that's why I call that. Different in Spanish because it wasn't. Uh -huh. so, but other than that, that's why it's Spanish. Yeah, well, it's a romance. Right. Right. So, 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our afternoon recess. If I can have everyone back in the blue room at 3.30, we should be here to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Do not do your own independent research about any aspect of the case. And we will see you back at 3.30. All rise for the jury, please. <laughs> You may all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Uh, court will be in recess until 3.30. Okay, then. Um, so if they're back at 3.30, the video is still 79 minutes long. 
if they're back at 3.30 and court goes till 5, do they ever go later than 5, you guys? They haven't yet, but can they? Because the video is still 79 minutes to play. <laughs> and then are they still going to ask Dr. Dorothy Lewis questions? Hmm, very interesting. Jazzy Whipper says, Letitia is sleeping face down on a stack of books. And it's not just any book, it's the DSM-5. <laughs> oh, yes. You can see it from the purplish cover. <laughs> wow. Uh, how are you two? So Dr. Lewis is delusional, great streaming G. I wasn't too sure how to word this, but it's almost like, you know the word grooming? It's like the psychological equivalent of grooming. So whatever that is, it just seems like that. Of just like, it feels very icky to me. It feels predatory and weird. I don't like it. it Making me very uncomfortable up in here. Uh, yeah, welcome to uh, <laughs> all the members. Stefan says, closing on Friday? I don't think so. Now I know why the judge said earliest on Friday. I don't think so either. I think Dr. Dorothy, if they're going to play that entire video without a break, 79 minutes still. Hmm, just maybe 11 minutes, maybe for questioning. And then the day's over if they close at five, you know, and then, yeah, she'll be back on Friday. But they said she's only there from Monday to Wednesday. So that's interesting. You know, like her schedule was like she's out by Wednesday. They said that last week already. Uh, thank you so much, Anna for that super sticker. Yeah, Coach Lewis. Coaching, grooming, coercing. Hmm? A little bit of coercive control going on in here. And I cannot believe, let me change my name here quickly. <laughs> I can't believe that when they said, who's the other, the other person in the room? She's like, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, and then when they slow it down and show it again, they're like, sorry, but who is that? don't recognize is that your son uh this is all full of stories like this lady you might feel like shame she's just a little old woman she is cunning she lies she lies a lot she's just like don't recognize i don't know he was helping with the cameras wow okay yeah she was late so many times she owes them over time yeah, and she doesn't remember the videos half the time. So if I missed any stickers, by the way, I'm so sorry about that. I'm looking here yeah, behind the scenes to see. I think I got most of them. Sorry, C minor ops. I didn't see yours there earlier. It didn't pop up here. Oh, I just missed it. Sorry about that. Uh, Aaron says, is as bad as Letitia. I mean, yeah, it's like two liars sitting at a table. Two malingerers. That's what it looks like at this point. I mean, wow. Okay. So I should have said hola. <laughs> Hold on. Buenos noches, everybody. Buenos tardes, depending on what. <laughs> I'm going to bust out some better Spanish than she does. She's sounding a little bit of luck of the Irish there for a second. A little bit Jamaican, man. <laughs> Got a little beer can. <laughs> I was like, what accent is she doing? Let's save this for the member stream. <laughs> I was like, oh, Maria's coming out. Okay. Maria's sounding a little bit sort of Spanish. She's got a Taco Bell accent on. <laughs> and then she's like, Little bit Irish, a little bit Irish there, yeah. I don't hear any Russian. Da, niet, and that is good. <laughs> Straganov. <laughs> but now she says she just saw a, a man rise up in a cape. She had no idea where Gannon was. I'm like, what is his name? Eduardo? And what type of cape are we talking about? Anyway, it was uh it was abysmal. And then like, oh, but I mean she's a coach. Of actors, <laughs> actor Robert De Niro, Cape Fear. Yeah, she coached him. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, he did not do a good job. <laughs> Shame. She shaded Robert De Niro. <laughs> Nobody does that, okay, ever. Not in this community. <laughs> I really like Robert De Niro. Do you also? I'm like, sorry, what? No, that wasn't. And she said, mm. she talks about Maria. Okay, Maria. She's protecting the people, okay? She's protecting the people, okay? Anybody hurt the children? She's protecting the people. I'm like, what is she saying? She's protecting the people. What, are you now a pedo hunter? Have a seat. Come on. You killed an 11-year-old boy. Gannon stuff. And there was other stuff happening before the day of the murder. 
booking or from school, booking or from work, saying your dad died in a car crash, your stepdad. Okay, there was the candle incident, which we still don't know what the hell's going on there. Cutting out of the carpet, weird, what happened there. Uh, and it's not just that I shot, I saw a man rise up in a cape and shot, shot him one time, because you're protecting the people, depending on which accent now. It's, it's here and there, it's like, I'm protecting the people you know, man. <laughs> Then we go to Jamaica, man. <laughs> a little bit Irish. You're not protecting anyone. You literally killed a little boy. Just deal with it. And can this woman stop enabling her? Oh, my word. Can't stand enablers. Can't stand. Yeah. Esta buenos noches por mi. <laughs> Esta buenos noches por mi. Are you, see are you guys seeing a demeanor shift? <laughs> Un cantado. <laughs> I've got Spanish phrases there. I was like, I'm going to practice here. Adios. Okay. Let's not say adios. We're not going anywhere. Por favor, gracias, de nada. Wow, Leticia just insulting people all, all across the board. Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, because she said that as well at some stage, you know, the cash belly lady and all this. Okay, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, anyone with DID, BPD, bipolar, schizophrenia, psychosis, suffering from those things, by the way. I don't see any suffering. I just see a lot of fun being had around that table. With her baby boy in the room as well. My word. Uh, I'm talking about Dr. Lewis now. Texas turn around and says she's leading the patient. Absolutely. Totally leading the patient. Now you tell me how she's there. That was on November 17th, right? Day three. The other male voice in the room is Mr. Tolini, the attorney. So she's got the attorney in the room for protection is what she said on the stand. So we also got to start following this lady's BS. I'm going to have to make a summary of her BS. Never mind Letitia's character's and musical suspices. I think at this point, Dr. Lewis is going to, <laughs> she's got a whole range of stories too. I don't have any notes. Oh, wow. Look, I've got a whole lot of notes right here. <laughs> They're like, damn it. This is exactly what we addressed. Wow. Um, anyway, she's like on day three, she testified yesterday that she wanted the lawyer in the room for her safety. Why? Why not on day one and two? Why on day three? And you want to you you want the lawyer there, Mr. Tony, for your safety. What? Because you're conjuring Maria out with magic. Her answer was magic. Why does she talk to you? Magic was her answer. Okay. And she did say multiple times today this <laughs> it's not logical. Yeah, we can we can tell. This is definitely not true crime. It's not really supposed to be part of a murder trial, and it's not logical. There's no fact at all it's just confirmation bias your own narrative your own beliefs i mean you might as well believe in the freaking tooth fairy at this point and then run with that you know brenda says can you please give us the highlights i couldn't understand them at all me neither um it's inaudible honestly but what they were going on about just from what i heard here <laughs> as best i could which is as bad as what you can hear and i feel sorry for the jury they're probably looking at this like was just maria maria saying she protects people. She protects uh, people from, uh, basically, she's a vigilante. She kills uh, pedophiles and anyone who hurts um, children or elderly people, it sounded like. So there's that. And she was going on about protecting the people and the, the man in the cape and shooting at them one time and all of that. Dra uh, Latina, thank you so much. She said, what are the first things we learned in psychiatry training is never wear a tie or scarf with any patient we think could be psychotic or violent. The doctor has broken rule number one. Wow. I mean, yeah, I think she's broken rule number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll be here for days if I had to carry on counting. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Katrine, Katrine says, if she's afraid of Alice, maybe she shouldn't put her cane right next to her. I know. She's just coaching her. Honestly, she's just coaching her, just like she did with other serial killers, honestly. I really think that she has an affinity for killers. She thinks that she's the mouthpiece, the voice for killers. That they, she's one of those that probably believes they can be loved and fixed. I think she's projecting quite hard as well. <laughs> uh, Anna says, it is as if the Dr. Lewis, uh, Dr. Lewis thought no one would dare question her. I know, right? Yep. Well, welcome to 2023. <laughs> We've learned a few things. <laughs> Dr. Uncle Google has taught us a lot. <laughs> Christina said, dude, why were Tolini and her son wearing masks? Um, and Torres said they don't have attorneys present, so the defendant is not swayed. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Don't you guys miss Torres now and Grimmett, Dr. Torres and Grimmett, who testified for the prosecution? Oh, yes. Uh, we don't know if he had a pillow on his face, but we know he he was shot. One bullet lodged. Um, it went in his jaw and lodged in the back of his head. And there were two bullet holes in the pillow. So we know that. Yes. So then we can deduce that. But we don't know the sequence of events or exactly what happened, but it's terrible. Yes, Dr. Lewis had the little sister of hybristophilia, and it's the ugly little sister. <laughs> oh, yes, and hybristophilia is when people are aroused by or fall in love with. Um, I mean, she's very close to this because she's got an affinity for killers, but uh, with killers, yeah? All criminals, not just killers, it's criminals, right? Ugh, my word. She probably writes letters to Ed Kemper and whoever else, I don't know. She's probably one of those. <laughs> BCTV says, okay, thank you for becoming a member. Sorry, that looked long and like, wait, what? But thank you for becoming a member. We're doing a members only stream later. I'm still trying to save the snark because we've got a lot to snark about. Snark tank is certainly full. I told you guys it would be. Astar says, Dr. Lewis was a teacher. So what's that all saying? Those that can't do teach, she should have remembered that. <laughs> right? I really think she needs a mental health diagnosis for real. Has anyone ever diagnosed Dr. Lewis? Ever? Anyone? Because she's going to need that. She needs it badly. I mean, I know it's awkward if you're like, I'm an expert in this and this, but somebody needs to diagnose her ASAP. Yeah, Brenda says she makes excuses for them. Absolutely, she does. Hold on one second. Okay, Doc may find all her other cases could be investigated. Her credibility in tatters. She should retire. I'm losing patience with her. I think the judge has seen it through it too. Mm -hmm. I think that her other cases should be investigated. You know? I think so. I think this is all... To me, it's a form of... And I'm just using these words as an example. It's a form of... I don't know what the right word for this would be besides coaching. But it's like... Grooming, coercive control, manipulation. It's just weird. It's creepy and weird. And it's all in favor of the killer. That who is who she seems to have the empathy for. You can hear it in how she talks about Gannon and how she talks about Letitia and how she defends Letitia. I know she's a witness for the defense, but she's certainly not neutral. We heard another witness for the defense yesterday, Dr. Rhonda Niederhauser. That wasn't like this at all. I mean, we were like, whoa, is she actually for the prosecution or what? Neutral, normal, fine. Dawn Cap says the cheese has definitely slid off Dr. Lewis's cracker. She really needs she needs help. She needs help. And she needs to get off the stand, honestly, in my opinion. MP says something for the hardworking mods with so much love and respect. Thank you, MP. Thank you. Yeah, you're like, I am, she's a liar. <laughs> right? Okay, let's see what your poll results say, by the way. I asked you guys, do you think that Letitia will testify? I still want to know. 51% now say yes and 49 say no. Mm, it's getting close. It's getting close. I'm thinking at this point, this is so disastrous that the lawyers might say, you need to. If you want to, this is your only chance. You need to testify. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm thinking that could happen. Uh, welcome to all the members. And Glasgow Lass says, the worrying thing is that uh, this is giving Teabag lots of ammo for her appeal. Yeah. At least you can't afford good lawyers. Oh, yes. <laughs> she referred to Gannon as that boy, as well as that fella. And any time that anyone brings up his murder, she minimizes it. She reduces the crime, which I'm like, wow. I mean, at some point she re referred to him as a murderous threat. Probably believing Letitia's stories that he was going after her with a box cutter, which I will never believe. Never. And either way, even if that were mildly true, which I do not believe, um, you don't kill a little boy. No, you're the parent in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Detoxing for life says, just met Tracy. You're, whoa. Damn. <laughs> what? <laughs> just met Tracy, your beautiful moderator out here in Arrow Bear, California. Hello. Love your small world. Damn. Okay. Okay. Grizzlies meeting up. Okay. In California. Nice. Carmen, uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, sweet and salty said she's got nothing to lose, really. 
I would say that for both. <laughs> Dr. Dorothy Lewis, you got nothing to lose. Another does the t-shirt at this point. 949 Sherry says she was literally coaching the t-shirt through the entire exam. The fist pump at the end is that standard practice for dear. No. Now, I also want to say, again, you cannot just freaking diagnose someone with DID in three days. What, what's that all about? What on day three? Well, she was already doing it on day one. So is it like, okay, what I'm going to need it to do is read the DSM. Okay, that's what it feels like to me. This level of coaching is like read the DSM and just read over dissociative identity disorder and then just see if you have it. Do you think you have it? Then we could talk. Okay, you think you have it? Yeah, let's talk. And then on day one already, it's like, like I'd like to talk to Maria on day one. Like what in the hell? And she also talks to her as if she's talking to like a child or I don't know how to describe it. The way that Dr. Lewis talks to her is almost like sign language. She was almost like, she she talks in a, you know what I mean? Did you see it? It's so creepy. Oh, my word, it's so creepy. Dra Latina says, seriously, she needs a MMSE and MOCA assessment. Yeah, she does. I agree with that. I agree. Can somebody get her that? <laughs> she needs help. Yes. <laughs> Sue Garvey says, Nom, posing as Nom's mom. New sub. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for subbing. Yes, very nice. Yeah, Jill says, I feel she isn't up to par with her profession. Not at all. She's feisty. This lady, she's cunning. She's feisty. She's a full-blown liar, in my opinion. It's not even my opinion anymore. She's like, I don't recognize that. You don't recognize your own son. He's like right there on the video screen. You were there. This was November 2022. So again, is it dementia? Is it memory problems? Or do you like literally, are you lying? Are you lying? Sure. Peace Dog says, this is how she does with all the patients. You got to watch the documentary. I've seen clips of it and things. I've seen it. It's actually kind of off-putting. Of uh, 20 CR 1358, people versus Stout record should reflect the jury's not present. It's plan just to continue with the video. That is, Your Honor. Uh, we'll just hit play, and then I'll have some questions when the, when the video comes. Okay. Out. And how much longer is the video? Looks like it's about an hour and eleven minutes. Yep. Seventeen thirty-one. Interesting. An hour and twenty minutes or so. My okay. math is terrible. Sorry. Well, from the calculation, okay. it's seventy-nine Your minutes. Your Honor, as far as we talked about maybe going a little bit later today, if we think it'll get done. With Dr. Lewis, that would be the typical report. If we can, I would have to check with the jury because sure, the them may be done at five, but um, and we have one juror who I know with the accident, right? Yes. So, okay, so um, but if we can check with them, it's okay with me. So, all right, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. Yes, maybe they're two book and movie deals. So I can put this down. I can move you a little bit closer. Yeah. Sorry, I'll move myself now. Just orientating everything. <laughs> Will Cook looks very relaxed today. Yeah, they say we might go longer tonight. <clears throat> From what I calculated, it should be about 79 minutes left of this video. So let's see. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. you. May all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358. People that were the stout record sheet looks like the jury is present in the courtroom. Uh, Mr. Young? Yeah, we'll start the video at 1731. 
Camera angle. Did they go? Where we got to think of time for the way Which story is letter? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Tell me that. Can you read it to me? And what will I have to say? Yeah. Um, what is it? How many would it be? Okay. Okay. And you know what I mean? What do you want me? Um, you should read that. What do you mean? No, just the uh, spork. Spork here. Do you see my What do you want from me? I want you to tell me what it's meant. Can you translate it? I had the very many we got a lot of reasons here to be playing for we have to be that you feel you are more powerful and more in control of it. Mm -hmm. 
Does he see it? When? With the end? That could be done. My head was pulled to me. What room did you do? What day were you done? I was just like a mouse. Like what? Taking care of other people? Really? Getting rid of them? No. What? Money. You got a lot of money. Put me, I think you got a lot of money. How do you think you're going to do a money loss? How do you want to win? To what? I can tell you, you'll see us. Have you ever killed it in there? Do you know it's called? Yeah, but I started with Nana. Who? Someone who was going to go to TCA. Who is the one? Someone who was going to go to TCA. Hold it. Hurt 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 it. So you've really been her defender for a long time, of course. Yeah. Nothing, of course, to that. Not too many to that. Just a dollar a month. Do you have family? Mm. I don't need them. You do? No. They all are. Really? You should know us. What? Do you think I would order on the end of the world then without having a backstory? What's that, sir? You know what I'm saying? Of course not. So, why did Leticia take and we did go to the club? She did not know. Apparently, she did. Well, no, she did not know. Well, let's just say, because I already know the world. I mean, you didn't know it. But I mean, you did not know it. As I understand it, but this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're wrong. I think you're wrong. Oh, you're wrong, man. Should we do not know? You do not know? No. Do you know? I know the people. Yeah. Why did she, why did she get rid of the end of the slide? She didn't have that. Who did? Did you know about the people that I said? Or did you know about the people that I said? So did you get something to do with it? Um, so you got something to do with it? I said, I know about it. Tell me, um, Maria, after getting in this action, I'm going to get to the end of then the end of the world. What is that? I can't quite. How did you manage to know? If I didn't get to the last of them. But how? Yeah, she was not strong. Lena tried to help her. Lena tried to help her. Lena tried to help her. Really? Was he only there when he was on the weekend? Of course, they know he's there. And what does that mean? She held her hand in the front. What did they call No. She was what? 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 She was She was what? 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 She was She was what? She was what? She was what? She was what? She it's my understanding it's you that you shot up the man in the cave. Is that correct? Correct. Um, did it turn out to be again? Not to me. 
Once it was scanned, they were out. To call a the 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 do you do you have any idea why yet in your recollection you were at time seemed to be a man in a pink? I don't know. Here he said, sure, that he was on that blanket, right? He said, he said, he said, he said, do you think that he could have stood up and put the blanket around him so that he would like the man? There could be a possibility, but to me it was a key. What, what? But to me it was a key. Yeah. So I was trying to wonder if it's better to imagine again. And you meant to only shoot a man with a gate. What did you think he was doing? What to shoot? He's going to farm because he's here. I think that hurts. And then what's he going to farm? Well, the man be in a house with me. No way. Do you allow him in our own thinking? I think that the person had a man with a gate. Or did you go for an answer at all? That I didn't know. Probably well, I know. When did you try to get up to the side? You mean you shouldn't be Correct. I'm special training. You know, if I asked you. Who were you in your past life? I already told you I can't tell you about my family. And then you tell me that you told me that you're a Can you put me in touch with somebody who could tell me about why they took and why they tell me some of the reason behind it? Because I've been first. You'll see it first. You have to. Okay, we'll see it first. Yeah. That's not a long time. So, when we were to tell me that Leticia was someone else, perhaps, put in the car and went to cover it, you know, we protect them from that. Get in your room. I think I'll be very difficult to protect the person. Yeah. It's so sad. If you not have a motion, don't do this. I think we take it away. Doesn't matter who it is in the end. We're not going to cry if you don't look. So what happened? What is going to do? But then they did the right thing. I think that talking was me. Are you a dirt? Am I a Are you a dirt? A what? A dirt? Dirt? So. Correct. A threat. We are dirt. I'm this. I do my best to, to help with this. So, and then we have to go to, if I had emotions, yeah. I, would, I can't cry. You can't cry. Uh, cry. You lose your power. Mm -hmm. So, if bad and not something you, get rid of the body, it's easy to Can the teeth well? 
Because it is the morning. What did you do? A very long, almost a machine. Maybe like maybe 16, 15, maybe it's not that long. It's pretty long. What was going on was different when you came. She doesn't have to listen. Pardon me? She doesn't have to listen. That doesn't mean what it's going to be my name. She puts herself in a lot of trouble. And when I'm telling her, she's going to put herself in two ways. She's in the back of the bus. Yeah, and what she do? Yeah, I don't have to communicate effectively. Yeah. Puts herself in a lot of trouble. She should be involved in a lot of trouble. She's covering it. Well, this is what I'm going to make you think. You say that you help her. So there must be something she needs to help with. Well, it's that particular people. You saw it in the end? You don't really know. I don't know what. You don't really know what's going on. No, I can kind of wonder if she has a lot of mistreatment by men. So it certainly makes me wonder if someone was mistreating her. Is that Do you really know what she does on my crooks? Why she is. You do really know why she does her neck crooks? Why she does? Why she does her neck crooks? Oh, why she doesn't like drugs? I mean, why doesn't she like drugs? Because I've spent time trying to start selling them drugs. Yeah. Selling her. Yeah. 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 Selling her. Selling her for drugs. Oh, she. Which is. Now this is. Okay. Jane suggests so is selling her for the right to what he did not see. That's right. What was that under her? He just made her try to walk a car and get drugs for him. But she didn't try to get her spam and her drugs. Is that he was did she not do it? No, she did not. Uh, did she? She did not ask the head of the board. She hit him with the board. Who? James. Um, when you saw a boy, when the man was coming to the kid. He had a uh, hold on top of his head. Um, what I was wondering is if you were anybody, I don't know, mistake him or see, um, hit him on the head with a board or with a something. He hit his head on the floor. He hit his head on what? On the floor. On the floor? Hmm? I don't think you've seen the picture of that day. He had his hand on the floor, there was a baseball in the floor, and the water. He had a jump of something. Mm -hmm. It was on the floor. There was baseball in the floor, and the water doesn't mean it is in. It's a big thing. I thought it was a problem. That's what happened. He had his hand on the baseball in the floor. That's what he did. Okay, I'm just going to get the picture. I'm going to get the set on top of this guy. And then I'm going to fall out of his head. That's all I need. So, James, we're going to sell what he said. I'm going to look at him. Teen 
What would you do? You don't get on cocaine. Yeah. Once you got a lot of big cocaine. You can go to the I don't remember how it was. I wasn't there to be that For how long did she have to do this? to do this Chains around the air. And then I had to do it. I had to be down with a board. And so she beat him with a board and he found it. Where is all Did you tell him? No, she was a But he did not tell anymore. Is it really you? Yeah. What makes you want? Because it did not do anything. Mm -hmm. So we had to do that very time to protect you. In the sea, it's gone on board. When the sea has gone on board, it's gone on board. 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 At least he had only to show for it. How about uh, other trainings? That was changed. That was changed. Yeah, it was. And that was when people just trying to follow everybody in the end. Something is so real. Very exciting. People got confused. Who was the person for the queen? We have a single piece of the names were our names. James were our names. James were our names. Did he expose this one? Uh, like, you know, like, I don't know why the case because he thought he was a hero. He thought he was a real. He's proud of the bottom's so they were going to follow along when they were going to Florida. Probably went along with her. Did she know? Isn't she good? I think she did. What? I think she did. I think she did. Who? Yeah. Um, I don't think she did. Nothing. She had a little bit. Did you know that Gavin was in the background? No. So no guy got no more from that school. Someone else got married to Kushi, like all the people who know. I don't know why this is hard for you to understand. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You can see it. You're over there to Florida. And then after she got the suitcase, and she said, I'm not going to die. I told you I got someone else to be like. Well, remember, look, what was, put Gannon in a suitcase, 
and get to there and then with one to water up and slow. And that you just do all this and then we do fall the roofs. I need a Christmas bag with the boots, yeah. And she did not go back. And I had someone else to do that. I already told you that. I think that someone else. Well, one night, I already told you this. But I think she knew that she was an alert. But she was down the park. Of course she was. So what were you doing? Was she going to hold the brother? She was going to hold the brother. She was going to move there. Three more. So that's what she was I don't know who we class are that one. Do you think she'll tell me? I don't know, maybe if you let her, then I think we can let her. What would you get away from? I mean, it's and if you listen to this, everyone thinks they were students. So she said, it's all right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you say you don't have any books. Right. Right. Yeah. But it's like you see if you don't have any books. I've heard the friend of the mother's up that we get in the head. And we want to take care of this because of my hand every day. Oh, my. 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 That doesn't mean that they had any hard and most of their head open. If she does, to fill us on the cover. Would you make a difference, maybe? And she first said, did not like it. Or there was a lot of everything. It's a whole lot of I'm <laughs> Another United, they tell, no, they did not switch. Should I do a lot of there? To jump all the time, too. Yes, I would have a fight in the jump. Would you just write down all that? Maybe you should just write down the stuff. Yeah. So that she could put your address on. Why did she write her son? That would have to. Yeah. Why would you think so now? You have to write me, doesn't care, don't care about other people. This is for the good. She has so many other that she hates that she did it. Right? You know, so I don't know don't work. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah. You know, um, somewhere in the ocean, you are perfect. I need to fill. I don't think the fact Well, you feel less than who's in the game? It's not what you do. My first thought is to get rid of the ball. My first thought is to get rid of the bottom. The shoes are correct. Switch. And the board lady. And the board lady. I don't need my social life. I don't need my social life. Switch my sources. And probably the team. So, so did that too, you know. I think you read them. No, I don't read it all. You yeah, don't read it all. No, so where do you get your kind of psychiatric inclusion? So I did. And I got a training in Russia then. We all got my role. Different. How many months? Yeah. Use the permission we should come that out. Are you? Um, you know, it seems to me that sometimes when you want to do right, so like you seem to care about the TCM, that your thing is kind of like. And she gets blamed for stuff that is really pretty well. No, it's very rarely. But this is pretty serious. What are my odds? They're very, very slim. What are my odds? Usually I never call flying and things. Um, well, then, in this case, she takes the blame. That's perhaps why we don't get caught because someone takes the blame. But I always take over her. Do you think the times that I take over her and I rescue her versus the time that I make a mistake? Say I'll okay. You take over her. And she will look always the bad one. What if you tell me the good thoughts you take it over for me and that you make it all right? From the very beginning, I'm going to save her life multiple, multiple times. The good always the bad. If I had not done those things, she would not even be here today. So, why does that matter? If I make a mistake, why does that matter? I mean, you have special powers, but I'm not perfect. Was the answer? Oh, I mean, this is a. Okay. Do you think I had to make a mistake? I think. Do you think I had to make a mistake? You. Do you think I had to make a mistake? No. You can't understand the words. You think I had to make a mistake? Yes. Yeah. 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 Do I like the living one? Who do you like the living one? Do you? No. So, what do you think of yourself? I've already done it. What do you say then? The good you've done for yourself. Correct. When she was in it, what did you do? I didn't stop helping her until she's a woman. I didn't stop helping her until she was a woman. How old was she? Still a teenager. And what did you do for her? I talked about the James. And how did you do that? He could hurt her before, and she could not spend 
and said, she drove her in a pool when she got that son. He threw her in a pool and she went to She could swim right away and go, but she had cracks. Leg cracks. He had saved her. How did he save her? Or in a leg elbow, she would go. Could you? And he threw her in a pool. Tell me. How are you going to else? No, that is. Like the Happening in George Town, Town, Crowley. Who was it? Was that Mr. Pearl's house? And Brenda went to Pearl's house. I said, Brenda went to Pearl's house. Brenda, Brenda, we are winter. I don't know, I don't know, Brenda. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. She's going to do it again. She's going to play her with the other. She can't start it. Because she sometimes can go. You know, British are bad. Do you know him, right? Yeah, that's for Tom, for Teacher Bay. And she says that Brenda has an awful time. We went to her to Pearl's house. Pearl's house is where I got that Pearl. Do you know Pearl? No. And that's where she's swimming. And it was her Jake's car. So, it's like, maybe I should speak to Pearl. And if you do that, you know Pearl. Right? No, I don't know. Really? I don't know what she is. Okay. I can ask the friends. And then draw signs and then the house. Stay there. He laughed and all that is funny. He didn't space. He's there, right? So he was great. Of course. When else did you know? You're in the car and try to kill yourself. When was it? Can you let it go? She tried to put it herself in a jeep, and she learned not to get a dream. And did you do anything to help? What did you do? I have to get out of the car. Get out of the car. Cross city. But what do you do when she wants to kill herself? No, she didn't want to do that. She was living. Somehow, she tried to kill herself. And she thought she saw her in the car. She saw, she saw her ex husband in the car. Was he with her? She thought she always saw him. Really? So she told him that he. Who knows her? About she's very little before you came. Who's the doctor? Did you say you were now? Who's the doctor? I don't know. She had friends, but I have some friends, so she isn't. Why did you say that? Because she did not have any. She didn't have a bed. She didn't have a bed. Maybe you know what I'm going to do. Maybe you know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't think that way. Of what? 
Did you do? <laughs> no. Did the blood get to set up on it? So you have lots of secrets. So I don't understand the other. You know, this kind of looks a bit like this. He's the big thing, but let me go. It's got the word involved. I'm so predictable. Oh, you're pretending. Something else to hurt her, or else to And so, what's my child in the world? I'm also protective. And how do you protect her from taking the lead? Oh, that can't hurt her. It doesn't cause her physical pain. Is that the only kind of pain you protect her from? Yes. We were looking to the pain. I can't control that. It's interesting. And you would need to live limits. Can we do anything for you? Really? No. I think that's a pretty good call. Yeah, yes, these people who are saying have any questions. I don't answer to them. Let me see what I have to do. Do you have anything you'd like me to ask? Who's the people that help you get in the portal? They don't. The who would that? How would you get in the portal? What's that? Special life. What is the question? And in the Florida. I called them from that, he told you. I called them from right there, he told you. Well, I remember they asked me. And then she went up to Seth Brown. Who was she? TC. I told you my involvement in this. I told you my involvement in this. I have to tell you who I called. Why? This is not important. Well, it's that's pretty already said she would take the blame for that, but I'm not going to tell you who was involved. Well, I'll probably make it. That's the thing to do. They may charge karma, like they're still thinking in terms of karma. How do you feel about it? That's what they can do with me now. I'm just saying, you know, I'm going to do it. Except that he's here. Even from Bali. Excuse me? Even from Bali? I don't think it's a karma if she needs him to, but I don't think it's a karma if he's here. You wouldn't be trying to go with the karma. You know how did someone toss that have the car in the bottom? So it's a big thing. It's a big thing. is that? There was a giant to toss him out. I remember it's a bad thing. You know, you. There were a bunch of to toss him out. What were we doing? What do you think? Some good stuff. Like, they are not talking about something. Pretty well. So you want me to be here to say what the person told me? Huh? You have that bad idea for what? Let's see. Yeah. So pretty. Why did you hear? Person was saying pretty because they did not get the money. To get rid of the bottle. Yeah. There you go. With it, the money would have cut me. Correct. It would have been just all on the bottom of the money. So, what would have been this about there? The money didn't come out all the time. Who would have supplied it? 
So, as far as you know, she went to Florida to help other people. She was not in the right mind. She did not do what she was supposed to do to be the land. She was not in the right mind. What could be stayed with you? Her mother told me, well, you said she wasn't in the right mind. Because I told her to do something that she did not want. Who did you tell her? She was supposed to be the guy to get the money. Yeah. And she did not do that. What did she do instead? She was trying to be driving in the wrong routes. There's nothing for her to drop from school to play. No other for her. She was supposed to be in the right place. She did not need the right place. It's the wrong way. Correct. Yeah, so she, it was, no, it was not perfect. But they had to be the situated deal in where she couldn't even smoke. But still, apparently she did get rid of the She told me. I just told you, she did not need the people. People are here, they did not their money. I know, but the, somebody tossed the body out of the car. Correct. And they didn't have their money. There was no end. Did they toss the bottom? Yes, she never had the bottom. Maybe she did. She did not take the bodies and brought it out. Who took the bodies? You just asked me this question. Yeah, they're not accepting the truth. Well, I'm confused. Okay. They're not accepting the truth. She never had the bottom. So I'll just be trying to scoop it in. But there's stuff. There is no thing, there is no evidence of her having the body of Sarah. Uh, was there evidence? The no. suitcase was in a big. That's not evidence of her having the body from her Mrs. Hart. No. no. The suitcase with the body, according to Harlan, was in the van. No, that's the thing. That's what Harlan says. Well, I don't know what Harlan says. And the suitcase was found a mile away from London, not that she was staying in. She did not think it from time to time. I don't know them. Oh. If people did not meet. And the game, you know, like that's fine. Where the white room? No, they cuts. There was no love. There were cuts. I don't know any of the problems you asked me. I guess you've got your own opinions. You've been sick with this. It's something you've heard from the other one. I don't know any of the problems. I don't know what that is. That's a bad. So this stuff that even you don't know. I don't want this. I did not cut anyone. I don't know. I don't know. I did not cut anyone. No, that's okay. Somebody hit him or something. That's the ball. Why are you looking at the ball? That's what he wants. When you put the shot, are you looking at When you put the shot, did you know that? Are you looking at it? I'm hoping it's like what? Are you looking at it? Did you know? Did you feel when you realized it was again? I told you I did not know it was coming in the back of the night system. And I told you I did not have a motion to know what I did. Money. I don't know what it is, son. But sure, I mean, no, I think that you do that. I don't have babies. What if you do instead of the time for it? Yeah, please don't leave it. I don't have babies, Papa.
I didn't say anything. I'm sorry that they happened for the TCF. Well, because of the air government. And if she's upset, I'm upset. She's upset. And then we try to put me You do. You're acting what you've done. And you're so good at staring at me. That's what you But um, I think that it would go better than the rest of the stuff until it takes you. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's good sign. Yeah. It's good sign. Do you know anyone who knows uh, why they didn't have to find her and who helped carry her? Do you know anyone who helped me? Hmm? No, I didn't have to drive. I told you I didn't. I told you I didn't have to find because of these people, but I mean, do you know who, like, who helped to carry the plans? You do. The TCR already told you that she will take the time out of the back. She don't know what she You don't know how to stand. She can now know you who you are. You don't understand how serious that is. You think this is a joke? Don't look at this thing. It's it not a joke. Mm -hmm. Those are petty charges. Do you think this is a joke? What do you think this is a That is a joke. You cannot tell all these people. I don't think you guys are understanding how serious that is. You mean they would kill me? You don't understand. It's not. It's not funny. It's not made up. It's not a delusion. It's for real. The money wasn't there. You can't snitch. I don't understand why you don't get numbers. Can you tell me what's in the TCF family? Who is all the research? What's in the family? What is falling in the among the friends? Do you think she went about a teaching salary? What is wrong with you people? What else do you think she was doing? Do you think it was legal? And they so she, that's how she got all the money. Do you really think it was legal? You don't want me to stand here and I'm talking about this? No. I don't think it's legal. Okay. Okay. She didn't do bad things to bad people, to good people, bad people, and I'm just. Kind of. She's not going to tell you that. Most of the people die. Mm -hmm. Bad That's a part of the piece that you cannot ever know. What's your day happening? Do you think it's a good situation? No. Yeah. Because I think I'm saying that you guys live in a perfect world and it's kind of big time. Yeah. You live in a perfect world, it's not a dream, it's not a dream, it's not a dream, it's not a But you're saying that there are very powerful people in the world. Absolutely. When it comes to that part, absolutely. Give me also know what you want in the world. But I would never give you answers. I cannot. So we just we don't want to know. A lot of we just want to know how. How? Yeah. Um, how are we going to do some things? Yeah. Who is sixty feet? Where is that struggling to do all that? So, so I mean, what's the deal that struggling? So we but. Maria has another power. Is she not see me? Can I see the muscle that I have? Mm -hmm. So you're saying that you could muscle. 
I can do anything. And if you feel it, let's choose it one to one. Do you know anybody who can tell us about getting that cut? Doing the nick roll now. Now she's gonna say, What just happened? You don't have a patient that's a bad thing. No. Here it comes. Yeah, I don't have any sound. Then I was in the cave. But the sound over the night. The five foot and I saw the sound. That's why I It was in the back end. You You say here? Yes. What can you do? Is it a kitchen line? Yes. I don't know. But I don't know. Yeah, it's a It's a name. 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 Stop in this, the gun in You put with the gun and then the gun, so that you move on. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's not killing. You put it with the gun. You put it the gun. You the gun. You uh, they weren't necessarily in the for that because they didn't know that he had the cuts on him when he was on the half. Had they noticed for the movie? But I hope they were in the blood on the day. Yeah. Yes. Who could have worked there? And they were not. Because the fear of the guy it was coming. And she was screaming, screaming, screaming. We have to raise him again. She didn't try to clean the room. She was being bad. If we do all that, we'll figure it out. It's not real. This thing where they have them. If we just clean it all up, this thing where they have them. She didn't just fix it. Make everything back to be the way it was, nothing in this room. And she said, I don't want to ask it, only to talk about it. Yeah. And she was trying to dig into that room, and Lena was digging up spy, and he wasn't asking. So Lena was digging the spy, and he said, That's what it's doing. Lena. Lena? Lena? Is that me? Lena was digging the spy, and he was upstairs, and he was like, It was just laying there. I'm not going to 
to breathe. It's just trying to get him to breathe. Make him up because could not be. She was never seen to be at all, so she didn't mean for him to be dead. No. Now you have it. did you? When you started to die, who could you know what was happening? And now, what did you say? The person who came out was not for me. So she would be like, yes, no, the great call of me. Did you think it was James? I thought it was someone in the cave, you could have been a monster. Who was the one who kept uh, James? James. James. Yeah, I think it was James. I think we're already going. Pardon? I think we're already. I still don't understand. No, I don't think we're going to be James. What? Did it already come out? That's the way I was talking. The way they come out. Sorry. There are only any of them. So, we don't get Nobody was a little baby. She had Nobody was trying to Oh, this keeps like seeing all that. And, you know, that was all good. Uh, as you were going to take this little taste of this little bit, would you ever hear the word? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Was not with her or yeah. The reason I'm asking is it is a very, very, very common for someone who extends from all things that we can see. So, the same thing is done. I should say, when I stay here, I think I got sometimes a little bit. I think you saw all the. No, no, they had a few, but maybe. But he was always crying and angry and enjoyed it. But very early on, he told me, forever, time here to be well. And he would sit his station. So I thought there were the lady farm in the end. What did we do? Can we talk to him? What? Can we talk to him? You have to ask him to see him. We must have felt the need of it. And in the evening. Why did he have the night? So that was got the night when he didn't get his way. Do you have a case of the words? Would he ever have a case of the words? No, he would say he's got the night when he was going to pass my word. And this is the kind of place for that. Good. And this is the kind of place for that. Try to get in the So she didn't want me to know that. She didn't want me to know that. It's all the way to say she will be in the house. I think you know what I mean to do is bad. It wasn't bad. Still, you see what happened. Yeah. I can't. It's my only dream. Spanish practice just to grab a weapon and smile. 
She didn't have to do it on her. No, she never worked on it. You didn't answer my question. What what is this thing on the way to be able to share? Stop the tape. It's the time. Okay. So that we can get some questions. Dr. Lewis, how are you doing? Yeah. You mean you want me to help you? I got it. Okay. Did you want to turn the preview up? And I'll turn the lights back on. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Lewis, I want you to do the best you can just to answer my question so we can get through this quickly, okay? Is that fair? Um, this Latin confession that you talked about in the beginning, you lost that, right? Even though you asked to have copies done, you never found that confession again, correct? Well, I was unaware of it. So it was on. Okay. Now, do you still think, having watched this video, that it was a good idea to have Mr. Cellini in there with you? You think it's appropriate for Mr. Cellini to plant the seed with the defendant that it was James that she actually shot? I don't think that she planted any seed. I don't think that she came up with that. I think that I appreciated watching all of it was how extremely confused it was. I think it was. Uh, I think that it did help for him. It's so complicated. Much more of all of the details. It helps his theory. And when he asked, when he asked, do you think it was James? That helps the theory of the defense, right? That somehow she mistaken a little 11 year old boy for the stepson that's been, or the stepfather that's been dead uh, for uh, since 2004. I'm not aware that this is his theory. Of Can you explain? Why, at one point, the defendant could not see or hear Mr. Tolini, they had to repeat a question that Mr. Tolini asked. And then when Mr. Tolini asked about Harley, she answered it, no problem. How does that happen? Did that not go as toward into script? I don't know what the script is or what you're referring to. I don't know why it's, what meaning would that have? He did not know what had happened. When she was pretending to be Maria, she said, I can't see them. Do you recall that? I don't recall pretending to have, by the way, seen a couple of cases where uh, in one iteration of it, can't be either blind or and then she was out of, uh, somehow cured and could see him and answer questions no problem this, this happens it is well it's fluid literature and i've only seen it why did you ask the defendant if she thought it was a devil or a demon simply wondering what did you Looking for evidence of psychosis, perhaps? Oh, I'm not looking. I am not looking for evidence of anything. I'm looking what she perceived. Because I know no evidence that she hated the gang, so that she, uh, that she harmed her in any way that I could find a precipitating cause. Wondered 
distance is fairly common for kind of dangerous or frightening things. It apparently had some notion of some future in a cave, but uh, it was kind of here or there to find out did she see something different? And uh, it did not seem to affect what she said. She uh, she really does not know really what uh, what was going on in her head. Or she just doesn't want to tell you, right? She just can't bring herself to tell you what she did to Gannon, could she? Well, but I think that you're correct that she something about what had happened there that in kind of psychologically, I question about it. Um, <laughs> she did it. Well, and, and here's and here's what I want you to consider, okay? This whole story about her acting in self-defense and Gannon having a knife and she thinking that it's uh, crazy ass James or whatever the heck his name is and shoots him. And then it turns to self-defense. And it turns into someone gets rid of the body. It's just her not being able to tell you what she did to Gannon. Is that true? Tell us what she did. And here's and here's the flaw in your theory. What is my theory? I'm not sure. The theory that she was had a different personality and Maria, the sociopath, did this murder. Okay. No. You can't explain, no, Doctor. That is you not cannot my theory. Do not. Well, what's your theory? You're saying she's legally insane. Yes, I know. Really? That she hallucinates, that she's delusional, and that her, her line of thinking is confused, addled, and frightened. And but uh, I don't have a particular theory that she killed this person for that that reason. Why didn't you ask her about why she gave Gannon an excessive amount of hydrocodone? I didn't know that she gave that. Do you think that's important? Only if I know for sure she gave somebody that. He read the autopsy report. I you know it's there. I know that he had this. I don't know who gave it to him. I, I many cases where children have excessive amounts of poisonous drugs in their system. But there are many different reasons why. Yeah, Honor, those are my questions. Thanks. I have no further questions for this witness. Your director, I'll try to go. Dr. Lewis, how are you? I'm going to rehash everything, but I do want to clear up just a couple of things with you. One, in regards to the EEG and the emails um, that were shown to you. Really? As far as you saying that, oh, let's hold off on doing the EEG. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was at that point in time, then you indicated that you want to do the evaluation first. We call that from the emails. Well, that there were other things to do, and uh, it was not something that I was going to get hung up on at that moment. At that point in time, and then in report that you did for the court on February twelfth, in that report, you put down the need you thought for both an MRI and an EEG, correct? Correct. And you recall in relation to this court, the issue being that this court would not give us. A, any more time to get those things done? Me relating that to you. I'm going to what back I heard was me. that the court so sustains. I was told. Yeah, you know, I have an objection. Stop. Okay. The objection was sustained. The witness will uh, stop responding to a question when an objection has been sustained. The jury will disregard the witness's answer. You can ask another question. All right. Um, moving on to some of the other stuff. The district attorney on his cross insinuated some stuff that the motive for killing Gannon was somehow that Ms. Stout wanted to move to Florida. Does that make any rational sense? Not to me. Can you think of any way that brutally murdering Gannon would enable her to move to Florida? Can you think any sense how that would fit into any plan to move to Florida? Does that make any rational sense whatsoever? Yes. 
If the definition of insanity in Colorado is that a person is incapable of distinguishing right from wrong with respect to, um, to an act, would that change your opinion on Ms. Dow being legally insane at the time of Dan Gannon's death? That last part that we were there, the interview, that was the last kind of part of a long three days of interviewing Ms. Dow. Correct? Had I expressed my frustration that she wouldn't account for taking Gannon to Florida or she wouldn't account for the stab, the stab wounds. Objection on cause for speculation as to what Mr. Sweeney was thinking. Had I expressed well, that to you? He said expressed. So I think. Well, then it's hearsay. Well, can't repeat what Mr. Sweeney has said, but maybe you should move to your next question and I can see where you're going. Was there ever any attempt by myself saying I need by myself to try to get her to say something specific or some type of theory or anything like that that I had done with you? Okay. If you were aware that those videotapes <clears throat> were all going to be turned over to the district attorney, you're also aware that I have had years plus of confidential communications with Ms. Stout. Are you aware of that? I assume you guys. And if I was going to do something unethical, as they seem to be implying, wouldn't it may I would have just been able to do that confidentially instead of on an open video? I'm going to object to that form of question. Stay. If I was trying to feed her a story, it wouldn't make any sense for me to do it in that setting where it's recorded, would it? No. In any of the materials or anything else that you have looked at, is there any other rational explanation as to why Ms. Stout did this other than the psychotic episode? Any type of motive? I am I'm unaware of any, any uh, or any motive that makes any sense. Why uh, why he became victim? What happened? The state hospital has diagnosed her with borderline personality disorder. Are you aware of that? Yes. Are there similarities between borderline personality disorder and DID? Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope of cross. <laughs> no, no. Are there similarities between borderline personality disorder and DID? Yes, they are. What are some of those similarities? Well, If Ms. Stalk had sometime in the years preceding this event had Googled, I don't like my stepson, will that possibly explain the rage in which this homicide occurred? Yes. Are you still firm in your opinion, your expert opinion, 
based upon almost well over 50, 60 years of practice, then in your expert opinion, Ms. Stout was insane at the time of the death. Objection asked and answer. Sustained. Do you learn, have you learned lots of things over your experience in interviewing and evaluating people with DID? Over, over the, what is it, 40? Yes, over 40 plus 50 years. Have you learned at picking up on subtle cues? Um, have you learned or on your experience that is it unusual for alters to have almost fantasy type lives? I would say it's a definition of the are in your experience are the alters receiving reality as a rational person would thinking of oneself as someone other than the everyday person that we need to know um, which is a fantasy, often a very shameful, different, uh, altering kind of entity. It, it's not a consistent, a typical life of three with ordinary relationships and family ties that, that go on, as you saw here. It, it, hurts. it can vary within the period of time we're talking about. Absolutely. And <clears throat> Dr. Lewis, we're getting close to the end of the day. Is there anything last that you think is really important for this jury to know or understand about your diagnosis? It's um, what you what you call it. What you call it is so much less important than what you understand about it. What you understand about it is that oh, this individual has been living a psychotic life unrelated to reality, related to a new or I would let us experience reality that it changes. It has been Often diagnosed as schizophrenia when people question whether association has many of the signs, symptoms, behaviors as what we call schizophrenia. Visuals, their very odd relationships, inability to sustain going. I don't care or whether you think psychosis is dissociative. Mm. It, it's that the person is living a psychotic life and continually, continually that by and large typical of her. Not stimulate, but the rest of us do. I have an objection uh, based on that last answer uh, with regards to what we received in her scope of her isolation stricken. Mr. Tolini? I mean, I think that was in her report, and she was expounding on what she had seen in the video and what was going on. Well, I'm going to allow it. I'm also going to end this answer. Okay. And then Lastly, Dr. Lewis, just one other question um, that I had. Would it then, if somebody was suffering that type of mental illness, would it be possible for a daughter who has been with them most of her life not to be aware of it? That's a tough question because to be aware of it would respond a whole second answer. Excuse me. Be aware of it. 
to be aware of the drug dissociation, not to be able to conceptualize psychosis. And of course, it's possible, but just to say not to be aware of it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Do any of the jurors have any questions for Dr. Lewis? Like we have we passed all of them forward and uh, retrieve those in terms of approach, please. What is jury going to ask? Go jurors, go jurors. Whew, you guys, this is a bad day. I was prepared mentally and I still feel not strong enough. <laughs> I put on my battle shield and I'm not okay. This was bad. <laughs> Welcome to all the members. We will still do a members only stream right after this. Don't judge me on my lack of energy. It's been draining. This is what I said. One has to have magical powers to be aware of it. That's where I find Dr. Lewis a bit narcissistic. Only I know about this. I know it. Yes. Okay. Only me. So I'm saying like Lori Vello was aware of zombies. Only her and Chad understood it. Okay. I think this doctor should go to Idaho next. <laughs> it's time for Idaho. Imagine that. Thankfully, there's no insanity plea there. This was the worst day ever. And we're doing this for Gannon, you guys. Gannon and his family. I mean, Elle is there in court, Landon. I don't know how, I don't know. And I'll just, he's just calm though. Wait, look, he's talking there now. I don't know how he does it, man. Okay, I'm just gonna um, put my own damn name on here because I'm tired of this. This is, here is L over here. He's just so calm the whole time. Landon's also in there somewhere. This podium's kind of blocking things a bit. This was a brutal day. Yes, Gannon. This is for Gannon. Which Dr. Lewis seems to have no concern about whatsoever. It's all about Letitia's rights, right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Haughty. Welcome. <laughs> Must I say haughty? He said like haughty. <laughs> haughty became a member. Welcome, welcome. And yes, Daniel, somebody needs to put a microphone by the witness. <laughs> and when she's recording those freaking videos. Veruca says, jury has questions. I guess they're spending the night. <laughs> Everybody, it's time to get your sleeping bags. It's a grisly sleepover now because these answers could be long, yes. Yeah, I couldn't handle watching this alone either. I don't think I would have made it through this whole day and yesterday without you guys mm -mm. here we go no man no work on here welcome velvet claw yeah why is Letitia laughing con here con here judge con here Oh, she's back on the stand now. Okay. They want those microphones on. I'm just going to take this off. No, no, judge. We can't hear you. Camera guy. Oh, come on. They, they've kept it muted. I can't eye roll anymore. Why? 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 Oh, somebody. It's lip read. <laughs> Great. Let's just have it silent. Oh yeah, it's one a.m. here, and we're still gonna do a member stream. Mm -hmm. I 
How can we miss the jury questions? They got the, yeah, they got it back to the mic and now all the sound is off. The judge's mic, her mic. <sighs> so annoying. Thank you, True to It Connections. <sighs> Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> Keep it real, like I can read lips, I'll do my best. Oh, my word. I was so looking forward to the jury questions. I just went to check on three other channels. Yes, indeed. It's, it's really the court. So thank you, Vienna. Yep. Thank you, Sonora. Well, she's looking very excited. Letitia, Letitia, not so much. So let's read body language. <laughs> Judge looking impressed with their questions. Witness delighted to explain some more magic. <laughs> Draw Letitia says, here's what the doctor's saying now. I'm so confused. I don't know what was going on in that. Was it a seance? Was it delirium? Am I delirious? Do you have any ideas? I'm so very confused. What do you think, Mr. Prosecutor? <laughs> Thank you, Draw Latina. Yeah, there's no sound anywhere. They've decided to mute it for the public. Let's complain about it. <laughs> I don't know where to complain about it. Except the freaking cameraman. <laughs> Dieter! <laughs> they need Dieter up in here. If you don't know who Dieter is, you need to check my other channel. She sure held up well with food poisoning. Having that last night, food poisoning. Mandy says, bring on the smart jury questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. 7,676 people here, and we're all here in silence waiting to be like, sorry, what did you say, lady? Best I can do at this point is just put on a little bit of light music. Right there. It is too important to miss, and yet here we are. Missing it. Okay. We'll cook. Rocking around. Everybody. <laughs> if you're in your chair, start rocking. I must say, Letitia's not looking impressed with whatever she's saying. Dr. On Call says, food poisoning isn't an overnight thing, by the way. Dr. On Call, is it longer than an overnight thing? So the, the, ju the judge is asking questions that the jury asked. That's what's happening. The court has decided not to turn the sound on. Yeah, let his, let his chair break. Something about with the defendant. Mm. 
That's true. Yep. Let's head to Twitter, shall we? So the doctor says that Leticia likes to talk, checks a lot, and then at time talks too much. We'll look at the doctor. We talk, like, way a lot, just like Leticia. Yeah. I'm just really looking on Twitter. <laughs> Everybody on Twitter is just complaining about the no sound. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt, actually. I don't know if live tweeting will be allowed. They did say media would have their phones. Welcome, Queen Ben. Yes, why? If that happens, I'm going to be so mad if it's still muted. Message the stream, no sound. You can't message them on here. Um, Taylor says, is Elle in the black suit? Nope. I'll show you now. L is like pretty much every day in the same place. Uh, like Tisha even thinks this is a cock show. Yeah. Let's see what the song is. Yep, they're just all upset with the sound, okay. Um, let's do this. There, you can see Elle right next to her. Great. You guys know where Elle is by now, right? Thank you, Jan. Yeah, there's no there's no way that I can chat here with this type of a court one. I can't chat anything there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, Leticia's not looking happy. Will, <laughs> Will wants to go home. <laughs> I think this is about the third question from what I gathered. Brittany says, meanwhile, the judge looks at Twitter and says, and I, oh, <laughs> thank you so much, Christy. And yes, thank you, Mods. Thank you so much. Okay. What do we think she's saying? Let's look at the judge. Angelica says she sounds like Norman Bates' mom from Platform Psycho. <laughs> right? Same. I think this was the worst day of the trial so far, you guys. So, yeah, to participants. Good room, hello. Sorry for messing it up. Can't 
I can't do anything. Sorry. Drea says Lewis has more empathy for the disordered from childhood trauma than murdered children. Mm hmm. Yep. Mary, welcome to membership. Letitia is like, mm hmm. This was a this was a <laughs> Sherry. This was a horror day in court. Oh yes. Have you guys ever experienced that? Maybe you did today. Where you like you, you know a day's gonna be hard, but you prepare for it mentally. You're like, it's cool, I got this. I'm prepared. I know it's gonna be rough, but then it's so much worse than you thought. <laughs> That's how this day was. What, who's asking what now? Don't worry, we're all frustrated together. It's gonna dance like you more. Judge is kind of like, hmm. Microphone. Yes, if someone's there, if you can call the court, please let them know. Me from the Netherlands, I cannot just like call the court. <laughs> People are telling me, just call them. What? <laughs> Let's see if there's an email. Okay, what's happening? What's happening? Tony says, even with no sound, you're getting new members. You are the magic G. Oh, th oh thank you. Okay, okay. So, Mr. Tolini, is this Mr. Tolini? Yep, handing us something. Crump Curious has been in court. Maybe she can help. Whoever's been in, I'm sure they're going to tweet about it later, right? I'm sure we'll hear about it from someone who's in the media. Oh, sorry, just well, he was just there helping her up. Here you go. Tina says Letitia's looking at the doc like the next pick. She was staring at her. Okay. Let's pause the music. Time to wheel that witness out. Are they done? Does she got her notes and everything? And Janice is helping her out of a high chair. Did they just not realize they didn't put the sound back on? Like, judge, you're muted. Look, look, look at the court. Mute. That's me. This one is muted. Hello. They pucked it up. They pucked it up so badly. And there goes the son. The guy in the yellow shirt, as someone said earlier, that that's that's her son. As in Dr. Dorothy Lewis's son. Sir, we cannot hear you. I object. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right for the jury. Let's look at Letitia. She's in dude mode now because she's got her hands in her pocket. <laughs> I 
And Barbara's like, Will said, will your mother out? <laughs> Take your own mother home. <laughs> Peter, probably Peter Tragos, right? Lawyer, you know, said he would never hire her. She's doing a terrible job. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the person in yellow was the son. Don't worry. I'm not stressed. You're stressed. <laughs> I just... Why? 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 Oh, Will's ready to go home. Look at him. He's like, oh, okay, I'm just packing up now. <laughs> Will's always ready. He's just like, okay, you're packing up. Mike, 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 cameraman. Dieter! Oh no, they're going to ask her, aren't they? They're going to ask her if she will testify. Literally, I think they're talking to her. Going to make her nice and big. They are asking her. Everybody watch carefully and tell me what you see. I thought she said no as well. That's what I saw. She laughed. I think she said no, but we'll see. Literally. Lynn, as if the day couldn't get worse. I'm very upset. I'm just holding it together here. I'm like, <laughs> it's all good. But same. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, the mic comes on when he says court dismissed. Imagine. Call L. How? <laughs> like, uh, thank you, Mama of Three, but like, how? Really? Do you think I've got L number? <laughs> Anyone? Call L. <laughs> hey, I'll tell them. The audio's off. <laughs> See the two security guys at the door? They're ready.
Okay, so on Twitter they say, Stout just informed the court that she will not be testifying on Friday. She will not testify. So there you go. Thank you, Mary. Paragraph. So that's paragraph two. Right. There you go. Okay, you're right. I think it's. I think it's. Yeah. So, because I, I, I agree that's how they have to do that. Right. But I think it it starts out with if you found the defendant guilty of one or more, I think that relates to Roman numeral two. Your next paragraph is if, however, you found the defendant not guilty of any one of the following charges, then paragraph. sign Roman numeral so one, two. and that would be right. right. Okay, then you're right. Because I think it's Roman numeral one so is the not guilty would because be derogatory I, on page I, two. I agree that's how guilty they have to do is, that. Right. Um, Roman numeral two. Okay. So no problem making all the corrections, including the ones that you okay. Uh, I'll um you want to give me a hard copy and I'll just make all that yeah. Right yeah, that's fine. I can approach. Yep. Let's see what it was. I don't know if the defense is resting either, are they? She's not testifying on Friday. Roman numeral one and Roman numeral two issue. Closing arguments Friday and jury instructions. Here is the statutory language. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dieter. <laughs> I like judicial notice for as well. Yes, please. And that'll uh, that should just be stock, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a qualified witness. Field records and so forth that were getting patient by Ms. Strobel. Um, Whatever you come up with. Okay. Okay. All right. And then uh, the only quite the only instruction that we'll still have an issue with um, that we'll have to argue about is you have a question or an instruction that says the question of the defendant's sanity or insanity has reference to her mental condition at the time of the alleged acts, the condition of the defendant's mind previous to the act charged, and since that time may be considered only to aid you in determining her sanity or insanity at the time of the acts charged. And Your I, Honor, I'll take that out if defense counsel wants it out, or we can leave it in. Would it in or out? If you got good case law, that's a good one. Structure. I think we should keep it in. I'm, I'm fine with it in, I think. Okay. Just wanted, it, it, I think it's a le, uh, correct legal statement or correct statement of the law. So, okay. So take care of those. Then, um, I want the attorneys here on Friday morning, 830, 830. Just making sure. So 830, and then we can talk about the jury instructions and we should be in a position that maybe what can happen is uh, rest, rest uh, instruction. And um, I will take a break before we start into the um, closings. Uh, because I think I think it's only fair that the jury consider it that way. So, okay. Judge, the only final thing, those documents from Dr. Lewis, I'm fine with just uploading them. We've had, I don't know how you want them to be uploaded, if you want them to be suppressed or somehow protected, but we've had that issue in the past. They're, they're covered by C, uh, CJD, uh, I think it's 0905, uh, or 0509. I, um, there's a chief justice directive that has to deal with that. And then there are um, internal regulations because I'm assuming that it has to do with mental health, um, it should be uploaded as uh, sealed. So that's been the problem in the past that when we've done that, then somebody has then unsealed them okay. and then they've gotten out. So that's why we've asked uh, in the past for maybe the it, court to upload. The it. easiest way to do, upload it, suppress it, let us know when you've uploaded it. Okay. Then we will change the um, status from suppressed to sealed and, it should, and nobody else should be able to change it except us. Okay. That may be the difference is that if the attorney's uploaded is sealed, maybe somebody else can uh, change it. But I think that's right. Yeah. If, if you uploaded it suppressed, let us know it's there. We'll change it to sealed. Um, then it should be fine. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Court will be in recess. Okay. So 49% said yes. 51% said no. Just 
watching. Oh, <laughs> maybe Muted did us a favor. Didn't have to hear the doctor. <laughs> Always a silver lining. Thank you, Anna. I'm just watching until the camera goes off. Cut fur, cut fur. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Come on. Okay. So now I've really got to fix my screen. Then we've got to go do a members only stream. Wow. Okay. So just hold on. I'm just going to bring up Twitter for us. Um, which is here. Bye, court. See you on Friday. So closing arguments on Friday is what I'm hearing, right? So what does that mean? <laughs> when? When is it all ending, right? How long will the jury deliberate? What's going to happen? Okay, so Letitia Stark will not testify. Interesting. I wonder if prosecution will do any rebuttal or if we'll be going into closing statements on Friday. No court on Thursdays. Stark just informed the court that she will not be testi testifying on Friday. Okay, sounds like the judge and counsel are going over what the jury instructions will be prior to deliberations. L just informed the court she'll not be testifying. So you can see it all here. <laughs> Lily in London says those jury questions for this witness were probably the most important ones of the whole trial. And we enjoy the sound of silence. And they say, and now the sound comes back after all the juicy juice. <laughs> and we have sound. So yeah, um, pretty much everything we were all saying. Live shot of Letitia Stark's attorney is trying to figure out how their client didn't get a fair trial because they kicked the audio wires out of the Zoom computer even after being admonished by the judge. <laughs> Today was very hectic, you guys. Very hectic. Damn. Uh, C minor ops 67 says 30 minutes top for deliberations. Do you think so? Is it? Do you think so? Well, I don't know. I wonder. I wonder how long do we think it'll be? Okay. So before I close off here we're going to go to the members snark tank and i will give you the energy i've got left okay i'm putting slow mode off so uh and subscribe for any duration so now it's wild time 7300 people here let's go let's chat <laughs> okay so what i'm going to do this stream should lead you to that stream if not just hold on one second um here we go wait hello hello shareable link okay click on this should take you there and if you're a patron and not a member then don't worry i'll put on the replay probably tomorrow because probably by the time i finish with this it's like you know it's very late now already it's almost two in the morning but i promised you a member stream and i will deliver i that's how i roll as as drained as i am <laughs> i'm sure you are too we need a debrief okay so welcome welcome everyone um i have not found it on youtube please send it to me the angel rock Grizzly True Crime at gmail.com. Please send it to me. I've seen a podcast about it and all kinds of stuff, but not the actual full documentary. So please, please send it to me. Caesar deliberation seven hours. Damn. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for enduring that day with me. You know what the worst part of today was? Yes, some some public snark. Okay. You know what the worst part was? We had the worst audio of all time, okay? For like two hours worth of excruciating video to watch. And then we didn't hear the jury questions. <laughs> that, I think that resentment will never go away. <laughs> resentment for whoever is responsible for that. Yes, we have tomorrow off, though. We've got tomorrow off, you guys. Tomorrow, no court. Friday, back in court. And I'm going to be ready from, when they said the attorneys must be there from 8.30, we didn't hear exactly what time the court starts. Normally, it should be at 9. But let's, let's start a little earlier and make sure. I'll be monitoring. If there's anything on camera, we're going live immediately. <laughs> um, love you all. Woo -woo, says Sharinthia. Thank you so much. Yes, closing arguments Friday. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, old Grizz. Gizla have a sweet dreams, restful sleep. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you so much, mods. Oh, my word. This is some hard work, this trial. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you all, uh, if you are a member, at the member stream in a moment. Okay, outro time. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, bye everyone.